Welcome to the Stoke Bowling Club for the Turf Hotel Stoke Stakes Men's Pairs. I'm Brendan Hodson, joined by Blackjack number 102, Shane Sincock, this morning as we cover the uh, quarterfinal match between Gary Lawson and Tony Grantham against Shannon McElroy and Roger Stevens. Good morning, Shane. Morning, Brendan. Morning, viewers. Yeah, lovely uh, morning here in Nelson after a reasonably rough Friday. Yeah, beautiful day in Nelson. And uh, we've got a game here between two of the greats and reasonable crowd in early. Yeah, some keen punters watching. And uh, other fixtures this morning, we've got Taylor Horn and Hamish Carpe playing Shannon Giddens and Jake Graham on rank two. Finbar McGuigan and Keanu Darby are taking on Damian McGee and Lloyd Bellis on four. And Mark Burgess and Jamie Hill playing Ray Martin and Matt Pearson on rank five. So... Lovely start here from uh, both sides, obviously. Conditions look pretty good and looks like one to McElroy early. Yeah, you can't ask for a better game, can you, to watch? <laughs> Certainly what, a bit of interest. Best slides in New Zealand. Yeah, well, Roger Stevens chucking the mat down there. Obviously, he's gone uh, pretty good in recent times. A couple of results in Australia and has gone pretty good this weekend as well with Shan. So, it's uh, you know probably known as just a, a dead set lead at times. Rog and, and prides himself on that against Tony Grantham, who's one of the best leads uh, we've ever had, mate. So should be a good battle off the front. Definitely. So three fixtures today: uh, quarter final, semi final, final. All over 18 ends with no time limit, so there uh, won't be any urgency. We've got all day, and uh, quite a lot of players are going on to the Spates Premier Fours at the Nelson Bowling Club over the next three days as well. So a lot of prize money here in uh, Nelson over this period of time. 20k is the prize pool for this weekend, and no plates or shootouts or anything like that. Just main event only. Yes, it's a great idea to have two tournaments, you know, in a row. Yeah, it's certainly well received and a number of the field double up and uh, probably a little bit contentious not having plates and things like that, Shane, but you'd be in favour of that, like the PGA Tour, you miss the cut, you're gone at the weekend. Oh, we're playing sport, aren't we? You know, some tournaments have too many games involved, I think. Yes, yeah, so I think it um, allows you to put the prize money to the top and people know if they qualify that they'll get a reasonable payout. So yes. we see Rog on his backhand now on the... Uh, the ditch hand, so certainly looks to be turning back to the centre line well down there. The greens seem in pretty good order. You've been playing. Have uh, you enjoyed them? Yep, beautiful greens. Yep, can't complain. Yeah, certainly very fortunate to have Glenn Miller as the curator here and and one of the one of the greats, obviously, been at Burnside through some World Bowls events there and um, a lovely reputation. So both players playing uh, opposite hands here at the moment, but yeah, it looks pretty free given that we had probably 20-odd mils of rain on... Friday, which made things a bit difficult. Yeah, but they've come out pretty good still. Probably more grass than I've ever seen on the Stoke Greens, to be <laughs> Yeah, well, we see Rog here, fair effort down his, his backhand side. Both players just finding their way, but you know they have found the centre line, so it's just a case of once they get dead weight, mate, they should be pretty dangerous. Yeah. Tony persisting with the forehand side here, and... Gary looks pretty interested in this one. He'll cross over with a couple anyway. See Shannon opting for that same backhand side that his lead Roger was playing. Yeah, he's getting the ball away nicely as normal. Yeah, they um, had their work cut out to qualify yesterday. I think they were one shot in front with two ends to play against one of the local combinations. Uh, that was Greg Reed and Graham Crawford, and Roger probably didn't have his finest end, and Shannon drew three shots, made sure they uh, looked comfortable on paper in the end, but... <laughs> They certainly had to, to work to get here. Unlike, uh, you know, the Lawson and Grantham combination have been 
pretty dynamic this weekend. As we see Gary on the backhand tracking pretty well here. Yeah, Gary's he's pretty focused at the moment. He gets focused this time of year, obviously. Yes, I suppose. Uh, yeah, a few significant tournaments and leading into the nationals. Yeah. I think Shannon's reasonably well pointed here as well. As it breaks in now, it's probably just not quite there, but uh, a fair effort and uh, a very good second shot. So we'll have a mixture of commentators today. I think we've got Robbie Reid, Dale Rayner lined up, uh, just a few other players that are, are now out of the tournament to uh, yeah, give the viewers some different perspectives. Shane, and um, in, in terms of an event, have you enjoyed the weekend? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Always enjoyable coming to Nelson. And I suppose, you know, when you when you look at the draw, it's a, a reasonably solid field. Yeah, you can ask anything better, could you, really? No, I'd yeah. say, uh, obviously the club made the call six years ago to, to go to Piers from, you know, a reasonably historic singles tournament, but great shot here from Gaz. Yeah, Gaz has started well today. <laughs> yeah, so I... It's interesting to see what Shannon does here because he's obviously only got the one bowl on the head in terms of his one, uh, which is now third shot, but Roger has got nice position for him, but it's one of those ones of uh, the Stoke Greens at times are a little bit draw drive. Mm. Yeah, that, but a bit more gripping on these days, which is good. You can play a few more shots. It used to be just draw drive <laughs> yeah. back in the day. Yeah, Don, Don Carter, who's no longer with us, was a long-time greenkeeper here and I think they were famous for the double cut on a yeah. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday leading up to the tournament. He wasn't afraid to cut them, was he? Looks like Shannon's just trying to draw this one. Slightly out on the high side. Yes, there's a little conversation here between Lawson and Grantham about what hand to play, and I suppose you know, a few things in their favour if they can turn Gary's bowl onto the jack here. Shame with Tony having one a foot or two behind. Yeah. Two seems pretty good fishing. It, uh, you just be dead drawing on the backhand here, trying to get around Shannon's bowl, and I suppose he, he can count a wee way behind the jack. Yeah, because we're looking to cover, I think. He seems interested in this one. On the stalk. That's a great bowl, isn't it? That's unbelievable. Well, the players are certainly into their work here, and it seems Lawson's clicked onto it uh, very early. Waiting for a, uh, a number to go up on the board there. So he has counted with his third bowl there, Gary Lawson, and made three of it, three personal as well. So um, very accurate stuff, given that Shannon probably put one 30 centimetres away, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're dead right, Gary. Is, he's been focused all weekend and had a few chats with him in the lead up to the event. To the event, he was certainly excited to uh, to get here. And you know, uh, he doesn't travel lightly. Tony's a pretty compatible combination. Obviously, current national peers champion as well, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, Gary was telling me this morning there's a New Zealand squad named again in about three weeks' time. So I think yeah. he's pretty keen to be in that. Yeah, some probably disappointment at missing out on World Bowls and. I suppose if you look at the performance of the men's team, there's uh, not that we pick it, mate, but you know, there are some opportunities there. Andrew Kelly's retired from the international game or, or having a sabbatical anyway, so yes. so that's one opportunity. it would be interesting to see what the selectors come up with. Shannon McElroy, obviously another fellow that we'll be hoping to be in the mix for that possibly. Not 
his availability seems to come and go at times. Yeah, so. yeah he's, he's still pretty keen to play, I imagine. See Tony on his forehand side, and yeah, you know, I suppose most of the time you wouldn't want to play a quarter final on an end rink, but we are in a little bit here, and uh, the end rinks here have been playing pretty well all weekend. Oh, yeah. I can't complain with the with the rank. Nice reply from Rog here. Yeah, very sound stuff that. Tony will be slightly disappointed there. I think there was a nice opportunity to arrive and sit the bowl or touch the jack there, Shane. Yeah. And I think now we'll see Shannon and, and Roger try and play that before uh, it's left for Gary. It does look quite nice. Oh, a huge effort there from Roger, but lovely position there. Yeah, two good bowls. Shannon will be happy with that. Yeah, see a little low five there. Roger with the bucket hat. Obviously had some nice results. You know, he's probably one guy that um, has obviously been around for a while, but I'd say probably one of the most improved players in the country in, in recent years. He certainly gets around a few events, and oh, wearing yeah. the bucket hat, I just wonder if it's a, a nod to Mike Kerner in there. Oh, and might be a deleting thing. Yeah, it could be, think. yeah. Yeah, right. He just he just loves the game. He, he goes he, most tournaments. He, he's always there. He certainly uh, one of the first ones to respond to his invite for this event. And like you said, he's spending a lot more time in Australia these days. Yeah, it's got to help. It's got to help your bowls. Definitely, you've game. got the opportunity to play uh, high-profile events quite regularly as well. Yeah. Yes. It's a reasonable crowd building here. Calvin Scott and Peter Thorne in the background there. A couple of uh, Guys have been around the game for a long time. Yep, two good campaigners. Taylor Horn on the rink next door. He's wearing a hoodie, which is interesting. I don't know about that for bowling a tile. I'll have to take that up with the committee. Oh, it's coming off now. He must have heard me. Yeah, got the word. Yeah, great man, Andrew Curden. Always uh, went one for etiquette. Didn't think hoodies belonged on the bowling green. Thought they were for bank robbers, but... the. <laughs> The uniforms in the game, Shane, have uh, obviously changed a lot in uh, in your career. No, yeah, well, there are a few hoodies these days, but they're just <laughs> proper club hoodies. Yes, that's right. I remember uh, if you wanted to wear shorts, you'd have to wear walk socks, mate. So yeah. it's nice to see a bit of colour as we see Gary on his backhand here. And uh, reasonably handy, but opportunities for Shannon here if he can turn his own or just slip by. See an umpire doing a bit of work on the rink next door there. Got the scope out. Yeah. Fair effort from Shannon here. Coming home late. Geez, that, they're really turning off the bank there. That's phenomenal. Yeah, that, that bowl will be counting, I imagine. Geez, some accurate stuff here. And hopefully this is a sign of things to come in terms of the overall quality of the day. So we see the Lawson combination having a discussion about what's on here for them. I don't know if he can be too positive yet. I mean, he's sort of got one bowl there, really. Yeah, I suppose he has got the deepest bowl there. So it's one of those things, if he's going to play weight, maybe he's better being very positive rather than, than half positive, I suppose. The last thing he wants is the jack to go back 30 or 40 centimetres, probably find himself four down if he didn't go with it, so. Yes, that's right. Be interesting to see what he elects here. Certainly a very astute thinker of the game. You've played a lot with Gary and... Yeah, def definitely. I started playing bowls with Gary about 40 odd years ago. He is running on his forehand side. 
just has to clear the front and doesn't quite so that's, that's what he's afraid of i feel yeah so we'll see shannon here trying to add the bonus looks to have two shots there and well set up by rog and he's added one himself certainly nothing to be afraid of here if he if he happens to touch the white it seems to all be in their favor Come back a long way. Yes, yeah, <laughs> a lot of turnout there, That's isn't there? Um, That's a good ball. ball. Certainly be in the measure. Sweet Tony, have a look now. Yeah, Looks like it did get in, Shane. Yes. They get their three back by the look of that one. So you see Roger reach for the mat. This is a good reply from Roger and Shannon. Yeah, I suppose it was well, you know, the times when teams have scored early, they've been well set up off the front and, you know, I think we'll probably see as the game goes on, obviously two skips that aren't scared to play conversion shots and um, with a, a reasonable degree of accuracy. So looks like Roger's gone a little bit longer here. He's gone too far. Yep. Shannon's throwing the jack back here, which is... Uh, against the terms and conditions of the tournament. I think it's just placed, so... Yeah. I don't know what's happened here. Maybe... Uh, Shannon's got his own rules. Shannon's got his own rules, yeah. But, um... Oh, he's from Stoke, yeah, and Rogers, Rogers said it gets placed, so... Tony's decided that he's going to... Maybe throw it anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, so what, one, uh, I suppose, local rule here, Shane, is that... You know, the jack's only delivered once, and... Oh, oh it's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I suppose it's just something novel as well. The stakes are a bit higher. If you want to try and uh, change your length, go short, you, you bin it, the opposition gets to uh, put it wherever they like. Yeah, definitely. I was in the toilet, mate. Hi, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Try to put it there if I. <laughs> Do you see a reasonable opener there from <laughs> Roger? Gary, this thing was just saying he's had a pit stop, so there'll be pit stop. <laughs> he's been getting through a little bit of water. Yep. Looks to be under the line here, but he, uh, we've got half a toe. Hey, we'll hang around. Yeah, stay there, mate. If you hit that bad luck, just duck under it, round it. Really interested in this one, Gary. It's going to be handy. Interesting. To, the leads are stuck with uh, their own hand here. Yeah, it takes two or three years to work out what, what you think is best. As Rog uh, has a change, hops over to his forehand side, follow Tony down, and looks reasonably well pointed thus far. Pretty good change and sets him up with a nice position now. I think it's his first time down there. Yeah. 18 inches again, mate. Drips into here. Get to Rog. You come past. He's good. Nick the jack around the corner. I'd say some of the viewers can certainly pick up Gary's instructions there, looking to once again play up before the opposition. So probably quite a bit of that, you know, from both sides when the opposition skips such a good converter that 
just looking to tidy things up a little bit. Yes, it's another handy ball from Tony. Yeah, very handy. And uh, obviously Tony, uh, one thing about him is he's a very dead weight player. And uh, yeah, you know, some, sometimes that maybe does hamstring a little bit in terms of having position in situations like that. Yeah. Oh, he's, Tony's you know, a great singles player. He has a good record playing singles, but I think he's the best lead going around at the moment. So. Yes, definitely. And uh, some of his performance this weekend has been superb. Shannon now coming in on his forehand side and looks to have a great line, but we a metre short on weight, but a nice sider for his next. Just uh, ball's taking a nice arc this morning. Looks like the greens, the greens have dried out a little bit after a significant well rain event on Friday. Yeah, it was definitely it was a big lake out there on Friday. <laughs> it was indeed. It was a yeah. A lot of toing and froing about what we do, and got through six games yesterday of 12 ends, which uh, made for a big day. But I suppose you know, 70, 72 ends in a day is no more than what we're planning on playing Friday anyway. But just you know, the two extra games means a bit more management, a few more game situations, and certainly a few drained players at the end of yesterday. It was a solid day yesterday. Friday was a solid day too. It was indeed. <laughs> Yeah, a wee bit of the sponsor's product consumed. It's an entertaining day. Very entertaining day. So, <laughs> see Shannon now, it's looking to improve on his last. And he's probably just looking to stretch out here. Once again, not quite there, but probably got a second shot. Yeah. Give him the opportunity with his next as well to try and touch the white. But once again, I think we'll see Gary trying to just tuck it around the corner and tidy it up. On his forehand in the Mount Albert Bowling Club colours, where Tony plies his trade. Good Good. And that's yep. a reasonable position there. Gary's joined that club as well. Oh, has he? Oh, He's right. going to be playing in the club for them this year. Sevens. I think he's playing his red bowls out of Auckland. Oh, okay. Is that a club you've been to in the, the past? Never been there. Been to a few, but not that one. <laughs> no. Well, it's certainly got some nice gear. Yeah. So Roger's reassuring Shannon there that he doesn't need a great deal on his last, and it is a nice position he's playing to there. He's, he's nailed his line on that hand a couple of times, so just be looking for, you know, if he does get a touch, it does make it particularly hard with Gary here. You see on the screen there, there's a uh, certainly a wall of bowls in the front. If Shannon could tuck it around the corner, yeah, he said, "Good line twice." Looks under the line this time to me, but it's only halfway. Confirmed. Right. <laughs> Gary looking to add the extras, but once again appears to be under the line and just being a bit short of a gallop there. as well. Yeah, certainly careful. Yeah. Don't want to be happy there, I think, in that situation. Paul Matheson in the background there. One of your Cantabrian uh, comrades, Zinni. Yeah, he's at another interesting weekend. 
He's, he's a good campaigner. Yeah, he certainly gets around a few tournaments as well. Popular tourist. And the Tongan national coach, Peter Thorne. Speaking with him about that role, something he's enjoyed and something he's done for like five years now. Yeah, it's good to see him put some work into the younger players. Yeah, he's, he's certainly a uh, good advocate for the game and, you know, in, in his early days played a lot with obviously Ryan Brassie and some of, yes. the, some of the greats in Auckland as well. So it's, a, yeah, a bit of a, a nod to tradition there, some of the stories once he uh, gets chatting in the club rooms. Yeah, we're talking about the other night, actually. He's won a couple of fours titles with Brassy. Thorny was a good player. Yeah, I think that Thorny still goes reasonably solid. I don't know if Mike Kernan agrees with that. They had a in, bit of an indifferent weekend, but they are one team that do qualify here more often than not. Found themselves in a hard section this year and couldn't quite make it out. But lovely start there from Tony, obviously, with a side toucher that he's now going to follow on. I suppose anywhere past you get a clap now, isn't he? Yeah, it's a good place to be. Yeah. It's one of those things, I suppose, if you got one on top of it, even if you put it in the ditch, you get a clap for having the right idea. Yeah. <laughs> so. Gazza's always pretty positive. Yeah. That's a sensational position there from Tone. So he Roger's down the same hand and... Shannon Sellingham just looked to work his own bowl, slip under, get to the bowl or jack, but I suppose at this time, you know, certainly can't be shy, and anywhere past Stubbs gives Shannon some options as this end progresses. Yeah, it's, a nice, it's a nice head building. It's a good it's a yeah. been good all morning so far, really. It certainly has been a wonderful seat. Um, Roger have a change there. He sort of has blocked that forehand side a little. He's getting the ball away nicely, isn't he? as he normally, normally does. He's a very compact setup, Tony, isn't he? Yeah. Gary's calling for it to run. Mm, certainly in the area, yeah. Shannon's requested a change of hand from Rog. I think that you shouldn't be afraid of reaching here, A, because there's nothing to be scared of, and B, because position-wise that We'll give Shannon some options. It looks like he's played this pretty well, Shane. It's coming in nicely. Yeah, just looking at probably turning a little bit too early, but got the hole. Great weight and obviously a nice position as well. Yeah, ben, once again, I suppose we're looking at Gary in a situation where he's looking to tidy up because you give a player like Shannon McElroy three bowls to to the bowl, touch the white there, there's going to be opportunities and there's <laughs> going to be a reasonable yeah. high percentage that he's going to get it. Shannon hasn't really attacked so far, he's just been playing just good weight, weighted bowls. He might go a bit quicker this end. See Gary on his backhand and Makes its way in now, does appear short, and he'll be probably quite disappointed with yes. that, Gaz. He certainly had a good opportunity, even any, you know, if he did get slightly past or whatever, might have changed Shannon's idea, but he did appear frustrated with that one, Gary. Obviously, you say you've played a lot with him. Tough taskmaster? Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, the early days, he was, he was probably... A Pretty hard to play for. You need to be playing well. <laughs> Is there any? Uh, can you confirm the rumours that, particularly at the nationals, he'd go down to the the green at five six in the morning, have a roll up before play, or was that just oh, speculation? Yeah. No, that, that's that's true. Oh, yeah, I thought Shen might play a bit quicker there. Yes, he certainly opened it up. So you, you drag you out of bed, get down there, and yep. you beat oh, yeah. the greenkeeper there most mornings. I think Gaz, he'd be the most dedicated player in New Zealand, I think. He puts the most work in. Yes. Of the top players. But um, on a number of occasions, he did mention I should change sports. That <laughs> we were changing hands. <laughs> <laughs> At least find a different hobby, but... Yeah. He's, uh, he didn't mean he just wanted to get the best out of you. That's right, he's judged as well. That's yeah, I, and I think it's certain element, obviously, uh, 
<laughs> his personality is reasonably well documented, but just sometimes he's trying to fire himself up as well. I noticed yesterday a couple of times he and Tony turned over and he, uh, he could, I, at one stage he said to Tony, how do you play for New Zealand? <laughs> Tony, Tony just shrugged it off and moved on, but, you know, it just fires him up as well personally. Yeah, we'll They've got a good relationship. It's been, yeah. it's been good to see them in action this weekend. He's Shannon on his backhand looking to draw the shot. And it's a fair effort here. It's another good ball. Sets Gary makes the shot. Yeah, Shannon looks pretty pumped up this morning. Yes, it's certainly one tournament that you know, he's obviously won North East Valley singles a few times and won a lot of other things, but this, this tournament's always escaped me. She hasn't qualified all that often, so... Yeah, I was talking to Shannon yesterday. He's, he wants to play for New Zealand again. And he was disappointed he missed it. Didn't get a chance to defend his title at the World Bowls. Yeah, obviously, yeah. A difficult call for the selectors there. and yep. um, Yeah, very tough, I suppose, on Shannon personally. He did have a little bit of time away from the international game, but through that COVID period, you know, there were, things were on and off. And um, obviously, owns a, owns a company here as a, a painter and decorator. So. Yeah, you know, it's difficult to play internationally. There's not a lot of coin in it, Shane. No, no it's, there's not a lot of money for the rep, uh, for the top players. I suppose that's why it's so astonishing, you know, the amount of time that Gary does put in. and he's, he's playing a bit in Australia at the moment. Yeah, he always likes to go and spend some time over there. under the line here anyway so we'll see Shannon look to draw a second but lovely wait there from, from Gary you know he probably couldn't be too much more positive but they probably did have two seconds there if yeah, the wait was good mm. he's just looking to sit that sit the shot ball for two Shannon on his backhand trying to add the extras. It's coming down a nice line. I'm not sure about the weight. No, just not quite going to get there, but they'll take one. Move out to a 5-4 lead. Roger back to the backhand side after and you know, had to change last time and he looks like he started reasonably well here. That hand is just a, a bit tight, a bit tighter than the, the other hand. So. Yeah, lovely weight there. And uh, in terms of a tournament uh, on the calendar, Shane, this is one you enjoy coming to? Yes, definitely. I've come to the singles a couple of times. But I think you made a good choice to, to change to pairs. I suppose if uh, you know, speak with a, a lot of the legends that, that do come here, and I think we have got 12 past or present internationals here and a, a handful of Australians as well, but as time goes on, uh, singles tournaments get a bit harder on the body. Speaking with Andre Smith yesterday, who's been a fantastic supporter of our events, and yeah, I think that Piers is certainly his preference. Yes, we were looking at the, uh, the Stoke singles on this board this morning, and some great names on, the, on that board. Some of New Zealand's best players have won it. So. Yeah, it was certainly a, uh, one of the main events on the calendar in the 80s and 90s. And during that time, uh, quite often sponsored by airlines as well. So players would actually get flown here for free. Yeah, um, incredible. Yeah, and said or in New Zealand vet deals at various times. So 
Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, nothing like that now, but I suppose it's a, uh, it's a difficult landscape out there in terms of sponsorship and very thankful to our naming rights sponsor, the Turf Hotel, as well as a number of others that have, have made these events possible, obviously with the women's peers last week and you know, this event, but Roger on his backhand, and we know he gets some late turn up there, it's a very, very good lawn ball there. That's a shot. You can really, looks like you can trust that hand there to turn, chain. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that side of the green. Gary's calling for this one to hurry. Tony be disappointed with those two balls. Yeah, I think that yeah, he, he'd done the hard work. It's probably just hamstrings a little bit of, of what Gary can do initially. But I think, yeah, depending on what Shannon does, I think we'd see Gary go up on a, his forehand side. Touch the white, there's a good chance he's going to score there anyway, so no harm done really. And Shannon deciding what hand to play, a couple of options. Just requested a uh, score update from the other ranks, other quarterfinal games, so come back to you shortly with that. That's a good ball from Shannon. I think it's just got a draw on here, really. I think the other hand's blocked. Great effort here. Huge effort. I've got a great shot, makes two of it. That's a great ball. Certainly uh, a lovely ball, but uh, Shannon won't be too discouraged. I've got a nice position to play to you here. Yeah. Kerry got the ball in. He got the ball in nicely. Then. All four players getting the ball away. Good. Yes. Certainly. Uh, Put a lot of time in his delivery over the years. It doesn't change a great deal. No, no, it hasn't. <coughs> See Shannon, I'd say, looking to play with a little bit of weight. I don't think he sent this one. It's going to pull up short, and it's a uh, a missed opportunity there. Disappointed with that, with that ball. Yeah, well, I sort of thought he could have been a bit more aggressive there. Has found a new friend. <laughs> yeah, a few issues with Someone else the likes local them. pests. <laughs> yeah, we had, Rogers obviously got a bowl at the, the back of the rink as well, so probably did have the four deepest bowls there, the McElroy combination. So, no real excuse for pulling up short there, Zinni. Maybe he no, dumped it. No. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say he's a dumped it, but <laughs> probably a wee bit harsh, but. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, he's one guy that's got a delivery all over the YouTube coaching videos, mate. So. That's right. I think he's all right. Big bowl here from Gary. Anywhere past, it'd be very handy. He looks to be on a good line. We'll see a bit of late turn here. What sort of bowls Gary using, do you know? He's got some SRs now. Yeah, like he's just started using these bowls. He had the GTRs for quite a while. Yeah. They're a nice, nice long bowl. Right, Shannon playing his third and final bowl on the sixth end. He looks like he's reasonably well pointed. Just a little oh, bit of it's, it's yeah, wriggled up. Maybe. He yeah, could wait. That was probably the best thing about the bowl, wasn't it? <laughs> I think Gary's gone to the size threes 
now. Is that right? Yeah. What was his reasoning for that? Do you know? I think a lot of the Australian players are using threes, threes now. Just a little more control. Yeah. yeah. I thought he'd he thought he'd try some out. I suppose it was one of those things over the years. You know, bowls went up to size seven. That's right. And uh, you know, everyone used as big as they always say, use the biggest bowl that you can handle. But yeah, there's quite a few players that have have gone down the size. See Gary now on his backhand. Looking to clear the two at the front and won't do so. So we'll get a lead there from Tony Grant. Oh, was holding one. Said they had one. Certainly a difficult one to add to there for Gazza. As we've got some scores around the ground. And it is Taylor Horn 1, Shannon Ghetto 6 after 5 ends of 18. Keanu Darby 5, Damian McGee 4 after 6. And Jamie Hill, two. Ray Martin, five, after five ends in their fixture. So there's certainly some uh, good battles on out there, Shane, today. I think, uh, yeah, looking at the top eight, there's uh, a number of teams that could win it. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, later in the day, whoever comes through this morning's games are going to be outstanding. Yeah, big battle on uh, for the Victoria Club, I suppose. Ray Martin against... Mark Burgess, and I uh, did see a number of comments there that people were looking forward to that one. And it's been great to have a little bit of Australian talent here as well. And you know, on, on the rig next door, we've got Shannon Ghettos and, and Jakey Graham, and have certainly been popular tourists, have got amongst the festivities. Uh, it's actually, you know, Shannon was saying that he got his first ever passport to come out here. I imagine yeah. he's in his 40s, so, um, you know, yeah, the Australian, good experience the Australian for him. Boys have always been. Like a good, you know, like entertainment. Yeah, it's on a, and off the green. He said that now yeah, he's got his passport. The world's his oyster. <laughs> yeah. And he's stuff yeah, there from very Tony. good players, the Australians. I mean, yeah, I think they've uh, found it quite novel that the bowls left their rink a bit. You know, obviously, yeah, the, the way the surfaces here play uh, a little bit differently. Yes. See Roger now on his forehand side, and looks like he's judged this reasonably well. Yeah, Roger would be happy with the way he's playing. Yeah, he's going very so well. Oh, it's pretty nip and tuck, and uh, both lead and skip side of things, though, isn't it, really? Yeah. A wee bit of breeze starting to appear. Roger on his forehand. Not sure if he loves that one. Sort of mentioned something, looked at his hand. I think he thought he was quick, but well, certainly uh, one on and a couple behind. It's not the worst position to be in. No, nothing short there, which is... He's a, uh, he's a tough taskmaster, though, Roger. He's hard on himself Yeah, I think at I think times. I think but it, so. Yeah, that's yeah. right, I suppose. You know, when you get a tournament like this and you're alive and well on the quarter-final stage, you Really keen to to push on as as we all would be, but he certainly does have set himself a very high standard. Yeah, like you said, he had a good win in Australia recently, so he'll be looking to yeah maintain add maintain title. a bit of momentum for sure. Shannon's first bowl on its way on the seventh end here. 18 ends, no time limit today, and he looks like he's grasped this one pretty well. A little bit of pace on, but nice opportunity here for Gary if he can yes, so touch yeah. the jack where he's got a, a couple of seconds. Yeah, he's got plenty to play for here. here we just see him arrive on the backhand under... 
Tony's bowl. Playing with a little bit of weight. Just going to turn now. Oh, good result here. Oh. Fair effort. It's only a bowl off there. Probably a quarter of a bowl. Three seconds. From, that's so. right. Yeah, definitely a big bowl for Shannon here. We're going to drop a metre on his last. Going to kick off the bank there now. And certainly some late turn to be had, but uh, maybe third or fourth shot. Gary be looking to put him under a little bit of pressure here. He might go a bit quicker this time. Yeah, I wonder that, yeah. Certainly got plenty of opportunities here, Gary. A number of options. Playing good waiting here. He has a, a nice opportunity to touch the jack. Set the Very bowl. Very close. Oh, phenomenal effort. Rocks the bowl. No more. He sort of gave the reaction when he let it go that he didn't love it, but it sort of kept him interested for a long time. Yeah. Probably half a bowl out from the for <laughs> yeah. three or four. And the greens dry out. Today, I imagine, so that'll be get a bit quicker. Yeah, yesterday, uh, obviously a lot of overnight rain prior, but did look a little bit sticky in the in the morning, and then probably sweated up a little bit throughout the day as well. A lot of moisture hanging around. Yes, that's right. So you should now going to change over to his backhand here, looking to draw a second. Certainly out on the wider side of things. Couldn't convert, so one to Roger Stevens. Take Roger and Shannon out to a 6-5 lead. Really nip and tuck so far, no one's really... That was probably the loosest seed they've had yes. so far. And a, you know, an opportunity for conversions for both skips so far, but no one's had a, a really telling one yet. Roger Stevens with his opener on the backhand side. There's certainly a, quite a lot of turn late here at the moment. Yes, there is. Nice start Tony. here from Tony, indeed. It's a well done from Gary Lawson. 30 centimetres short of the jack, I'd say, but controlling the centre line. Not that it's such a factor here when <laughs> the draw line's well outside of that. Certainly if you're on carpet, you'll be pleased to have one there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you can play any shot you want on these greens, so... Yeah, it's credit to Glenn Miller for the time he's put in. Both greens planed in the last couple of years, so... That's a great shot there from Roger Stevens. Change of hand. He played two bowls down that hand for two touches now. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, yeah, interesting to see man. what he does next time they come this way. Might have to poke our head out the door and. Uh... Yeah. Now Roger's put, he's putting some pressure on Tony. Definitely. Yeah, did. Game so far. Yeah, neither of them have necessarily nailed it, but I'd say Roger's probably had. Better position yeah, so right. far. Tony's actually got a number of short bowls, but lovely response here. It's a huge yeah. effort. Just short, but very handy. Yeah. Toucher. High class lawn bowls. 
Shannon, having a good look at this. Trying to work out what he would like Roger to do. I mean, that ball was going to fall over. It did. There we go. It changes it a little. Just confident down here. Yeah. Even if you're just sort of there, right? You can get around that. Get a little touch of the jack. Oh, really good. Yeah, as you might have heard Shannon say there, confident draw on the back end and certainly no demons in touching the white. No, not at all. Not, nothing to be afraid of there. Calls to hurry. He turns one of these up, so a handy third. Be interesting to see whether the cannon on the front or the middle black bowl there would miss the jack. I'd suspect it perhaps wouldn't, but anything past will give Gary a good opportunity here. Yeah, I think he's looking to save that shot for himself. <laughs> Did he do that when he played with you as well? Yeah, he seemed to. <laughs> No, he definitely did a big bowl of this situation. So yeah, he's done his that's job. That's a lot. Yeah. Done his job, right? It's a nice position. I think Gary's looking at what we uh, just discussed whether the blue bowl will get past the jack. But Shannon showing some uh, graphic instructions to Rog there. A couple of fists as bowls and jacks and just needed the salt and pepper shakers there for I think it's the first time Shannon and has played with Roger. Yeah. Uh, they're going, going pretty well. Yeah, well, uh I understand that they, they do spend a little bit of time together in, in a sort of coaching capacity. Roger's had a couple of days on the green with Shannon up here and Yes, that's right. Um you know, it certainly hasn't done him any harm. Uh, sort of Shannon there matching the, the back bowl of Tony's. Good opportunity here from, for Gary to, to play a, a telling conversion. He can be positive. Yeah. Yes, I think we'll, we'll see him on the forehand underneath Tony's front bowl and just trying to turn the black bowl onto the blue bowl and just suspect that the jack might spurt out the side a little bit. Wouldn't surprise me if Shannon was trying to finish something just wide with his necks, but Gary will be open to change it up. The brakes now. Won't be happy with that, isn't No, it's in the little bit high. And into the ditch. I suppose over the years that the greens here have been a little bit draw drive in, in your experience, but they've got the sting out of them a little bit due to uh, you know, Glenn does put water on them and so we've uh, had some natural irrigation over the weekend, but um, oh, the fast! I mean, the fast greens are beautiful. You know, back in the day, you could just probably had two options: a draw or the draw. <laughs> yeah, but you could definitely draw a shot. You know. Shannon on his backhand, trying to clear the front one. This looks like a great bowl. Touches the jack, makes it's two of it, and just really changes it up there. That's a great bowl. Yeah. He was all over that a long way out, wasn't he? Yep. Got two, but yeah, opportunity for Gary. Set the bowl, he'll leave the white there and score. On his forehand, and he looks interested. You've seen a few mannerisms, that little hop and skip after. Yeah, his delivery's never really changed much. So looking to run this one out, but... Not quite enough, but a huge effort. And, uh, Roger said to Shannon, give him nothing. No wide shelves out there on the forehand side. Going to persist with the backhand, and he can count at Roger's toe there. Another good effort. No harm there. Kez hasn't got too much on here, really. No, I think he can certainly turn around his previous bowl. We've seen that, that there's definitely um, some late bend there. But I suppose you know, he, he could attack if he got Tony's bowl. It's most probably going to lock on Rogers anyway. But it, it would be a, possibly a big call at this stage. 
I think my lot just to turn his arm bowl over. Just drop one. Yes. Yeah. It's not too bad. I'll walk back to the mat now. What will we see? I think it's going to go with your option. On the attack. Yep. On its way, slightly under. Bowl narrow there, that was all. That's right. So two shots there, so they move out to an 8-5 lead after 8 of 18 ends. Peter Thorne's got a scorecard there. It's actually 9 ends, but halfway we are now. So. Yeah, play, playing the ninth here, eh? Are they? I think, yeah. Maybe not, can't remember. We won't argue about it. <laughs> yeah. arguing. Long time listener, first time caller in the commentary box here, so <laughs> we're learning as we go. I suppose I could always put my head out the window and see the scoreboard, but. There's <laughs> <laughs> a bit short length throw in here from Roger, and he's got his first one on the way on the forehand side. Yeah, they haven't played a long end yet. No. Always bring the mat up. <laughs> Fair way too. Good start here from Tony. Lovely response, isn't it? Is it ready to run out now and it's a lovely opener. Be one player Shane, that when he uh, he can really burn when he gets going off the front. That's right. I mean, playing all those draw bowls has got to be it's got to be good for your overall game. I think that's right. Yeah, he certainly uh, hasn't gone as well this morning as he can, but they're sort of still feeling each other out a little bit off the front. from Tony. So you're on the way back to Christchurch today or? Yeah, tonight. Yeah, around 8 o'clock tonight. So Looking forward to my day in Stoke Bowling Club. And what club are you playing out of down there now? Uh, the Papua Nui Club. And the club down there competitive? Is it a weekly thing or played over a weekend? The Simmons is over a weekend. Yeah. They just they play three fours on Saturday mornings for oh, okay. before Christmas. Probably a contentious issue to be honest. <laughs> and then after that do you go back to your club for club champs or anything like that or just afternoons off? Uh normally Saturday afternoons have a game of club club champs. Yeah. Yeah, lovely set up here from Tony. and looking to respond on his backhand and Roger's certainly interested. Yeah, he's sent him a lot of, lot of bowls in the area. It's a very good effort. Huge effort. He'll be happy with the way he's playing. Seems to be a reasonable crowd building here. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Why not come and watch some bowls? Yeah, I suppose with the, the luxury of having live streaming and very thankful to Bowls New Zealand for helping facilitate that. It's a, a massive help, but you know, maybe a, a number of people locally do just tune in in their lounge room. 
wonder if we maybe should geo-block it so they have to come down to the uh, venue. I imagine there'd be a few players turning up saying that entertainment was going Definitely pretty well last night. Yeah, I think they'll sniff a bit of Ronda Bellis catering and be down here. Certainly famous for the food, these events. Been well fed, Shane, you happy with that? Yes, you can't complain. Yeah, it's probably it hasn't been your priority this weekend in terms of consumption, but... Oh, I've certainly fitted a couple of scones in there. Yeah, there's a lot of scones, couple, couple of Unbelievable, yeah. I suppose you have to mention the food. Something that Kevin Hickland always would touch Great on. Shot, so yeah. It's a lovely yeah. shot, Shannon, on his back end. And he's judging the line on that hand really well. It does look enormous. Certainly yeah, some turn there to be had. but He's found that line nicely. Gary attacking. He's not sure. He's just caught the front ball. Open for him for his next one anyway. Interesting to see what Shannon does here. Does need another one in the area. He's played two good bowls so far this end. Yeah, I suppose you say you wouldn't necessarily want to fatten it up, but equally if you're holding two, it makes it a big bowl for Gary. You wouldn't want to find yourself sort of five down at this stage of the match. and right. Yeah, it would be an opportunity for the McElroy pairing to pull away here. Still looking to get close. Rogers on his haunches. Cheering it in. It's not quite there, so I suspect that we'll see Gary attack again. Got the at two least seconds. two seconds, yeah. Rocks the front. He wouldn't. He'd be disappointed with that, with that shot. Yes, he... Uh, Hasn't really got the drive going early here. She, interesting, Gary and Shannon spent some time playing together two or three weeks ago in Australia. And yeah, they went pretty good. Boy. Yeah, where was that event? Moama. Yeah, that's right. I think they finished fourth or fifth. Yeah, no, no, they were certainly in the mix going into the last day. And, uh, Quality sort of, field. Yeah, Shannon talked me through. Uh, they sort of had a must-win game in the morning and uh, they got, got away to a poor start. I think they were 9-0 down. And he said, oh, said, bro, Gary didn't hit much, and I sort of asked Gary about it, and I said, oh, what were the targets like? And he said, enormous. So <laughs> yeah. it wasn't lost on him that, you know, they sort of left themselves too much work to do, but yeah, finishing top five in, in that event's obviously yeah, a hell of a result. I see... Uh, the world's best players were there. <laughs> what, was there a combination of Sheriff and Marshall? Yeah, I don't think they went too good either. No, they didn't. They didn't go that well. So this will be the longest end we've played here. And Rogers yep. on the forehand, where he's now played, I think, three balls for three touches. Maybe there's yeah. another one I don't think of, but the good ones have certainly been memorable start. up there. Do you think Roger could be a, belt of, a bolter for a New Zealand squad? Um, well, there's, there's not many leads around. Be honest, so no, and he has a fair dink of lead, isn't he? Yeah, there's not a lot of guys that actually just lead, yeah, you know, just lead but he does put he put another guy that does put a lot of time into the game. Oh, yeah, we right spoke there. about that earlier, he, he yeah. loves it. Such a terrific response from Tony there, Shannon giving Roger quite a lot of detail. Another very good effort. Yeah, Shannon's calling for it to sprint. Line. Terrific leading there. So the New Zealand squad that you're talking about, do you know how many players are going to be selected in that? No, I don't. No, I, just, don't I just heard them talking about it this morning. And do, what sort of events have they got on the horizon? I think, I think they play... Um, I think the Asia Pacific's is not on anymore. Uh, yeah. I think there's just one test... Might be trans Tasman after Christmas. Yeah. One series. It's not a lot on. Yeah. 
Macquarie and have been played since Asia Pacifics before COVID. Yeah, uh, so it's been some time. They, they won the peers. Yeah, but probably here. In Australia. Was so that a broad pitch? Yeah. yeah. Impossible yeah. Jack down that side, mate. Anything down this side of the jack is really good. Once again, a lot of detail in the instruction there from Shannon McElroy asking for Rog to finish something on the outside side of the, well, the jack that's off the centre line at the moment. But it looks like he's certainly passed. Time. Whether he's going to stay up or not is another question. Let's see Shannon bend down and, and pick that one out of the ditch. So unfortunate, but once again, like we said, you got a couple on it. You get yeah, past, right. you get a clap for having the right idea, don't you? So Yeah. Changing hands can be difficult at times. Yeah, especially over length that's been a little bit foreign to them in this fixture. That's right. Tony. Huge effort here from Tony, who's... Great effort here. Yeah. Touch the white. What a shot. Oh, great ball. Lovely long ball. Yeah, changing it in here. It's a great all. Probably need to score, keep the scoring again, so Gary and Tony. Just to stay in there. While they're discussing that, we've got some uh, more scores from around the green. With Taylor Horn, 7. Shannon Giddo's 8 after 9 of 18 ends. Keanu Darby, 8. Damian McGee, 6 after 9. And Jamie Hill, 8. Ray Martin, 8. 8 all after 10 ends completed there. So all very nip and tuck around the place. Jamie Hill has been playing particularly well this weekend. He's so. been terrific. And Mark Burgess has gone well also. So That's right, Victoria club player, one nice. guy that probably hasn't played a whole heap of, of any representative stuff, really. No, that's right. He'll be happy the way that he's been going this weekend. Yeah, he's a popular tourist as well. Birgit. Shannon on his forehand, just looking to get to the shot bowl, but it gives him a lovely position there. It does look difficult to score at this stage. I suppose if you Gary, you don't want to leave him something wide of the line on this backhand side. No, that's right. It's coming in on a nice line. Lovely line. Unbelievable effort here from Gary Lawson. Get to the jack and make two of it. That's unreal. That's... I think that most probably... It's a great hit yeah. so far on this length of... So just planning at the moment. Bit of a discussion between Shannon McElroy and his lead. You look at that angle there. The options to turn one of Rogers' front bowls. Jeez. I'm not a very good player, but I think I might bang oh, this. Don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> you sort of got three thirds. It's most probably going to kill. But he'll probably turn this uh, blue bowl onto the jack and make a full enemy. It's interesting, Rogers. Two, <laughs> two shot bowls have probably got in the way now. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Terrific setup. Yeah. And then uh, all of a sudden, yeah, you got two short ones on the line. You wouldn't believe that they're on Gaz uh, Tony on position now that after the first two bowls. <laughs> yeah, two bowl, two touches. Yeah. Both, both probably touching the white. Gary really got the opportunity to put the asset on now, but take another neat bowl if he's to do so. On its way. And he's following it. Certainly looks a nice line. Just giving a good chance. Get interested now. Yeah, nice. Gaza, Tony says... Now I think Shannon's going to go fast. Yeah, he's actually got a good split on there, hasn't he? Mm. If he can follow through. Yeah, there's probably a, quite a few options in that front bunch there. And enough uh, 
sort of combination of thirds and fifths that it's hard to see it going too sour, but Shannon's not afraid to attack. No, he's looking to play that same conversion. Turn Rogers over. It's a huge effort. Oh, phenomenal. Excellent head here. Oh, great lawn bowls, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. He's not afraid to attack Shannon, but sometimes, you know, particularly when he's feeling it on the draw. He, 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 he trusts his weight, you know, yes. two, two or three yards away. And, and I suspect sometimes, you know, if he thinks he's feeling it on the draw, he doesn't necessarily want to throw that out. Some yeah. some guys, you know, like, he's guys like Ryan Bester and that, the renowned hitters, yeah. yeah. But yeah, for Shannon, he certainly got it in his artillery, but yeah. his drawing accuracy and sort of weight control probably is what sets him apart. He, he backs it, himself. I think he, he, it's certainly, uh, you know, obviously he's skipping here, but he does see himself as a lead at, at the international level as well. That's right. Yeah. I suppose if you look at some of the uh, the campaigns he's been on, he's, he's sort of skipped peers and things like that. Oh, he's, he's, he loves leading. Yeah. yeah. And particularly when he skipped in the Northern Hemisphere and then gone on to play the singles, say, um, you know, look back on a couple of those campaigns and perhaps leading the peers sets you up better for the singles as well. That's right. Yeah. Just drawing shots in, in those conditions. But yeah, he loves leading, especially at that level because he's such a good thinker of the game as well. Um, maybe you know, a joy for the skippers because <laughs> you, you don't have to tell him. He knows what sort of position you need to have and yeah. pretty good. Uh, got the gist of some of the uh, international competition. So 9-7 now, 10 completed ends. Yeah, Tony and... Gary did well to score that last end, the way it was building. Yes. <laughs> and it was a lovely time for them to score as well, as Tony on his forehand. It's been a nice change for Tony over to, the, to that side of the rink coming this way. Yeah, that's, He's that's had more bowls handy. That's right, yeah. It's just a wee bit tighter that hand. It's just more getting your weight right down there. Roger following him on his forehand side. And Just passed. These greens are in terrific order. Nice view of them there. Yeah, after the rain we had, you can see uh, where the mat areas have been playing in the other, other direction yesterday. It's certainly done no harm, has it? Aaron? No, no, no. Standing up to the water they've had pretty well. <laughs> and there's certainly a lot of water. Not a lot, Nelson. <laughs> no. When we get it, we get it here, that's for sure. But you see Roger on his forehand. It's coming back it's now. This play. is a very well played lawn bowl. Very handy.
Huge effort from Roger here. Oh, it's just missed the edge of the jack and the bowl, but terrific setup off the front from the leads. Definitely good leading from both players. And you've spent the last few days playing with Calvin Scott and uh, obviously won the tournament two years ago, was it? Yes, we did. Yep. Memorable final. What a one for the ages. I've heard it spoken about a few times. And yeah. uh, Ray Martin, I remember he, he let that bowl go and just threw his arms up in the air. He knew that he had nailed it. And then uh, you got him off with your last. And I'm not sure where that came from, but yeah. it's in the memory. <laughs> it's a distant memory now. But oh, Scotty, Scotty played well again this weekend. I mean, we lost to Gary and Tony yesterday. Close game of bowls. And he's still looking to play for New Zealand. So yeah, he's well, in the current squad. And I think um, for you guys, you know, with the rain and the greens being a bit slow, you see both renowned for being very, very good fast green players and probably didn't quite suit the conditions, but... We see Gary there, sit Tony and make sure he's got number one. No, we went to support. I mean, we went to support. We we played some good balls. We. I must say it was a very difficult section there. That's right. Last year's winners: Tom Tumity and Craig Carter, yourselves, Ray Pearson and uh, Matt Pearson and Ray Martin that we spoke about from finals two years ago. Yes. Shannon, oh, that no, was a great section. Bit unlucky there, Shan. It's twice now that combination's just squeezed through a hole. Yeah, there were certainly some interesting uh, games in round seven yesterday. Just carry on his backhand. And uh, I, I, I sort of caught the back end of one game where Damian McGee and Lloyd Ballas have ended up qualifying, played Peter Hodson and Robbie Reid, local combination. Peter and Robbie were out, but Damian had to win by seven to qualify. Seven up playing the last end, had an umpire's measure for shot, and after two or three minutes the umpire picked the jack up, dead end, oh, wins by seven to go through. So yeah, it, was, uh, it doesn't get much tighter than that. It's a game of inches, isn't it? Yeah, I think... Uh, the pair of, uh, it cost Tony Fairbling and Steve Poser qualifying, and great to have Steve Poser back. That's right. Caps Blackjack in his day, and yep. he's had probably 15 years away from the event, but certainly... Uh, he's keen to play some more bowls. So. Yeah, well, neat personality as well, Steve. He's always a nice guy to have a chat with, and yeah. I suppose, uh, you know, what another guy from a, a bygone era. That's right. Yeah, he played for New Zealand. A number of years ago, but he's keen to play some more bowls. Gary now on the mat with his third bowl. I see the New Zealand sector's just turned up to have a look. Yep. Bowl here from Gary. Yeah, huge bowl from Gary. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he's made of that there. They've got a few rounds. It's it could be a multiple. Three. Yeah. See Tony Grantham ducking the camera there with the prominence of streaming. Now the, you don't have to ask the players. I remember in the early days you'd always be roaring at them to get out of yeah. the way, but also this uh, fantastic reproduction courtesy of Bowls New Zealand. There's a number of camera angles and That's right. not quite. Big bowl here from Shannon. He's, he's wide. Oh, oh yuck. That's going to five. That is five. It's a handful there and he gives yeah. Roger the, I'm sorry, but there's a momentum swing, Shane. That's massive. Yeah, that's huge. Unfortunate, but that was the risk. Oh. You know, they had one bowl on the head initially, and Gary set that one through. And Gary played three good bowls there. Put some heat on. So, the big swing, the five. He's Gary Lawton's team of himself and Tony Grantham. 
lead 12-9 over Shannon McElroy and Roger Stevens, and yeah, that was so that was chance, massive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we mentioned earlier that we were sort of lacking conversions, and there we go. Wait a minute, that's right. Probably could have done with another conversion this time last Sunday morning. That's right, yeah. It's been a week now. <laughs> are, you, are you coming right? <laughs> coming right, yeah. So you got your South African shoes on <laughs> today. Gary mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I came down here last Sunday and inadvertently had a forest green t-shirt on with a yellow stripe through the middle and it wasn't very well received <laughs> complete accident but that yeah that, obviously a present yeah it must have been a present yeah <laughs> uh, she got the shoes off the clearance rack <laughs> thanks Shane oh, okay <laughs> enough Christmas. about fashion it's nearly Christmas we see Tony Grantham on his forehand now he looks pretty well down here just looking to run on he gets a clap from the gaffer Starting to put some heat on there. They are indeed. Yeah, yeah great to have. Um, so, you know, I mentioned Steve Poser, also guys like Andre Smith here, and a few of the, the guys who've been away for the game for a little bit. Andre have a yes. couple of injuries, but he's had some couple of big operations recently. Yeah, another fellow that probably uh, you know didn't quite play for New Zealand, but you know, won won some big events, won in Dominion Fours, and oh, he's been a great campaigner. He won the Stokes singles a number of years ago. Yes. I think he borrowed my offers. That's my claim to it. <laughs> <laughs> Another great lead ball there from Tony. So One of the few votes to win with Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's wrestled the ascendancy there off Rog. But, uh, yeah, funny, we actually, before this was the Stokes Stakes, we did have an invitation peers tournament in April. And a, a local player invited someone from out of town, and Andre had played with a guy called Tom Kapura, and he'd been Andre had been at a fours tournament the week before, and in his bag he had two green masks and two alphas, and he turned up here with the same. Yeah. And uh, he said, "What are we going to do?" And uh, oh, geez, so he just he played with them. Okay. But uh, yeah, no one told him that he had to play with them in whatever order. So whatever shot he needed to play, he just uh, if he had to go under the line. He'd play with an alpha. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, two four two of it, so it was a bit of a laugh. Didn't like turning those self esteem. No, they didn't like turning, but yeah, it got to the point where the umpire said, oh, "You know, Andre, like we've given you a bit of leniency here because it's just a small event at that point in time. But it'd be good if you just played, like, picked an order and played them that way. So, no, very funny man. Yeah. <laughs> See, Gary on his backhand. Adds a fourth. Pretty handy. Yeah. So they're just starting to burn out. It's Rogers, probably Rogers' worst end. Yeah, so far. <laughs> Shannon on his backhand as well. It looks very well pointed to there. Definitely in the area. Roger's interested. Oh, he just slipped by. Still four. Gary looks well directed again as we see Tony standing over it. Comes into show into picture now and gets to the front of the jackets. Another big bowl. Shannon needs to play a good one, surely. Definitely a, a massive period in the match here. Shannon's next two bowls will dictate a little bit of their fate today. It's halfway now, um, breaking in. Once again, if he can grab that jack, it'll be enormous. He's got it. He's got it. What a turnaround. Seven shot Incredible. swing. That's what the guy's capable of. Yeah. That's massive. <laughs> Minimal fanfare from the gallery. Yeah. Well, that's changed. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> little, like we said, he needs to play a good one, in. He has. Yeah. 
Yeah, after the previous two ends, dropping a number there would have been a big swing, but Gary Lawson's got one left. And you wouldn't bet against him. Uh, just adding a little more weight on his previous bowl and playing it himself. Well, the body language says he doesn't love it. He's got a big chance to make three of this. Yeah, Gary be disappointed. Shannon head back to the forehand perhaps. I've seen him Always play well down the there. Oh, yeah, oh, there's man, certainly a gap there. You could go around the uh, the black bowls as it's well not if need be. Could be looking at twelve balls off the end. Yeah, spot on, on the backhand side. A touch wider. It's going to work there. It'll work. He gave it a chance, he reasonable yeah, weight. Yeah. I suppose the balls, See. whilst he did get a bit of a slide there, the, you know, the balls he's hit. The ones yeah. he's looking to beat, yeah. They're, so. they're a fair way out. Mm. The second ball is incredible, isn't it? So 12 all. So after trading singles for the early portion of the game, we're dealing in conversions and multiples now. Yeah, Karen's shown a shiny class the last couple of ends. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very good opener. And a, a good time for Roger to draw a couple of shots, get the confidence up again. He well, just had dropped away a little. That's right. He seems to play a couple of good poles. It can help your own confidence. Definitely. And it's such a competitor, Rog, that, you know, That'll really boost him. Tony goes through the hole there. A lovely position. Really feel like the players are uh, getting the hang of the conditions here. No real wind to speak of. Uh, coming a wee bit, it's sort of died down again. Same ball, Tony. All four players play reasonably quickly. Yes. <laughs> they are indeed. Yeah, 12, in, 12 ends completed in an hour and a half. This is really good. Pretty good going, given that you know, there's been a couple of general meetings in the middle of the park, discussing shots and whatnot. I don't spend too much time on the mat thinking about it. Roger's just looking to get past here, as directed by the skipper. Yeah, he'll be happy with those yeah, spells in the scene. Time is in the area. He's played it well. Lovely so. ball. So the lead battle continues. Nip and tuck between these two experienced players, Tony Grantham and Roger Stevens. You sort of just get a feel that this end's going to change so each ball. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Nothing safe.
Tanner McElroy. Oh, that's unlucky. Untidy too now. <laughs> No. Gary asking Tony from for some direction there. Sounds like the club rooms are starting to fill up here, Shane. I think that bloke might have heard railways just turned up. Yeah. Shane <laughs> might go a bit quicker here. In regards to third, we've got two thirds. He's asking about the situation. Two thirds, Roger said. Two down, obviously. Tough, tough to draw the shot here. It is indeed. Two thirds. Decisions. Positive man, Roger. I think Shannon's called a shot. Yes. Roger gives it. But I like it. He's always uh, pretty agreeable. Doesn't pay to argue with the skip sometimes. <laughs> the simple characters at times, mate. He might have a good chance to add here. He has indeed, yes. And you know, after dropping a multiple, that looking like being in a position to grab one back. And he looked interested in it for a start. Bit of a grimace there. Tony certainly got some interest in it. It's pretty good. Wouldn't necessarily want to touch the jack and open it up. Well, it's very good, yeah. but it's certainly better for Shannon than it was. I would have thought something to hit there now, and yeah. all the opportunity to to hug hug the front blue and touch the white. Still holding three though. Bird in the hand and all that stuff. I don't know if the target's that great, that short bowl there. No, see, yeah. Uh, and this is a big bowl in the match off, I think. Definitely. And trying to decide how he's going to go about it. Running. Oh wow, what a great shot. <laughs> Got the lot. Couldn't really be three in it, three to stand on. Yeah, certainly two, two in a good measure. But an amazing conversion there. He was pretty casual, wasn't he? Yeah. Hummed and hard and on the mat, bang. See, that was, that was a good shot. That was a very timely hit, wasn't it? If you guys can draw it now, it's a good reply. Yeah, and you know, obviously the previous bowl was very good and looks to be a similar track. He likes it. He does indeed. There's the Tony shot. and just needs to run now. That'll be enough. Well, terrific save from Shannon there, but equally good reply from Gary. Yes. Get their nose in front again. Tony getting some instruction about what sort of length Gary would suggest they play. So 13 gone, and it's 13 12. Nip and tuck. As we go it's around up. the ground, it's Taylor Horn 9, Shannon Giddo's 14 after 11 ends, Keanu Darby 9, Damian McGee 10 after 13, Jamie Hill 8, Ray Martin 14 after 13. So that was 8 all the Jamie Hill Ray Martin game. 
So six shots and three ends for Ray and Matty Pearson. But yeah, Damian McGee, the charismatic Australian, has been a, a popular addition to the tournament and had, he's got some big names coming to the Nelson Fords, but couldn't get anyone for this event, so he's teamed up with local Lloyd Ballas, who's a renowned indoor bowler. Yes, Lloyd. Great he's gone good, Lloydy. Three big days for him. He'd be loving it. Yeah, ultra competitive bloke. 74 years old now, and he's played some lovely stuff and enjoyed it. But he said Damien's pretty easy to play with. Lloyd plays his three bowls, sits on the bank, and yeah, just sees right. what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Lloyd in his indoor days, he was an incredible player. Yeah, one of the greatest ever. That's right. So indoor, yeah. carpet indoor. Yeah. Short mat. mat. Yeah. Gary played a lot of bowls with him, Andrew Curtin. Really? Won some New Zealand titles. And did you, you played indoor yourself? I just, Only with those boys? I just played for the refreshments. Yeah. No, it was good. I understand played. the price point on cups of tea there's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah like one season of indoor for me. Is that right? Oh, yeah, I won, won the Stoke Piers, the champion of champion Piers. Oh, the fellow I played with, Ali Forsyth, he, he was all right. Oh, yeah. I was terrible. Did he lead for you? <laughs> he just said, mate, get them past. <laughs> So Tony on his backhand now. Near the lead has nailed it just yet. On this the fourteenth end. Gareth's holding the draw the shot, so if he does his talk. <laughs> Simple game. Yeah. Yeah. He's got good weight. He's gonna hang around. Oh, did run away a little yeah. bit late in that mat area from... The greens are starting to draw out a wee bit. Right, big bowl here for Rog. His last. He looks to be well directed. Down to the speed now. And he too's gone through, so... Probably the loosest head they've had Yeah, I think coming this way, the stand has been better when the jack's been on the, the two metre mark or, or near enough sort of That's out of no right. man's land there and yeah. the, everyone's played accordingly but the way these skips have gone I suggest that one of them will be on top of it shortly so he goes now on the backhand he looks pretty interested you played enough with him to pick the mannerisms. Yeah, he likes it. Polite pat on the hip there for Rog. A little clap. Shannon in reply now. He doesn't give much away, Shan. He knows He's still watching. He knows most balls in the area. <laughs> Going through slightly. Yeah, very good effort. <laughs> On the chase here. Pretty handy. Close to two. Could be. <laughs> There's no mucking around there at all, is there? No. Just confidence. He's got a lovely trajectory here. All down to the weight. Going through again slightly. Well, depending on what Gazza does, you don't, Shannon you shouldn't be afraid of crossing the line there. You touch the white. There's a multiple back there. Karen might change hands this time. Look to turn his own bowl down. Yeah, he didn't skip round there slightly, round the back slightly. You've played a lot with him. Pick that, Shane. 
Too good, you. Yeah, got one thing right today. <laughs> on its way on the forehand. Coming into picture now and didn't quite have the weight. Disappointed with that. He was indeed. Might be in the way of sending the way of sending what was looking at it. Yeah. Might be looking to attack for that ball. Yeah, I suppose the possibility of getting both. Still got a chance to touch the wide and score. He's got the back stuff too. He has indeed, box. yeah. Possibly just looking to hug Gaz's one and Pretty much just on the draw line here, I think. He's played too good. A hungry draw line. He's in the area. He's certainly in the area, all right. That's good. Well, well if there was any out. debate, it's certainly only one now. But the lead grows. 14-12 now. 14 played, bring it up, mate. Gaza says to Tony. And uh, he'd like that, Gaz. Obviously, a pretty astute t like, tactician. Always got theories on lengths and. Yeah, he, he's always thinking. You know, he's thinking about things. And... Well, they've been playing quite well on the longer ends. So... Yes. It's, it's more been Shannon and Roger playing the, the shorter ends. Tony Grantham with his opener on the forehand side. He'd just be looking to wriggle, but is going to pull up reasonably short. Any start from Rod here. Excellent response here from Tony. It's a great correction. <laughs> yeah. and very timely. How can Roger respond? He's certainly going to be passed. Just not all bad. Been back then and been short. Tony with this dude's going to be passed as well, but as we said earlier, if you got that one on it. The cardinal sim would have been to drop short there, so. Gaz won't be too unhappy. No. Well, reasonable from both leads. Tony with the shot, but Roger's certainly given Shannon some options. He'll have a high five or a low five, those two, and, and passing. Very close friendship, I believe. I suppose that's the cool thing about events like this is, you know, you can play with anyone. Don't have to be the same club or scene or anything like that. Just no, that's right. That's right. A yeah. cobber that you fancy spending three days with. You see some interesting combinations too, now. <laughs> they do indeed. Yeah. <laughs> you probably need a couple of things in common. <laughs> it helps. Yeah, and, and certainly if you go through some of them. 
Yeah, you got a great field here this year. Yeah, very, very pleased with the field, to be honest. I think you know, sixth year of the event, oh, well, that's a nice result. But, um, yeah, uh, realistically, most teams, you know, obviously there's a TAB market as well, but there weren't too many ultra long in the market. It's very difficult to try and rank them, particularly once you got between eight and 25. <laughs> Everyone was about yeah. the same. Yeah. On paper, you see Shannon run into the front bowler Tony Zier. So, still two. Another big moment with Gary looking to apply some heat. Let's see if these two teams as the favourites, so they haven't gone too bad, have they? No, that's right. But they'll. Uh, Obviously lose some liability on one of them after this. That's right. This the quirk of the draw. Shannon and Rog finishing second in their section. Gazer and Tony top of theirs. So Shannon now looking to draw and cut down. It's three at present. Just only ever so slightly over and a good effort. Yeah. Certainly a, a tough one to correct on because you sort of want to keep that weight up. It'd be a poor time to finish short, wouldn't it? So he'll have something to do with his last. He'll need to pull out a big ball with his last. Yeah, interesting to see with it. But he has been. He has to make it four. Yeah, he has indeed. See, last time this happened, this sort of similar situation. Gary drew a touch it opened things up. Shan drove all three out. So That's right. whether he's content with their setup here. Yeah, he always played it too well, that bowl, Gary. And he looks interested in this one. and It's halfway now and he's on the stalk. It's pretty close. Very close indeed. Turning now. Need to find a friend. Nestle's in there. Gee. Three good bowls. Yeah, it's reasonably consistent stuff, really. Now, this is a big moment in this fixture. Definitely. Seeing as he's got about a half bowl target, really. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I suppose he could have some options if he happened to get. I think he'd, I the think he'd try and draw it, to be honest. Yes, I, I think he'll try and draw it as well. Even getting but, second shots. Yeah, good indeed. Well, it's almost one of those situations where he, if you land on the, the back blue bowl, you almost score. Even get to Gary's bowls. Righto, decisions. He's going to attack. He does appear to be attacking. On the way. Needs to turn a little. Oh. Carved one out. They'll drop a three, though. Which will see it's them. Big turn around this game. <laughs> see them five behind with 15 ends played. Might be the break that Gary and Tony needed. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And just a terrific end there from Gary. Uh, Tony had set him up well, but that's what really sets fine skips apart. When you get the opportunity there to build on it and then consistently yeah. adding the extras. And you know, Shannon wasn't a mile away, but uh, you know, I suppose he's, he's, he's rescued them from out. a couple of situations and that one was just one too many, really. Yeah. They, they put some heat on there, Gary and Tony. So Tony with his opener and really looking to cement the ascendancy that they've wrestled good. back in this fixture.
Fair opener from Rog. Just behind. Pretty good there. Change of hand and excellent change. Just had a message through from one of the greats, Andrew Curtin. So he's enjoying the coverage. Great game of bowls. All four boys are playing well. Did have a question on Roger Stevens' shoes, though, whether he might have left his at home and had to borrow Bromwins. He's not sure. <laughs> he doesn't necessarily like the baby blue, Kurt, but we'll, uh, we'll have to ask Rog that later on. It's a lovely uh, second bowl there from Rog. And yeah, that backhand there, it's really turning on that ditch side and yeah, finding the centre line doesn't appear to be the easiest at the moment, particularly over this length. No. No. At least you know it's going to turn. Do we see Tony now just running through? Andrew Kearney's always had a fair bit to say on fashions <laughs> over the years. He has indeed. One uh, a stickler for the etiquette of the sport anyway. Which is fair enough. Definitely. His brown shoes when he started playing bowls and it used to be interesting. <laughs> Rods. I think he's moved on from those. Oh, lovely touch there. Just tidied it up, run through. But a nice setup and oh, I mean vital they score here really, the Macquarie combination. Yep. Yeah. That... Just while they're crossing over we'll go around the ground with Jamie Holt, who's got some score updates for us. It's Taylor Horn 10, Shannon Ghetto 16 after 13. Keanu Darby's wrestled the ascendancy off Damian McGee and leads 12-11 after 15. And it's Ray Martin who's running away from Jamie Hill. That's 18 shots to 9 after 16. So all the games reasonably well progressed now. Gaz are on his backhand. He's also going to run through. So a little bit of a struggle for dead weight here. On this particular end, Shannon and Roger need to score this end, otherwise. Well, it's certainly a, a nice setup. Hard man for him to ball. add a little bit of uh, pressure here. I expect Shannon to get one close here. Yeah, I don't think it'll be lost on Gazza that if they score this end, they go a long way to winning the game, progressing in the tournament. All down to the weight for Shannon here now. I don't know if he's quite here. No. Oh, he's probably done enough <laughs> being the, in the mix for a second, but I suspect that it won't be by the time all the bowls are finished here. He goes up chasing this one. What's your hunch, Shane? Yeah, he's reasonably close. Wow. Touch. Oh, well, really important that Shannon yep. does the job here. He'll be close here. <laughs> Bowls are skin down here a bit now. It's yeah. Really starting to dry out. I suppose the difference here compared to the previous end is you know, Gazza added those three and just kept maintaining the pressure and Chan's probably missed out on a bit yeah. of an opportunity here with quite a lot of room and I yep. wonder if they might rue that yeah, you, don't give, <laughs> you don't give them too much room do you? No That's a big bowl That is a big bowl yeah whilst it's most probably second shot Shannon hasn't got a oh. metre to draw anymore. And the, uh, yeah, gave Gazza the opportunity to get, at worst, a great second there. But still, like we said, it's just as long as Shannon Rod score, it gives them a chance. But yeah. I think that against players like 
TG and, and Gary, if you get those opportunities to at least hold multiples, you really have to make the most of them. I think it's two here, the game's still definitely on. I think this will be his yeah. best one. He's in the area. Run through also, so... The jack's been picked up. Given to Rog, so they have scored. Two ends to go. Two ends to go. It's been a titanic battle. Yeah, you can't complain about the stand of the box. <laughs> no way. Big day yesterday getting through six games. Pretty taxing. You're yeah. out in the middle. Yep, yep. Oh, I mean... You know, they can't complain about it. it was short of games was not too bad. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, obviously very, very wet on Friday here, if you hadn't caught up with that at home. So here we see with the playing additions, place Jack wherever they like. If it was... Uh, Even the 18 ends, it's a reasonably long game these days. It is, yeah. Well, it is quite interesting. We do see you know, the formats over time of become somewhat abbreviated trying to quicken the game up a wee bit yeah when you started game appears 21 most probably yeah force is 25 ends so <laughs> but two a games game. a day or sometimes a third no oh, two games a day normally I said the Nelson force so that's 25 ends yeah that's good yeah, it's one for the uh, and also Taranaki yeah a couple of tournaments for the purists playing on Taranaki fours next year with Gaza for the first time, so well, I'm you, looking forward to that. Have you played in Taranaki before? No, I haven't haven't played there. Lovely place. I heard I that. Went, went to the Nationals there a few years back, played the Piers with Nathan Glasson. That'd be an interesting experience <laughs> for you. Yeah, it's, I enjoyed it. it bowls with obstacles for him, trying yeah. to navigate some of the trash that I threw up, but it was just a lovely part of the world. and yeah, It's great to see... Um, the Nationals go to places like there and, and central Otago. Yeah, that's right. I just wish that we uh, had some more natural greens here to have a, a pitch at some of those things, but... Yep. I mean, uh, if you look at the way these greens are running, uh, it'd be sensational having something here one day, internationally yeah. or otherwise. I know it's... Uh, Hard to get those sort of things out of the big centres, but yeah, Glenn Miller, the curator, has uh, done a terrific job here. Roger again looking to add to one already very good shot. Looks slightly on the wide side to me. Uh, he'll be disappointed in that one. Close. That was Tony's best one. Not going to touch slightly. Uh, Gary just begging it to turn, but... Three, gave, good, three good balls. I gave it a chance, my word, yeah. Backhand just needs to run it out. It's a counter. I imagine. Probably, yeah, most probably. I think Gaz will get one inside that. With three bullets.
So, first semi finals been found. A combination of Ray Martin and Matt Pearson progressing, beating Jamie Hill and Mark Burgess. Terrific campaign from Jamie and Burgie, though. Jamie's been, uh, he's one of the form players yesterday, that's for certain. See Gary now looking to get past that ball with Shannon's and doesn't quite. So, an opportunity here. He's been afforded a bit of room again, Shannon. See if he can. Yeah, if he adds here, he's starting to put some pressure on. He yeah. is, yeah. And, you know, you suspect that they probably would want at least a couple here to. That's right. Keep their uh, hopes alive. He's a hard man to get three or four off in the last end, Gazette. Yep. A lot of people found that out. Shannon's given us a good chance. Yeah, he's played this very well. It'll be two at least. Gary's on the mat quickly. He knows exactly what he needs to do here. And that's at roughly a metre on his last as it's on the way. And as is he following it out. I think he quite likes it the way he's let it go. He's just whether he's going to get back to the jack. Oh, sits the bowl. But Pretty good. Terrific time to play that. Get a good second. The significance of that won't be lost on him. That's a big ball. Tony's pretty happy with it, too. So 18-10, Ray Martin beat Jamie Hill. Those two boats looking for, an, for another final. They've been a very consistent pairing at this event. Yeah. See Shannon looking to get a second. He played it pretty well. Oh, huge effort. We won only. And Gary could just look to play the same bowl. That's right. Turn himself over or see if, if he could get the jack. Tony's got a few there. In the other games, it's Derby that leads McGee. 14 shots to 11 after 16. And Shannon Giddos and Jakey Graham, the Australians, are up 18-11 over Taylor Horn after 15. So they've added a bit of flavour, those boys. Very popular tourists. They invited Glenn McDonald to a event at their club next year. I'm not sure whether they need someone to turn the sausages, but he doesn't play much these days, Macca, but obviously a popular uh, tourist. Yeah, you know, he likes touring. Uh, they just met Mackies, so <laughs> they've obviously taken a liking to him <laughs> quite quickly. Yes. <laughs> oh, I think uh, Macca actually beat them yesterday. Yeah. He told me on he, as he walked out, he said, we haven't won a game for the for the weekend, but we'll win this. He's he said, I love beating Australians. Yeah, that's, that's fair. We've got our passions, have <laughs> That's right. It's good to see Macca playing some bit more bowls these days. Yeah, I think that he was certainly frustrating for Jake and, and Shannon Giddos yesterday because he'd play one and turn his back on it. <laughs> they were, he knew it was good, but they weren't sure. Yeah. So it's dangerous when he goes like that, Glenn. Obviously, yeah. Capped Blackjack himself. Yep. What number? Oh, that's ninety. Tough. He was around those. He played. He was only twenty-five, I think, when he first played. Incredible. Which was reasonably young. Yes. You know, a few years ago, probably. I remember. Twenty years ago. I think he lost the final of the Stoke Invitation singles here one year, and. Up until that point, he won 26 singles games in a row. Yeah. He won the amazing. Canterbury singles. Once, did he win the Valley? I don't know. I don't think he ever won the Valley. No, though. but, yeah. He, I mean, he skipped, That's obviously a he few skipped uh, Trans Tasman <laughs> in, in his debut. Wow, well, 25-year-old. Yeah. So. Certainly a talent. They thought a bit of him. It's Rog now. Just Shannon's calling for it to hurry and 
Harry somewhat, but probably hasn't nailed it like you would have hoped when you're three behind playing the last. Not like Tony to drop one that short. No, you're looking to make amends. I think he might follow the first one. Yeah, it's good. All right, you just one with those two balls. <laughs> I would say, and I, I don't know if you'll get too many compliments from the gaffer either, but. Rog now looking to make it happen. Give Shannon a chance. and Rog is a bit loose as well. Very. Well, the work's cut out now. It's just press, you know, last in, it's pressure. Yes, and he's certainly taking his green here, Tony. We see a break in now. This is a big help. That is a big help indeed. As once Gary moves, you'll see that he's 30 centimetres or so behind the jack. No handshakes or high fives. I think that's just the expectation from Gazza. Yeah. <laughs> Probably saying at the moment, how do you put those two there? Tough taskmaster. Santa might have been a lot to kill it early on here. I don't think it's have too many threes or fours. No, that's right. Have, kill it and have a freshen up. Yeah. Sounds like Taylor Horn's just sent a jack out of Into the, car the complex. Well, it seems Shannon Giddos is on the mat, so it's obviously in the ditch. It sounded terrific. Good sound effects. Yeah. A few roars from the gallery. But he's not looking to kill it anyway, but he's on his forehand. Trying to draw the shot. Yeah, that was interesting. Hmm. Oh, yes, probably got two seconds now. Yeah, possibly. Gary would just be looking to get another one in the mix. They certainly haven't nailed it coming this way in the back half of the game at times. Uh, it's got a bit looser. That's probably the worst end of the last end. It's <laughs> yeah. interesting. Looking for cover. That's the thing, he's just so technically astute. He's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Thinking cut down the opportunities for numbers but as you have mentioned they've got two seconds at the moment. shannon has got a chance to sit the bolt, a shot bolt for three. Yes. Just the way Rogers one's sitting though, he'd probably have to play a, a reasonable yeah. amount of weight. He may try and get rid of the bowl anyway and just give him a chance to draw th three. Yeah, that's right. Misses. On its way. It's not too bad. Let's give himself a chance. Yes.
Harry on the way. I suspect this is narrow, personally, Shane. Looks short, too. Wow. Well, Unless he's just trying to get in the way. He's left the door slightly ajar. He may have tried to get it in the way, but... Wow. I suppose, you know, they've ducked for cover once. Yeah. Possibly tried to get in the way there, maybe just short. I suspect just short because he knows that Shannon can sit them out for... Oh, this bloke's coming. At least to hold a draw or, or hang around for a holding game, yeah. So comes down to this anyway. Viewers, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We'll be back for semis and finals. And see Shannon McElroy now running, looking for the shot bowl. And, oh, he's two only. And it's shake hands it's time. Effort. Terrific game of lawn bowls. Shane Sinkock, thanks so much for joining us this morning. And... We'll be back at 11.30 or near offer for the semi-final coverage, but great game of bowls there, Zinni. Yeah, that's a good, a good game of bowls to watch. And so they'll go on and play the winner of the Taylor Horn, Hamish Carpey, Shannon Ghetto's Jake Graham fixture. And on the other side, it's Pearson and Martin who have progressed and will play the winner of Damian McGee, Lloyd Bellis, and Finbar McGuigan and Keanu Darby. So... Thanks so much. Cheers, Brendan. And we'll look forward to catching up with everyone later on.
Welcome back to the coverage of the Turf Hotel Stoke Stakes. I'm Brendan Hodson. Joining me in the central commentary position is Robbie Reid. Welcome, Good Robbie. Morning, Cody. We're covering the semi-final fixture between Ray Martin and Matt Pearson and Keanu Darby and Fimba McGuigan. And uh, certainly two form sides throughout this weekend, Robbie. Oh, especially Fimba, he's been playing great bowls all weekend. So. Yeah, for me, he's been the player of the tournament this far, so... Looking forward to the, the battle off the front between Finbar and Matty Pearson. Matty from Manawatu. Uh, for me, very good player, but I notice he, he doesn't make too many of their sides up there at the moment, which is probably a little bit of an oversight, in my opinion, but he's got a terrific record here, Rob. He does, yeah. Former, former winner. Yes, and uh, lost a, a memorable final as well. So, looks like he started well here, Matt, with the orange bowls that you'll see coming in now. Finbar with the half and half, blue and, well, not orange comparatively, perhaps salmon. But uh, Maddie crossing over with a couple. So in the other semi-final, we've got the winner of the first covered game, which was Gary Lawson and Tony Grantham. And they are playing the Australian pair of Shannon Giddos and Jakey Graham. So looking forward to... This one here, Keanu Darby now, and good nick, coming off a North East Valley win, and he's attacking early. Mm. Good effort, probably just a bowl wide there. Obviously Ray Martin has been in, in pretty good form as well, Rob, but he's really carving himself out a little bit of a, a reputation as... A formidable skip, particularly two bowl, but you know, opportunity here to uh, add another Piers gone to his growing CV. Certainly one of the form players in the country. Just appears in every sort of finals. Yeah, he's, he's a pretty unflappable sort of character as well. So welcome, if you're just joining us. Lovely day here in Stoke, Nelson. Uh, massive thanks to the Turf Hotel and all the other sponsors that have made this event possible. As we see Ray now looking to land Matt's bowl and he makes two of it. He's and tidied that up pretty well really. He tidied it up really nicely. Let's see Keanu attack again. Just looking to get the edge of Ray's bowl there. Yeah, it's Chance not of peeling them both off. There's not a huge amount to hit there. No, it's quite contrasting to the game this morning. I think most skips were looking to draw wherever possible. But Ray again, looking to capitalise on what's been a nice start from his lead and himself, and we'll make three of it and. Uh, yeah, it's still not overly appealing to, to hit Rob, but... No. Well, 
but hit he will as Still he winds ticking. up. Zanieri's going to get some contact here. Oh, that's a well, it's a terrific result. A very good result. So it's just one now. Gray with the opportunity to add the bonus. Not many bowls left on the rink. No, it's a, uh, it's a frantic start. Mm -hmm. As we saw in the first game, there's quite a lot of turn down this. Well, I'd say the, the ditch hand, we, we're in a wee bit. It's not really a, a true rink one as such, but Ray Martin's onto it early in uh, three great bowls. And two they'll get. You see big Matty Pearson pop down the uh, Gordon Stride Jim Matt. It's a really good start. Yeah, terrific start. They were all over it. All really. over it, yeah. And they ended up winning their quarter-final game reasonably convincingly as well. 18 shots to 10. So that was against Jamie Hill, who has also been in, uh, in fine fettle. I think you see all the boys sort of operate the stitch hand here. Appears to be the better hand so far. And uh, Robbie, obviously you've been playing in the tournament. Um, I note the two qualifiers from your section have, have been and gone. Taylor Horn and, and Hamish Carpe and uh, Damien McGee and Lloyd Ballas. Both. Yep, they certainly did a number on us anyway. <laughs> They've both been knocked out at the quarterfinal stage. And uh, you enjoyed the tournament? Yeah. Oh, it's great. Great tournament, isn't it? It's the field just gets better and better every year. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly a difficult one to improve on now. It's been six years now that we've had the peers going on, as we see Fimba uh, potted on early too. That's a uh, very tidy start. It's a bit more like it. From these gentlemen. Matty on a good line here. That's very good. Setting up well here. Yeah, it's in the nice position. And, you know, Ray's fond of attacking it, as both skips are. And as we saw from, from Darbs on the first end there, not shy to get stuck in. So having a good position will be imperative in this fixture, I think. Another excellent bowl here from Finbar, who's been mighty impressive. Not just this weekend, but I understand put on a bit of a clinic at the uh, Wellington Mano Two fixture last weekend. Against this man, Matt Pearson. Yeah, they belted them by 30 odd. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, Matt said it was the best exhibition of lawn bowls that one of his teammates had ever seen, and he'd been playing 40 years. So. Yeah, certainly hearing good things about Fimba all around the country. He's yeah, he's sort of come through the the young system. On, you know, the secondary school bowls isn't quite what it was in our time, Rob, and you know the Kitty Hawks and that. But Burnside have obviously done a good job of their under-26 event since they've taken that over. Well, it's been a long time now, but I suppose in our time it was played at Elmwood. Was it, yeah. Doug Wilson, the founder of that event. Change it to the under-26s so he could play another year too, Doug. <laughs> yeah, it's a good piece of administration, that. Jeez, if he hadn't moved away, it might be under-43. <laughs> Sorry, Doug, if you're younger than that, but... No, it was a good laugh. And uh, some, some good times, but... I think you and I won the year, Rob. Won the uh, optional peers at that event, which meant that we weren't in the top... Probably, definitely not top 16, but... One uh, thing that about the Stoke Stakes here is that there is no plate or flight or anything. It's just like the PGA Tour. If you miss the cut, you don't have to worry about the weekend, and the weekend in this instance is Sunday, and that is Stakes Day. So Everyone wants to be playing on Stakes Day. 20,000 in stakes available to these gentlemen. And what is a massive fortnight of bowls in the Nelson region. 
very successful woman stakes here last weekend. Three days of quality here, and then we're leading into the Spates Nelson Premier Fours, which starts tomorrow at the Nelson Bowling Club on Examiner Street in the city. I'll be certainly feeling it by Wednesday, I'd say. You're, you're in that one? I am, yep. Uh, obviously some names coming over with Damien McGee. Yeah, we draw them too, unfortunately. These are some of the biggest names in the game there, well, particularly Gary Kelly. Yeah. Uh, Corey Wedlock and Sean Ingham. Sean Ingham, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So a bit of international flavour heading to Nelson and a shame that they couldn't be here. Sort of penance. I think it's their penance, yeah. yeah. Clashes on that, doesn't it? So... It's a bit of a shame, but hopefully they come over next year. I just want them to get here and just have the best ever time and uh, be itching to, to come to both. So, so Keanu there, tucking for a little bit of cover. Close here, Ray. Oh, oh, he's played this terrific. Very Mate. good. Two shots, I'd say. Yeah. Definitely one. And some room, however, for Keanu Darby, who's been playing some reasonable stuff. He's, I wouldn't say he's had an armchair ride. Right? They've, they've both gone well, but he certainly had the benefit of one of the he's best leagues in the competition. He's um, had a few good weeks too. Winning the North East Valley. Looks peers. Yeah, just pretty unflappable character really. Looking pretty cool with the backwards hat. Mm, not very effective, is it? <laughs> thought it was Jason Gunn for a second. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting one, but he's just got to wriggle into the bunch here. It's a fair effort. Oh, oh may just stick the belly out. We'll wait and see who picks the mat up, I suppose, as Maddie Pearson has a look. Tape measure comes out. And in terms of measures, you were involved in some drama yesterday late on. It was indeed. Damien McGee needing to win by seven to qualify. It's leading your side by seven going down the last, and umpire's measure to get them through. That's right. Umpire just picked the jack up. So I thought I had shot, but obviously not. Yeah, so dead end there, and win by seven they did, and moved on, but uh, gone now, the McGee combination, popular tourist demo, and uh, certainly enjoyed having him here, but it was one to Martin and Pearson, who shoot out to a 3-0 lead early. Tidy side here from Mitty. A yeah, pretty consistent achiever, really. Manny, it's quite often got bowls around it. They've become a formidable side at this event, though. They have, really. He um, has been at this event since the inception, played with a, one of the Palmy boys early. Can't remember quite which one. Graham Cooley, perhaps. I can't remember either, actually. And then uh, ended up with Jason Dunn. Played one of the great finals. Yeah, we touched on that in the first game. It was one for the ages. The all square play in the last, and the skip, the shot, or the position change with every skip's bowl. So Shane Sincock was too good on that occasion. Having a rest from the commentary at this point in time, Shane, but thank him for his time this morning. As Manny gets another in there. Certainly a high quality game so far. Yeah, definitely. It was interesting uh, late in that 
first quarter final, particularly the leads, just didn't quite nail the centre line. Whether the, the rink changed a little or... Yeah, I, think, just I think as the green does dry out, it'll get quicker as well. And it, I think yesterday even, it sweated up a bit about lunchtime. Sort of tightened things up again, so... Yes, well, there was a lot of water around on Friday, but... Another nice lawn bowl here from Matty Pearson. Who's again given Ray Martin some nice position on this the third end. Fair response from Finbar here too. Just sailing by, I think. So it's certainly Pearson who's dominating the early exchanges. That's right, yeah. I mean, Finbar's not far away himself, <laughs> no. really. No, but he's uh, just it finding is. one better at the moment. So you probably look, when they do win an end, Finbar and Derby, that they'll probably change, change the length up a bit. Yeah, they certainly are not afraid to mix it up tactically. Again, Ray's got a pretty good gist of this hand here. Absolutely. Just needs to slip by, gets caught up, but he's, he's playing in pretty good areas up that side. Very much so. See Keanu still playing the forehand here. There's enough turn for him to get back to the centre line, get around Ray's bowl. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about the late turn available up here. Changing his hand here. That, that'd be a nice position bowl there. Yeah, Keanu's got the option of either playing under Ray's front bowl or just draw around it. Yeah, I suppose if he was playing under and looking for some movement. There's a good chance movement would take the jack towards where Ray's previous bowl finished. So. Yeah, just depends what sort of weight he wants to play. I think it's just dead weight, yeah. Not bad, too. Just need to clear trip. Big effort. Yeah, certainly a big effort. As we see some spectators there in the background. A couple that have played in the tournament. And an interested local. Again on the backhand and seen too many bowls down there in this fixture. Yeah, see, Finbar's just looking at that shot we are talking about through that port there. Yes. we got the option of sitting both the, the back orange bowls and... Even look, gets his own. Yeah, the way that Keanu's bowl is sitting there only needs a couple of rolls right in the mix. They play the percentages well, these boys. Yeah. Speedy Elixir. I think it's certainly be giving it a good chance. It's on its way. What a great.
great effort this is. Needs to run. No, oh, well played. Oh, very well played. Well, you think that would cut down the count? Look like two to me. And two it was. So five nil early. Off to a flyer. Yeah, fast start here. Really just done it just drawing shots too. Yeah, I've just had bowls around it. Interesting change of length here. Possibly inadvertently. Don't really see the sense in that when you're 5-0 up. Here. No. But the way he's been going off the front, Matty, it would not surprise if he lobbed one on top of it. It's a fair opener. He's got that one away, rough. Come out, oh, out the barrier, out the barrier a little bit. Wobbly, might need a barrier blanket next start, I think. <laughs> Certainly not a problem with Fimba. It's silky smooth. Yeah, he gets them away neat, but and he's got all the shots I saw in a game yesterday off the front with a second bowl. He drove out a side toucher, changed his hands and drew a toucher of his own. So. <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't be surprised to see them use force early where needed. Keanu's certainly not the sort of skipper that's interested in saving the shots for himself, and I suppose there's no need when you've got a lead that can play them all. That's right. I mean, very good shot player in his own right, Finbar, so... Handy stuff from Matty. Going good, Matty. Right. As I said, he's been to every Stoke stake so far, Matt Pearson, and certainly a big advocate for the tournament in the early days. Brought down a few one or two combinations, and then I think he's after the first year, he, he worked out if I'm going to compete in this tournament, probably need to uh, travel a bit heavier in terms of teammates, and uh, Ray Martin's been an excellent pickup for him. Absolutely. Formidable side in this tournament. Yeah, always around when the whips are cracking. And he played this well. Just slipped by, but uh, short end, nice position. You get a shot player like Ray on your side. It's uh, certainly a setup that won't get too many head sh shakes of the head from the skipper. Finbar now looks the pick of his three bowls here. Still just running through. Yeah. Well, it's right by half a bowl, but certainly halfway down thought he was all over that. That is a length that we haven't seen played on this rink today. Most players found the centre line or near enough. I think we'll see uh, a number of people at the Stoke Bowling Club today who are playing in the Nelson Fours coming in to watch so and why not expect that we'll do a reasonable turnover of food and drink as we see Ray Martin now just going well this side They're really off to a fast start Keanu Darby looking to respond. Pretty good to there, Robert. Very good. Uh, yep. Wriggled in. It will be in the mix. Oh, yeah, right.
Okay, now it's good again. Just needs to get a sit on Matty's bowl there. It's much needed, really. That ball's standing a bit lonely. See if Ray can get down to the jack here. Yes, a touch on the jack would certainly He's be a fill-up. Enormous effort. <laughs> yes. Well, you can't argue with the standard on this head. We see Keanu Darby with the last ball of this, the fourth end. Well, we weren't sure about where he threw the jack and how it was going to go, but all right, it's certainly all in the area, and this one's turning late. It yeah, looks to have played. very, very good weight. Falls down next door, and they will score. They're off the mark. The Derby and McGuigan side. I've scored two there. Yeah, two shots. That one of Keanu's must have counted. Yeah, the front of Keanu's was obviously the shot, which was uh, hard to pick up, particularly hard in that more advanced position from the camera, I suppose. Yeah, we are calling off a monitor, so. Yeah. I can poke my head out the window. But it didn't help on that occasion, so. It's 5 2, four gone. And a, a short length end again, probably just over the minimum here. Very short. Speaking of the minimum, it did catch out the Australians yesterday. 21 metre minimum in Australia. Oh, that's right, yeah. And uh, Shannon Ghetto's looked at it and goes, oh, that's up by heaps. And then uh, <laughs> opposition didn't agree and is reasonably embarrassed by the umpire. <laughs> Missed out by about a metre I mean, and a half. Like, I, personally, I personally know how, how long the jack needs to be. Right. We always joke about cricket pitch. Yeah, longer than a cricket. Yeah, so 23 metres, of course. And I suppose it's one of those things you just get so accustomed to seeing the minimum length and in right. your head you think, oh, it's about right. Sounds about right. There'd be a lot of... <laughs> Another lovely bowl there from Finbar, who's looking so it looks like they've definitely employed the short ends. So it's probably the change they needed, really. See if they can wrestle a bit of ascendancy back in this game. Yeah, that's right. So if you pick up a little bit of background noise here, we've got a full clubhouse at Stoke. The commentary position is reasonably close, but I hope you're at home feeling like you're part of the uh, event and uh, you're really drinking the atmosphere. Fair effort there from Matty. 30 odd centimetres short on the centre line. Finney's looking to turn the screws here. Very well judged. I'm assuming that looked pretty enormous from the map. <laughs> well, it's, it's not far away. Yeah, I... He's trying to roll out his front one, Matty, here. Change of hands, interesting. Sort of played that forehand well and I thought that if he was going to play weight, he, he probably could have continued to do so on the other, but... I suppose the benefit of playing that backhand, if he does miss high, which is, he has... Is exactly where that ball's finished, yeah. yeah. It um, sets up pretty good for Ray now to probably play the forehand. It also, it probably makes Keanu think about perhaps covering there, which saves you a shot. That's right. He's <laughs> not, yeah. I don't know if he's more to cover, or he just need a couple of rolls out of... Just needs to try and tidy it up if he's not going to cover. Yes, well, it certainly looks 
looks very light. <laughs> it's interesting looking from this camera angle here. You see the blue on the uh, Finn Barmagwigan bowl, and you see the other, and you see the salmon. So uh, the old half and half is uh, an interesting one. Quite a cool colour, actually. Yeah, very nice. So there's Darby on the forehand where he's got some balls to play too. An excellent weight for that. Obviously it was sort of with cover in mind, but if he had have played through Finbars, he would have turned them up and, as you say, tidied it up. But, yeah, I wouldn't want to have a bookmaker laying Ray, P uh, Ray Martin's bulbing past the jack here. I think he'll be <laughs> playing with real intent. Play a big weight too, but look. One out. Two now. It's one of those situations where you get one and you think, oh, yeah, beauty, we've got one, but it only looks half as good as it did before. See Darby back to the draw. Can't see two dubs. And I suppose that's been the, you know, the mm. thing with this side, is, and whilst I've made a slow start, They've just got such scoring punch. That's right. That, yeah, that they can really uh, score in bowlers. multiples. Wait again. Oh, he's got contact here. Oh, it's reasonably... Good shot. Very good shot. It's I can big. imagine there were probably some results in there that could have been better than that, but... I thought, yeah, once he got that split, I thought he'd get hmm. all three of those easy, but... One hung round. Hung round, yeah. Certainly a much improved position. One down, possibly two, but with one in hand as well. No sign of the club cat today, Robert, which was uh, discussed in last week's coverage. Yeah, no George today, or so far. No. Uh, we uh, spoke with the owner, and the cat was called Ginger Nuts, and then it had an operation, and subsequently it's just called Ging. Gelded. <laughs> I, I lost it when they mentioned that over the fence. Two stone lighter, as they say. So it's just one, and Ray has got intentions on he's getting the shot there. himself, and he's, he's played really it well. Close. Oh, oh what a, a shot. shot. May have even made two of it. That's a terrific conversion. And you look at the situation that he crossed over in Ray Martin, three down. I imagine he's most probably made two of that. Yeah, and he's just, I mean, he's driven on his first two bowls there as well, <laughs> and now he's just gone and set the bowl out. I mean, it's remarkable. It's good stuff. So it is two. And just that situation, you think, oh, you know, if they drop three here, it's nip tuck, back on. And uh, to turn that round just really just look like it's a stage where they might lose some momentum. And they've really yeah, kicked on. Yeah, it's a big on. swing, really. looking around, just ring might be a bit of wind about. Yeah, I think he's gone through there. If 
Fembo looks like he's off to a nice start. So spotlight on the sponsors of the Turf Hotel, Rob. Uh, very generous and big supporter of, of the game. You managed to find some time to get there for a meal over the weekend? I, I was down there on Friday. Missed out yesterday. It's quite a big day in the green yesterday. Yeah, I think a lot of the players have supported it, which is great. It's always give and take those sponsor relationships. I uh, went there last evening for the soup of the day. And suitably pleased. It's a lovely supporter of, of bowls in the region. So we it thank them very to, much. Stan's done a fantastic job getting the community involved in all sports, really. McGuigan now looking to really push now and run this out. Played it pretty well. Going nicely. Get one handy here, does Matty? So, if you're just joining us in the other semi final, which is being played on rank four of the Wadsworth Green, it's Gary Lawson and Tony Grantham playing Shannon Giddos and Jake Graham, the Australians, and that match is three all after four. Pretty good again, Robert. Played. Very well played. If I was going to be a tough taskmaster, the only thing I'd say about how Finn has gone is he'd been very dead weight. And when you, you know, Ray's played conversions where he's been moving the jack and, yeah. and looking to play it, just hasn't necessarily had the position uh, at times. But yeah, as even, I say, that, that's particularly there, tough from me. He's drawn, <laughs> drawn three shots there and even still... Um, yeah. Position-wise, he'd probably he'd sort of take Ray's head in the yes. stakes. Big chance down on the forehand here to try and get the jack or a bowl or something. It's quite a bit of weight anyway. Mike Coonan watches on as he's raiding, looking for a sit or the jack and just ducks under but stays on the rink. Uh, did knock off the previous back bowl though. So it will be a nice position for his next and interesting intent there. Yeah, I thought if he was going to play that shot, he'd play it a bit quicker. I thought he'd play it a bit slower. Yeah, but if he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably myself just saw him playing with a metre or two away. And just, uh, yeah. This time of day on the Stoke Greens can get a little tricky. They do no sort of shots. a little bit draw drive. So it'll be interesting to see what Wadey plays here. Yes, well... I might go back to that. It's not an enormous target, is it? So more of a draw weight, maybe, now. Yeah. Mm. I think so. This is sort of more how I saw it. What, what a fair, great effort. Oh, enormous. He is going superb. It's Ray Martin... Shot. And as you said, Rob, whilst they were three down, the uh, position when you've got a skip that's turning heads over the way he is was certainly enviable. Yeah. They really... Double need Trondra a shot here. They really need to score this end, I think. Wait. He's going big. Bowl or jack. It needs to hold. Ducked under. So, I overheard Matt Pearson say they got a couple. A couple here really would stretch them out to a generous early lead. Very much so. <laughs> 
Keanu's playing with weight again here. It's a big bowl. Oh, he could get both. Oh, he's got one and cut the jack, so they're going to drop one. But he has, at the same time, saved another. Just finding a way at the moment, the Ray Martin side. Yeah, the Ray's played a couple of big conversion shots in the last two ends. Interesting character, Matt Pearson. Certainly a, a popular tourist. And the ownership of several racehorses as well. Keen uh, racing fan. He's certainly never far away from a tote shop anyway. So eight two after six here at Stoke. Well, we think it is anyway. Yeah, they haven't done the board out there, I note on the uh, the green. Good start here by Fimba. Grantham and Lawson with the ascendancy in the other battle. 6 3 they lead. If you're just joining us, it's uh, Stakes Day here. Where there's 20,000 New Zealand dollars up for grabs between the top eight teams only. No plates or anything here. If you're not in, you're not in. But we're down to the last four. Friday was a nightmare here. One round only. 30 odd millimetres of rain and six games of 12 ends yesterday was a real test of the players. So. They'll be in, some of them are in a, a bit of a state today, Rob, with a, a few guys hobbling around the clubhouse. Sore, yeah, in a word, very sore. I think Massage Gun got a good workout last night. 72 ends for the day, which yeah, was what we are planning on playing anyway on Friday, but being four games of 18. I suppose the harder thing yesterday with it being six games is just more management, isn't it? Yeah, more, right. you know, More game situations and managing the board or, or whatever, but... It just mentally, I think, a taxing day, but our uh, thanks to the players that yeah. basically yeah, just got their head down and, and did the job and got out there. But as we see the, the crossover here, Finbar with one and, and some nice position. So he's got one over Matty this time. But I suspect it's be probably not close enough for Ray Martin at the moment. No, you see it like a beach ball at the moment, Ray. Certainly got a lovely line here. Turning now, just going to sail by, but incredible cider. He's a bit close, I think it's just out though. Great effort.
Close here, Ray, if he turns. Just a fraction quick, I think. What a great effort. He's nailed the centre line early on in this fixture. Third of the way through now. Keanu probably needs to get another bowl there fairly urgently, I'd say. It's just wide again. That, uh... Yeah, of all the players, he's... Uh, A few seconds there. You need to hit his straps in this one, Keanu Darby. From Tamuka. Currently uh, resides in Dunedin. Ray's going to try and probably sit this bolt through. Yeah. You know what? He'll probably play it too. As he walks back to the mat now. Yeah. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> right, so Derby. False start. Ted Ball. They look likely to score here, we think, seeing if he can add the extras and it would be a great time to add the bonus. He's certainly green it well, Robert. Just needs to pull up. That's a great effort. Yeah, enormous effort. to the short end again. Oh, I suspect that will not be legal. So the quirk of the local playing conditions here is that the Jacks only throw on once. Bit of a uh, novel one. Means the stakes are a bit higher if you want to take a punt. That's right. Saves a bit of time. Genuinely, a, or generally, a popular decision amongst the players, most of the time, anyway. Finbar's open it, just pulling up. One thing I did note in the first game, Robbie, is when the Jack was in this position, so I call it a little bit no man's land. No, real, no one really nailed it. And uh, we saw particularly the leads have bowls that looked as if they were all over it and just ducked under, but Finbar's onto it pretty early. We see we did have quite a bit of weather on Friday and you will see some mad areas from playing in that other direction, but geez, the greens handle well, Robbie. Oh, they're running unbelievably good, both greens. You do well to find a bit of green around the country at the moment, I'd say. Yep, and uh, 
I suppose if anyone's educated to speak on that, that would be a man like yourself who's got a background in, well, curating. Where are you at the moment? Trafalgar Park? Trafalgar Park, yep. No more all wax tests there, though. No. That, that was a baptism of fire in the role, was it? Six months before you moved here? Yeah, it's the ABs. Certainly a stressful couple of weeks, anyway. <laughs> oh, I see Maddie going quick here. On the attack. I like the option. Oh, yeah, I like the option as well. Certainly good intent. The only downside, I suppose, Maddie's been drawing quite well and Ray's been converting well. If Ray gets fresh air once or twice, he sort of might load that Maddie didn't draw him a third a foot away or something, but you never know where it would have gone anyway. Yes, so. I think. I mean, Matty ran that on the other opposite hand he's been playing yeah. as well, so it probably doesn't matter as much. <coughs> well, we see Keanu, very clever. A little bit of cover. Bit of both there. Ray's only drawing. Seems the wind's come up somewhat here. Yeah, you can certainly hear it. Well, that's third for now. It's interesting, Ray elected to go back on the draw there. I suppose they're worth three down. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Gives them an option. I'm not a very deep thinker of the game, but I always enjoy when you attack early like that and it sort of makes the opposition duck for cover and it sort of feel like it saves right. you a shot. I'm pretty sure if Matty hadn't run with his last bowl count, he wouldn't have been covering. Well, that's all right. So it's, um, yeah, oh, well, that's one less that we're hurting. Subsequently now they know that Ray's drawing. Yeah. I don't know if he'll be drawing now. It's hard to know the, with his stance on the map, but... I get the feeling he's probably just looking to arrive here. He's got terrific speed. He's right in the mix here. Oh, that's desperately unlucky. He's typically just in such good areas with his shot play like that. Certainly a good correction off his first one anyway. Yeah, most definitely. Changing hands. See, it looks with the breeze coming across that hand, stun to take quite a bit of turn. Yeah, just be looking for this one to run out. Oh, not quite getting there. So, if that last bow of Keanu is there, makes so she makes Ray go a bit quicker at this. If he holds, just whipping across yeah, the hand it's, now. Yeah, it's just gone. Two 
or three shots there. Much needed for the Kenai Derby combination. Game was just starting to slip away from them slightly there, so. See if Finbar can put a bit more of pressure on them. And then the clubhouse side here at the State Bowling Club. Good start of two. Pearson down on the forehand side here. Tidy bowl there by Finbar. Just whipping across there. Could have pretty good bowls there by Finbar. Yeah, it does Just look a nice setup. Just a really timely uh, number to pick up there for the yeah, Derby and McGregor combo. The game was just slipping away from him slightly, but. Not looking, Matt's bowl here. Lee Pearson. Lee. Playing down his back end, then try and sit the bowl of Maddie's out. I'd say. We possibly haven't seen too many bowls up this hand so far in this game. Saw Tony Grantham favourite early on in the uh, quarter final. Just not quite enough speed. No. Good effort though. Huge effort, and a lovely second. Suspect Ray Martin's also slightly underweight here. He's just nailed the line though, the whole game so far. I can only think of two or three occasions where he's missed out and even then that's been when he's kind of been almost in between shots at times. Yeah, I think he got a bit, even that last thing he got a bit lost. What to play in the end really. Yeah, it was just a bit of a muddle really, wasn't it? You see, Keanu Derby miss out there, and uh, whether he got a gust, I'm not sure, but there is certainly some wind about, as you'll see, 
with the flags dancing around. Where they come from. Just travelling ever so slowly, maybe. No indication from the players there. But Manny Pearson certainly gave that one a big clap. Huge effort here. If you're going to get to the bowl, what a shot. Shot. Saw the one down by the look of it. Rinse and repeat for Ray here. Yeah. Matt Pearson certainly didn't give us any hints as to who's holding shot. Not visually, anyway. I've seen that Finbar did just uh, still one down. Oh, good spotting. And one, one it will be. 9-6 at the halfway stage. Here on Stakes Day at the Stoke Bowling Club. $20,000 in prize money here today. And we're down to the last four. Massive thanks to the Bowls New Zealand team for bringing this coverage to you. They do all the admin and the setup and equipment. Outstanding effort and doing a great job of promoting the sport. We just have to provide some very ordinary commentary. And it's a pleasure to be in your lounge today or wherever you may be watching this. So thanks for tuning in. Joined by Robbie Reid, who's played in the tournament. Not required today. And I participated, put that way. Participated myself, Brendan Hodson. Got the uh, honour of running this event. And so far, I think it's been a success. Of course, I'm biased. But a uh, quality field we've assembled of 64 of the finest players around the country and some from across the ditch as well. So thanks for joining us. We're halfway through this semi-final fixture and we're waiting on an update from the second semi-final which has come through and that's Gary Lawson who leads Shannon Giddo's 9-7 after 8 of the 18 ends. Another close game next tour, the other semi. Yes, it was 9-3 for a time. So they've picked up a number, the Aussie boys. Lovely blokes. Shannon Giddo's had to get a passport to come to the tournament. First time he's ever left Australia. Is that right? The world's his oyster now. First time he's ever left Australia and he's gone to Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they flew jet start from Sydney to Auckland. 249 return. Isn't that nice buying? It's nice buying. I do prefer the national carrier, however. <laughs> then another flight to Wellington on the ferry with their good mate Blake Signal. So they've seen quite a few transport companies. A bit of time on the Inter Islander was well received. Very scenic. So they're loving their time here. Great to have them. Bit of uh, international flavour. Obviously Damien McGee as well. And Steve Bryan resides in Broad Beach now. That's right, yeah. I think he's still a Kiwi. Yeah. For now. For now. Nice man, the Brian, Stevie Brian, and we have John Boy here as well. Big supporters of bowls around the country, but in particular at Stokes Valley, where Finbar is based. And uh, it's one of the bright stars in the game in New Zealand. So, neither lead really nailing it just yet. No, it appears to be going this way. They're just a bit scratchy. Gotta be so careful this stage of the game. Scratch your in. Get yourself into a bit of trouble. Yeah, 
it's certainly an interesting time where, you know, Ray and Maddie could really pull away if they continue their good form. But then you suspect that Keanu hasn't really nailed it this fixture yet, but as we've seen over the weekend, these guys can score very quickly. I think he needs to turn his cap around. <laughs> it's an option. Raymond Martin has drawn an absolute beauty there. I can't think of too many ineffective bowls from Ray in this game, really. Uh, yeah. I think two, maybe. Yeah. Good. Wind is definitely starting to get up there. We found the same yesterday became quite tricky with the rink drying. Certainly couldn't ask for a better day for the finals, though, on Stakes Day. No, beautiful day of weather. Fair effort here from Derby. Just not quite going to hold up long enough to get to the bowl or jack, but... Lovely speed. Lovely speed in a nice position. Right, we're looking to beat the bowl of Matty Pearson, I'd say. Just not quite there. Got him there, talked up his effectiveness. I think it's still only about sort of gesturing to play the other hand here. There's definitely a chance off Keanu's bowl. Get down to the edge of that. Doesn't need to play it super quick. Maybe just look to get two rolls out of one of the bowl there. Close here. Yeah, it looks a big chance. Get the edge of that. Oh, oh. what a shot. Oh, that may well be enough for one. Goodness me. What a great effort. Right, having a good look at it. Ray's changing his hand as well. Oh, it's got the option of turning his own ball once to make sure of it, I suppose. Yeah, it's a lot safer down there. I'm assuming they've probably got the shot, if that's the case. Well, Keanu's got an opportunity here. Yeah, Let's see if he can get that bowl. I think it will go clean. Get the right edge of it. Well, it's from both sort of gesture. He sort of might get the edge of it and, and follow on and sort of get the back green, which cannons the orange out. Yeah, good chance. It's good chances down there. Yeah, a lot of guys have called shots like that this weekend. I've been watching a reasonable percentage of playing them as well. Certainly a very high standard here. Quarter weight for him, I'd say. Not a great 
deal with too. So, Matt Pearson picks up the jack. He really just throws the mat down, Matty. Yes. Certainly a few punters in, in around the club now. Hotty? Yeah, there are a number of people that have turned up either for Nelson or just locals that are interested. A lot of laughing and a lot of roaring behind us. That's right. There's some of the great characters of the game here. Good tourists. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of good tourists, yeah. Be fair to say, that's why some of them are probably invited. <laughs> yes, I suppose if you look at the invitation process over the years, there's been some quality fields, but for me, none as good as this. But you do have to tick a few boxes. Obviously got to be right up there in terms of ability and just genuinely uh, good personalities and that's what makes these sort of private tournaments such as this is uh, just like last night there were quite a few pandas here a bit of music a few sing-alongs and uh, people that just enjoy each other's company Rob so it's been a pleasure this weekend and I uh, feel like the best is still in front of us with some quality games on at the moment and then obviously the nightcap the final Be a pretty handy line here by Finbar. That's very good. Both hands are really stunning. Turn. And he's played this one pretty well. Been impressive, Matty. Certainly yeah. held his own against Finbar, anyway. Well, as I touched on earlier, it's sort of, you know, he holds his own with all leads at this tournament and not delving into selection, but it does blow my mind that he doesn't feature in the, uh, some of the Manor 2 teams come into centre times and things like that. Um, you know, one guy that gets out of the centre and travels around and, you know, goes yeah, out of his way to improve his game, so... I would have thought personally, definitely for the runs on the board anyway, but... I don't know how much weight events like this hold in a or two. But happy to write him a, a uh, letter of reference if need be, because this has been a, a great performance from him all weekend, and whilst he's had a bit of an end-off here, he's uh, been mighty impressive. And obviously, if we're talking about the other lead, he doesn't need too many more compliments. He's been superb. That's right. All weekend, just be head on a string, as you can see there. You see Ray looking to Tell make Ray's amends if he gets around that front one. Whoever he hits it, oh, another turn would have been a big improvement. Keanu would just love to tuck the white around the corner on his backhand here. You'd think, really tidy it up, make it look a bit ugly from the mat. Yeah, any jack movement here is certainly favourable for Keanu. We'll just hide it away nicely.
Yep. Probably a bit disappointed pulling up short there. Yeah. Certainly nothing to be frightened of. No, it's certainly a free kick there. Well, that's a disappointing one for Ray Martin, who may well find himself under the cosh here yes. when he heads back to the map to play his last. This could be an enormous swing for the game, really. Doesn't he load up the backswing, Keanu? Yeah, it's very hard to tell if he's drawing yeah. the driver. <laughs> this is what he's looking for, if he can get back to the jack. So they're probably three down. I'm thinking three. I think Ray will still play the same sort of bowl. He just needs to get a couple of rolls out of Matty's front one there. He's beaten pretty good areas on that hand all day. And yeah, he's only just missing. So I wonder if he might play with the yard of weight. Kind of so if he did happen to get to one of the opposition bowls, it's sort of like a chop and lie sort of situation. I think in that situation you generally put a bit extra weight on anyway, don't you? Yeah, I've got no problem putting weight on, mate. Well, you think he's in a pretty good area? Oh, just need to clear his own. Oh. Once again, don't know, but certainly didn't. One roll less would have been ideal there. That ball really kicked in it just the wrong side. It did, yeah. Here is here. Yeah, really looking to kick a goal here. Oh, he pulled up short again. When just nothing for short there, really. Well, I think you touch the white 10, 15 centimeters there, or unlimited, really. That's right. You get five when you're four behind. That's just, as you said earlier, a free kick, and Dubs will be disappointed with that one, I'm quite sure. But they'll get three. But he did have an opportunity to, well, take the lead there. That's right. It would have been first time to get in front to, I'd say, in this game. So, But she's all in that, all on now anyway. Yeah, very timely uh, three there. A few discussions about what length to play here. So going back to the short end again. Served them pretty well, really. It certainly has. He's thrown short ends with a frightening degree of accuracy as well, really. Even the one that missed out was only by 10 or so centimetres. It looks like a reasonable opener. An update on the other fixture, it's Gary Lawson, 10, Shannon Giddo's 8, 10 ends completed there. Update for Ricky Cook, who's Gary Lawson's manager, I believe. He's very interested in how he's getting on, so either way, both of those teams would be fitting finalists. Oh, definitely. It's um, interesting seeing Gaz is like... In the past, has struggled in Nelson in these sort of tournaments. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's um, but you still won, won the Nelson fours, but 
he went there with some pretty heavy artillery as well. But I'd say in well, maybe a dozen starts at the Stoke Invitation singles over the years, never troubled the scores. So it's uh, certainly Beckerman on Stakes Day anyway. Well, as Shane Sincock said this morning, he's pretty motivated at the moment. He's in good order. Looks after himself off the paddock as well. Which, Fantastic uh, player. Oh, just phenomenal player. I mean, I suppose you look at a game with Shannon today and obviously how, how good Shannon is himself, but just that mental edge. Not the saying that Giz has got it more than Shan, but he just the sort of bloke that really just turns it on for the big occasion, really. And that's no secret. No, he's done no. it for many, many years. <laughs> he finds a way to motivate himself, and normally that's getting stuck into someone else. <laughs> I think TG got a bit of a tough ride yesterday. Yeah, I think he's been <laughs> ringing a bit, TG, this weekend. Uh, he's gone pretty good in his own right, Tony. You know, just to have the, the reigning Bowls New Zealand National Peers champions here is uh, terrific. I see no Gary last year. He was uh, on an enforced holiday. <laughs> Good to have him back. So it's Nip Tuck here in the semi final. Ray Martin, Matty Pearson still with their nose in front, but they did jump out to an early lead. They were travelling hands and heels, and now, uh, like we predicted, you know. These young lads can score in bunches and have done. Some multiples in there. I suspect that'll be under Robert. That will run away for sure. An interesting one here with Ray electing to play the hand that appears to have a bit of traffic, but very, very well judged. I don't know how he found the line down there, no. but he, he managed to. <laughs> and he'd just be pleased that he just turned that extra half roll that took him away from the left right, yeah. between so the bowler jack the as well. Keanu's playing with weight here. He's playing with big weight. Oh. And bowl only. Still two. Don't think Ray will play the same lines as his first one. Just needs a clear run. I think he's back to the draw here. It doesn't seem a lot to hit. I wonder whether it's the, the wind that's preventing people playing this forehand that appears to be the open side. Yeah, potentially. I think the hands have sort of swapped. It's a bit tighter down this back end, on the stitch hand now than it is on the that open side. So it'd be to do with the wind, I'd, I'd assume. Ugh. Yeah, we did suspect that there was some traffic there. It's just not the sort of result you'd need at this stage in the match, really. Nah, it's, it's a loose head, too. When, yeah, even Ray, like, Ray's kind of scrambling. And if that's given them another, it's... Sort of noticed going this way, the heads have been a lot more... A lot more scratchy, and, you know, it's just how you drop these sort of numbers is just annoying, really. Also, I suppose, you know, the, the Jacks in no man's land here. And That's right. So we see Ray now on the open hand. 
Expecting some late turn, as Robbie predicted, and it seemed easy. Yes. So we'll see that what number goes up. As you said, Rob, a, a bit of a mixture there. Scrappy sort of end, and it's certainly a multiple. They've got the three back, moved to 13. After 12 ends completed. Yeah, they'll be disappointed with that. Just wrestled back the ascendancy and then essentially threw it away again. Manny Pearson sort of employing the mid, mid length here. So 11 10 in the other semi final. Gary Lawson leads. Lovely start here from Maddie Pearson all over it. What a start, the big man. <laughs> Just a really consistent achiever at this tournament, this pair. Maddie Pearson, in my opinion, one of Mano Two's finest, and Ray Martin, who's just one of the most improved players in the country in the last four or five years, Robert? Oh, he's been a good player for many years now, Ray. I think he really, uh, I suppose what I mean more, he's really making a name for himself at the top level. You know, he's going to nationals and skipping fours and things like that, and they're in the mix. And, you know, he's certainly well respected around the country. Well, I think he's got a nice chance in the Nelson fours as well with uh, Blake Signal and the Aussie boys. See, uh, like this tournament. The markets are being covered by the TAB. Obviously a, a nice supporter of, of bowls in New Zealand as well. So we uh, certainly appreciate them putting out those novelty markets. I suppose That's we'll right. call them novelty. Certainly novel in the clubhouse. and It's always a discussion point. So it allows uh, the followers out there to have an interest in the event. It doesn't look like there's going to be an 80 to 1 outsider win this year. Not this year, no. It's actually funny, I was looking on radio the other day, and um, one of the announcers got a text through from a punter saying that uh, the Black Signal side and the Nelson Fours are a big chance. <laughs> Is that right? So that's uh, got to be good for the game if people are talking about that, whether it's for wagering purposes or otherwise, but it's bringing some profile to these events. So I don't know who sent that text. It might have been Black Signal, actually. <laughs> well, I did note that Black Signal opened it I think 14 to 1, 15 dollars, and uh, did not last there probably as soon as it was on the radio. Mm. Looking forward to getting in and watching some of the Spates Premier Fours at the Nelson Bowling Club. Finbar on the drive, get it to zone so only, but unlucky. Uh, you know, amazing week of bowls, week in a bit with obviously the Lady Stakes and then into this, and you know Nelson, they're our fierce rivals. We love to hate them, but. It's, uh, you know, some clubs in a, a centre that's, but you know, trying to promote the game and, and put on events that are bringing people to town and also a great opportunity for some of the locals to play at the top level in their backyard. Yeah, I, it's, um, it's a, amazing really what we can do between the two clubs to bring all these people here for, you know, two, three weeks. It's um, certainly big for Bowles and Nelson anyway. That's right, and last week, big success, the ladies' tournament, and just been talking with the organisers who are, at the moment, it's a 16-team competition, and they're wondering whether there's any uh, interest in there from some other top ladies' teams around the country to, to attend next year, so keep an eye on our Facebook page. We're going to get some info on that for some expressions of interest, so 
if you're uh, something that might interest you, coming to Stoke for the women's stakes next year. 10000 in prize money as it stands, but the more teams we add, the more stakes we add. So keep an eye on that one or flick us a message if that's something that interests you because at the moment, obviously we saw last week, Amy McElroy, Taylor Bruce beat Joe Edwards, Val Smith. We're talking you know, four of the top ladies players in the country. Amy McElroy for me is uh, obviously Glasgow Fours got bronze medalist. Well, it shows how good the field is when the old one out and the final was Amy McElroy because <laughs> she hasn't won a world singles title. You know? <laughs> no, I don't think Val has, uh, uh, Val has but Joe hasn't. Sorry. Yeah, right, but, yeah, but obviously Joe's got everything else on the resume. Here he goes. Oh, oh. It's, uh, it's a lot better than what it was. It is a lot better, yep. It's just one good. light now they've found themselves with the second 45 centimetres away. But no, that was an excellent exhibition of bowls last weekend. And, and as we saw on the, the Twilight Bowls midweek, uh, that Amy's in the mix, certainly playing well. I think you know, international availability days are... Well, status is not available at present, but um, yeah, there, there's certainly some some top quality ladies out there at the moment. So, if you're keen to come, flick us a note. But what a shot here, Ray Martin. Ray's just really putting the squeeze on here. Oh. Holy cow! This is May Day for the boys here, really. Yeah, that, that's terrific, and I can see why Keanu's going up for a look here because a number here, two, three, is a long chase back. Also have one bowl on the head, which is not <laughs> ideal. It does look particularly exposed. And if Ray Martin's not worked that out yet, I'm sure he will if he needs to. You wouldn't back against him plucking that out if he was given the opportunity. So I think we might see Derby here down the forehand side looking to turn the Ray Martin bowl onto the jack. Maybe move it. Yeah, 30 or 40. So. It, it seems a logical it, scoring chance, but uh, how do looks, you see it? Just looks hard all round, really. I'd much rather be in Ray's shoes than Keanu's <laughs> here, but. So, did they take a chance to play with a bit of weight? But I just think their bowl sitting on the head there is just far too exposed to even entertain well, the thought of that. And even if you don't rip it out yourself, you know that. <laughs> just leaving the door open, aren't There's you? some fella on the other team that's very keen to help. So playing his back end, it's a bit more turn out there, I guess, now. So. Yes. He's played this pretty it's well. He just needs to clear. Oh. oh, terrific. Gives him an option. But it sort of does take away Is it? the draw there, probably. Yeah, he's got the option now of turning his, but... The likelihood of squeezing it past and still getting the shot does seem low. The upside there, though, is that now they have got a nice third. So partly a little bit of damage control and a head where they were somewhat exposed, I suppose. Interesting to see what Razor does here. Two, he's pretty good fishing at this stage of the game, so... That's where they come from. Yep. Maddie's getting interested. Certainly more chances for Keanu now. It's a feel if he gets down to the edge of his front one. May sort of create that split and just get the bowl onto the jack. Yeah, I agree. I, I wonder if um, 
Yeah, it does look like it's the Ray Martin bot will get past the Jack as well. So just looking for, yeah, inside edge, outside edge of his own. I think. Well, it's probably that stage in the game where you're obliged to take a punt. Because otherwise they find themselves chasing their tail. And chasing a big deficit. Just playing with weight. You've called this well. Big ball. He's close too. Well, what a oh, shot. A great shot. Unbelievable shot. And Robbie Reed's called it. Keanu Darby's played it and it's two. What a turnaround. So we said that was a troublesome period of the game if they conceded. Oh, that was, that was mayday for them at the end, really. And somehow they've... And yeah, get two out of it. And he just played that with, you know, it wasn't his full out drive, but just remarkable accuracy and talk about maximising results. Yeah, that's massive. So, 13 11 now. With 13 completed. No killed ends this morning on the coverage. It's always good for the hourly rate. Don't have to do any overtime on our remarkable salaries here in the commentary box. So, are we general meeting in the middle of the rink to discuss what length they're going to play? And uh, Finbar delivers the jack and what's been a thrilling semi-final here. Just waiting on an update from the Gary Lawson game, but I suspect that that's going to be Nip Tuck as well and the Australian team of Giddos and Graham started the tournament with a hiss and a roar. It got a little bit flat yesterday as conditions changed and obviously a bit different to what they're accustomed to but they're uh, going well out there at the moment. So Finbar with his first and it's a nice opener. Really looking to kick on with the momentum that his skipper's just created for their side, Robbie. Yeah, that was... And uh, you can hear some chat in the clubhouse about how big a bowl that was in the context of this match. I'm just having to feel, yeah, two down then. It's, um, it was a very important bowl and it's a great shot. It's completely changed this game around. Well, it's only a small swing. It's yes, yeah, a small swing, but it, it certainly changes the asking rate. Yeah. So, again, McGuigan using hence like Dreamline XG. Not sure what the colour is, apart from half blue, half salmon. Matty Pearson playing out of the Hensel Light Barn as well. XG's for him. Even got the matching coloured shirts. Can't miss him. No, you certainly can't. Yeah, Robbie, name the first person to score 100 points for the Highlanders in Super Rugby. Uh, the good Southland, I'd say, Simon Calhane. Too good you, mate. I'll have to find another question from somewhere at some point, but sports trivia with Robbie Reid is unbeatable as we see Matt Pearson attacking again and it's one part of his game that I'm not necessarily convinced by. And the result reflected that. Oh, I have a, See uh, that? Uh, yeah, I make no apologies for, for being a very ordinary lawn bowler myself, but I just think Ray Martin's conversions are so good. Just get Matty to get as close as he can and 
I think we, we seen last time when he got Matty have a have a runner. They dropped a three, I think. So. Mm. But we're sitting inside watching a monitor in the comfort of the Stoke Bowling Club, and uh, those guys are out in the middle doing it. So. They play on Sundays. In our commentary, yeah, they're playing on Sundays. We play for chickens on the midweeks, but yeah, as uh, as always, it's just an opinion. We're not uh, trying to upset any of our cobbers. What are their options, I suppose? Give us a hard time, they don't come back. That's right. <laughs> I suppose as the tournament organisers, we can do what we like. We can do whatever we like. <laughs> what a fair effort here by Ray Martin. Might get them all play left-handed next year. Oh, well, if he got to the back piece of Finbar's bowl, there's a chance he sort of punted that onto the white. And yeah, I just I, I think he's sort of half and half with his weight there. I don't think he's quite convinced. Which is exactly what happened last time, Matt. He played a runner. That's right. So when they've had when they've scored when using weight and stuff like that, they've had really n nice positions. And the heads have been a bit fatter, whereas yeah. sometimes when it, it's like this and there's some holes, and so sort of, I'd really like to see him just try and draw a second shot. You're probably third, and if you get second or better, it's a bonus. But he's making sure fine. that you're beating Keanu's last and his next, really. I'm still employing the sort of under this time. raid. This is a bad outcome. Nope. It went a bit further than I expected, but it, it's an ugly one, Rob. I sort of thought he would have tried to draw off this last one there. I've seen that hand's pretty kind on the draw now. Darby down on his back end here. He's going to add another shot to the head. He's not far away either. Touch on the jacks, enormous. Oh, it's a great effort. Looks like. I've got some position at the back here, the Pearson and Martin side. So tight. He's going to miss out. News from rink four to Australians. Shannon Ghetto, Jake Graham picked up a five against oh, wow. GR Lawson and Tony Grantham. And uh, I asked someone that's been watching that fixture what the five was like, and they said ugly. So, sounded like it was a hard one to play to for Gaz, but the five's massive for the Australians. And that sees them lead now, 15-11 through 13 ends. So, a big swing in that game. As things are levelled up here on the show rink. At 13 apiece. Playing the 15th. One one thing that has sort of happened in this game, Robbie, is Finbar's sort of, for me, really come on in the last three or four ends. Back to a bit more yeah, he's just start. tightened up a bit in the last few ends, Finbar. Yeah. He's just probably just wrestled the ascendancy off. He's Maddie. such an unflappable character, really. He's pretty cool, calm and collected. The Stokes Valley Viper. I suppose you can be when you're that good. <laughs> Very humble man, too. The big future in the sport, but Good Matty Pearson, Matty. just like that, has uh, played a nice opener. And you see one of the central stags in the background there. Full playing kit. Probably should, should be having a nick, probably going on the last result. Yeah, 
Manny again trying to fill up here. He's good again too, Matty. He's just get around that front one. Yeah, he just needs to ride that. Oh, yeah. unlucky. I only crowed that. He did really. I must yeah. apologise to him after the game. I suppose yeah, we know it's a big swooper there. He's just missed his line of bowl probably. Equally one of those instances where he did have one on. See, Finbar's sort of searching around for dead weight here. Hmm. Well, Matty, in that instance, you know, he's got one on top of it anywhere past. He probably gets a clap. I said to Zinni this morning, you even get a clap if you go in the ditch, probably. Having the right idea. Yeah, that's right. But um, especially, you know, these boys love moving the wide around and things like that. But that's a fair response from Finney. Be in the mix. Yeah, the head sets up pretty good now for Kiana's side. Just... And he must have listened to you, Hoodie. Went round the back for his last bowl there. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to me. But, uh, good fellow, Matty. Very popular man here. down his back end side here. Fortunate there. Keanu. Back inside. Really see a bit of a sheen on the surface now, Rob. Yeah, certainly, uh, dry now. certainly had a good drink on Friday anyway. Massive thanks to the curator, Glenn Miller. He uh, snuck back here under the shadow of darkness to push water around. I think he, he was still here that. at 10 o'clock Friday evening, so enormous effort that the players are all grateful for. And, so fortunate to have had a greenkeeper like Glenn to set us up with a couple of pristine surfaces. So, no, last year, one of the greens was out of action. We think went to Motueka Bowling Club for a section or, uh, two, or half the field. So nice night of those dramas this year, Rob. That's right. Keanu's close here if he runs. Oh, that line is just all over it. Fear if it two down here, so free kick for Ray here to try and just make that margin slightly bigger.
and he's interested here. Comes into picture. What a huge! Oh, oh. that is very unfortunate. He <laughs> can't the believe look it. on his face. <laughs> the grimace. Ultimately, a smile, but deep down, he's thinking, "Oh, that would have been a lovely time to to grab one of them." I suspect it was two. Certainly, a game of small margins. Hope me knows out the window. Finbar heads to the board. Flips over two red numbers. And two it is. I do feel that the Derby side probably need to Score this end. Yeah, I agree with you, Robert. I think you see on the wreck next door. Gary, what? Gary Lawson playing weight, and he's got a big slide up the front onto the jack. And that's a killed end. So I think that fixture will certainly be finishing after us here in the, the commentary coverage, Robert. Yeah, certainly a bit slow. How many ends have they played out there? They've played 13 ends. We've not had a kill all morning. Though. You were away before for refreshments, and I noted that's good for the early rate. No overtime. That's right. Two sandwiches an hour here. To renegotiate the contract for next year to include some ginger crunch. Lovely catering here. Rhonda Bellis. Rhonda Bellis. Sensational catering. Yeah. The ginger ginger crunch is a clear highlight of my steak mistakes weekend. Pulling up short there, Matty. Lovely time to nail one here for Fimba. Who's flying home tonight, skipping the Nelson Force? Not playing Nelson Force? No. No? Certainly going to be a long week of bowls anyway. Yeah, I think he enjoyed the Nelson Force last year. But uh, yeah, a, lo a lot of uh, annual leave required during a bowling season. Yeah, that's right, I think. You certainly have got to pick and choose when you play. Yeah, you soon find the annual leave fading away. Mm. Miss many, many weekends. Reasonable response here from Matthew Pearson, who... Gets a good second. See if that's a nice position. It gives Ray the opportunity now. Play a bit more freedom. Yeah. I'm just pulling a bit short here. Interesting to see what hand Ray plays here. Looks like he's going to play the backhand. There was a chance on his forehand also to push the bowl of Matty Pearson's up, but he's chosen the open hand.
He's just battered the centre line today. <laughs> Yeah, especially with the green sort of changing conditions as well, didn't Yeah. The year that they lost the final to Shane Sinkoff and Calvin Scott, he brought down a set of, I think, blue lines, which in the green on the Sunday was flying. His accuracy with those was just remarkable. He's, um, he's always played with quite wide bowls, right? He obviously has. used to have classic twos. He handles them so well. And I suppose you know, he plays at Victoria where their number two surface, particularly early in the season, can be a bit stodgy. I think he's got a big future. I think particularly uh, you know, in some of those Northern Hemisphere events because obviously a pretty compact delivery in that, but like, he's, he's not... He's quite accustomed to rough tracks as well, and just have to yeah, guess you're right. Couldn't quite hug that front ball. Made contact and flopped out. So we'll see Ray Martin now. Be a lovely time to to draw the shot itself. Be a huge ball. So he lets it go on the backhand. I'm pretty close with both efforts here. It's just the speed of anything. So see if this one comes back. Yeah, it's looking to break now. Here it comes. Oh, that's a phenomenal effort. Gets a clap from his lead. Certainly deserved to clap that. That was a great effort. <laughs> yeah. Just dead weight, wasn't it? Yeah, like I said, he just ran through those first two, but his line was all over it again. Yeah, it was interesting. The ball really turned in the last metre of running, didn't it? It's sort of coming in, not necessarily sideways, but uh, it seems generous. You know that you can draw around bowls That's and right, things I, like that, I even with a modern ball. No better feeling. When you're standing on the mat, knowing you can actually draw around things. A lot of people sort of employ the, to play with tighter bowls these days, but I don't think you can beat taking grass. Personally, just got one eye on the Gary Lawson fixture out the window here, and it's Lawson who's attacking again. Kiana is very close here. He's played this. Oh, it's a super shot. Kiana has played a bomb. Gary Lawson's gone through the hole. I think he looks like he might drop a couple over there. They just won't go away, these boys. That's a great shot from Keanu. That was amazing, yeah. Certainly well received by the gal gallery anyway. Yes, it was. Just a very accurate bowl, wasn't it? He <laughs> didn't have a lot of room to play with it. 15 apiece. Two to play. So Fimba back on his forehand again. Certainly a side of the green he's employed well this this whole game. Massive in this. Pretty good effort from Maddie there. Sorry, just rejoining you. It's 
spent some time outside and took in a couple of bowls from the other semi-final where the Australian pair of Kiddos and Graham picked up two shots and they lead now 17-11 after 14 ends. I've turned that game around, Robbie. Yeah, they've come from the clouds, so really, it's um, a massive swing. Yeah, massive swing. I think um, the TAB would be reasonably disinterested in them winning the event. They might have opened it, I think, 17-1. to 1. I don't think we'll beat the 81, <coughs> 81 winners last year, though. Yes, I uh, went sending the field through to the tab. I, I did note that uh, defending champs from, uh, yeah, they were actually a, a sort of last minute replacement last year, that team they as were, well. Yeah. And they were more than happy to come back and defend their gong this year, but we have a different name on the trophy as Finn McGuigan just. Lovely little shoulder off the front. Not that he needed that's it. That's feather touch. But, yeah, he didn't need any more of the bowl, that's for certain. Just a cracking time to play that, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a huge end here. I suspect that's going to be narrow. That hand's enormous out there. Oh, we wishing he could have that one back, Matthew. But Ray's drawn well done here. I think he'll be bullish to at least get second here. Puffs the cheeks out. Always courteous teammate. Always. Uh, yeah, I think if you were going to say spray at least, it's probably at that stage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they didn't appear to have a stoush anyway. No, he's very relaxed. Ray Martin. Yeah. He, the way he's gone, I think he'd keep the spray pretty subtle. So, come with me, mate. Get on my shoulders. That's right. He'll get them out. He'll back himself to get them out of this as well. But Keanu Darby's got other ideas. Looking to tidy it up. Tuck that white around the corner. Oh, that's massive, though. Sort of changes things somewhat. Does give Ray the option of perhaps playing weight. Might get all three. Will Keanu regret fattening that target up? It's on the way. I think it was on his forehand. I'd... Yeah, it was on his forehand, yeah. He could wait. Didn't turn an inch. No, it did not move at all. <laughs> I thought, yeah, oh, probably, that's tight. <laughs> was. Probably really, really needs to change this up now. He's well, I suppose you... That's a nice home. That's a lovely home, because you're filling your boots at the same time. Like you Basically, you wouldn't have game this end if... Uh, Big bowl here for eight. Two of them, yeah. On the way again, big weight. Oh, that's a bad result. Uh, that is Mayday. Five down at present. This game has turned on a knife edge. I mean, he's going to have to draw if it's next. Well, oh, it may not even kill. So. The way that ball's sitting with the jack... It's particularly ugly. I do hope Keanu was trying to put on block then. I think he was, yeah. Imagine going for a block, only getting five, and then dropping six on the last thing to lose. <laughs> He'd be filthy. <laughs> I think he must draw you. Yeah. Even if you, you get fourth, it keeps you alive. I think Rough yeah, chance. Down that open hand, there is enough turn there to I just know. play nice dead weight. It, it was interesting. I sort of commented that whether Keanu would regret fattening that up. There was no way Ray was attacking until Keanu put that there. That's right. And yeah. I was bullish that Ray would draw the shot on his backhand. So it, it was certainly a good idea looking at how things are lining up here. 
But I just think the way the Jack's sitting behind the shot bowl. It just seems a long way out to the uh, out of bounds peg there, doesn't it, on that camera view? Certainly weighing up the angles, though. So. If it was you, Robert, I'd be saying, get up there and draw it, son. But you're not required today. No, and I probably wouldn't draw that either. I'd try. <laughs> Especially if you're asked nicely. Yeah. So, a big bowl. In the context of the fixture, and he's going to be going quick. He's got the big stick out. So, that is four. Boundary four. And that is an enormous time to pick it up for the Keanu Derby side. I just did not see that coming. Did I make you hottie? <laughs> no. I was just thinking, oh, this game's so nip-tuck. And I was actually thinking about the TAB odds, really. Thinking about what sort of liability they'd have on Pearson and Martin, who opened quite long. Mm. And, uh, like but just thinking, oh, you know, they probably could well be there, but wow, that's just turned around, mate. So four there was just an absolute game changer. And now chasing their tail, the uh, Pearson and Martin team, they will be ruining that 17th end. I mean, there's never a good time to drop a four, but that was particularly poor timing. Matty Pearson not doing the board in protest. So, let's see, Finbar with his first has touched the jack. Can assure you that the centre lines are straight today. After some uh, technical issues last week with the chalk. A nice start from Matty. It does you know, give them a hope. I think crucially here for Matty, he just can't play a short bowl just at be all. Be passed, be passed, yeah. Just got to give Ray a chance to, you know, move a jack or... I think they'd be... The only way they'll probably get this four is trailing the white, I'd say. I don't think they'll get a chance just to run a bowl off. No, no I don't think they'll be able to necessarily get four inside fin bars the way these conditions are with that breeze really coming into things now and saying that they come this way we have seen numbers dropped from both sides so definitely he's uh, out on a whitish line and here it comes in now gets a clap from Ray Martin but it will be the shot Oh, but he's played this so well. Just climb that. Oh, it's a lovely, just such a great spot, though. This bowl just has to be passed. It's well played. They give us right a chance now. Definitely. Just be looking to put another bowl handy around the head. If he happens to go past and cover those two orange bowls. It's 
So, if you're Ray, when do you try and do it? Like, do you set it up first? Um, do you try and just get another catcher and then, or do you just try and get no, down I, on your forehand? And be, I think definitely play it now. Um, I think it's pretty obvious to pick up what they're doing. So, yeah. Keanu is trying to cover those two balls then, so... Okay. Second shot, maybe? Not sure. One, sure. A, one and a half. Bud Jackson, Keen Bowles, what you're talking us through is 78 for Walker 2 at the cricket yesterday. In the background, I can hear. So Ray's out if it's two. I suppose he draws another one here. Yeah. We're worried about Dragon Jacks. Forgot about doing it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. Probably another reason why we are here and they aren't here. <laughs> I didn't even enter, mate. <laughs> way too deep for me here. But we can't just... Oh, it's a, another one. Wowee. So we're, we're thinking this... May well be three. As it looks like Lawson and Grantham hold maybe a couple of shots on rank four. A big role for Keanu Darby here now. Particularly if it is three. Do you go up the middle and hope to rip one out? Wow, yeah, that's... Sucks them in. Deep breaths. He's quick, isn't he? Neither here nor there, really. So Ray can probably draw for a draw. Well, even if he does touch the white for a touch win. Touch the white for the win, I think. Maybe it's the only thing is that the way that Finbar bowl's sitting on the outside there. Oh, he would just be drawing, but I'd say any touch is a bonus. My word. Either way, absolute classic semi-final, yeah. Ebbs and flows throughout. And uh, thanks for joining us. It's on the way. Certainly on the wider side. And it's gone through and it'll be three. It won't be enough for Ray Martin and Matt Pearson and Ray, who's so good in the clutch. It just unfortunately travelled through a yard there. Certainly a game that got away. It was definitely one that got away there. So they'll go on to contest the final of the Stoke Stakes. And in the other semi-final, I can tell you at the moment, it is very close. With Shannon Giddos, the Australian, looking to draw the shot. They've got a lead of five at the present time. And oh, one moment, please. So they lead by five. Tony Grantham's picked up the mat, so they will score the 16th end, the Lawson combination. Either way, we'll uh, sign off here on the televised game. We'll get back to you on our Facebook posts with who our finalists are today. And the coverage will resume shortly after, say, around 2.15 or near offer. Uh, thanks so much, Robbie Reed, for joining us in the, the central commentary position here. Uh, yeah, enjoyable game, and as you say, one that one that got away, but one that was hopefully entertaining for everyone at home. So if you're in the Nelson region, come down, Turf Hotel Stoke Stakes.
Stoke Bowling Club, 18A Ranui Road. Brendan Hodson and Robbie Reid will be back later on. Thanks so much.
Sometimes we're not ourselves There's no one I can turn to
Welcome back to the coverage of the Turf Hotel Stoke Stakes from the Stoke Bowling Club in Nelson. I'm Brendan Hodson, joined by Blackjack 57, Kirsten Edwards in the central commentary position. How are you going, Kirsten? Yeah, well, thanks, Brendan. How have you enjoyed the tournament so far? Yeah, it's been great. Some excellent uh, bowls being played so far. Um, those last semi-finals were super close. Yeah, they were superb, and off the coverage there was a remarkable finish to the Gary Lawson against Shannon Giddo's game where Giddo's were two ahead with two ends to play and when he played his last ball six down including uh, three bowls that were no more than a foot away and Shannon Giddo's drew the absolute shot itself without touching anything which meant they were three up playing the last and they won the fixture against Gary Lawson and Tony Grantham so they find themselves in the big dance here and uh, yeah, what a, a first tournament out of Australia. Shannon Giddo's had to get a passport to come over here. He never left Oz, so they've been pretty impressive, Kirst. Yeah, they have. I didn't realise that he hadn't been here before, so <laughs> that is very impressive considering uh, how quick these greens are running at the moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he kept saying to me how novel it was to have a bowl leave the rink. Um, obviously, the lines are a little bit tighter over uh, in there and a different sort of surface, so... No, nah, they've been uh, a welcome addition to the tournament, really. Um, went home for a wash last night, come back down and enjoyed the festivities and, and have really got into the spirit of the tournament, which is great. But equally impressive, I suppose, is this other young side. Um, you know, obviously guys that are in the fringe of international stuff, I'm sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, their semi-final was one of ebbs and flows. And I think Ray Martin and, and Matt Pearson would feel like it was the one that got away, to be fair. Um but, you know, they had, a, they had a few chances down the stretch and couldn't make it stick. So looking forward to a good final here as Finbar plays his third and runs into a short one. I have to say, advantage Australia early doors. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Keanu seems to be in some kind of touch lately um, off the back of the inaugural, inaugural uh, North East Valley mixed pairs. So um, having a really good run there. Yeah, a little bit of pressure for Keanu, I suppose, as well, because... His uh, teammate in that event, Taylor Bruce, came here and, and won last weekend's stakes. And, you know, we'll see if we can, if he can do the same in the North East Valley form stacks up, I guess. Yeah, that's right. And obviously an exciting tournament. The Valley, a bit of a change and yeah, a mixed bowls there. And I suppose just like us, the, the time comes for, for singles events. And, uh, yeah, a, a, a big change and obviously a tournament that was well received. Yeah, it looked like some uh, great bowls played across that weekend. I watched a wee bit of the live stream and um, certainly Taylor and uh, Keanu seemed to be just a little bit above the rest um, most of the weekend, so um, proved the uh, winner at the end. Yeah, and I guess it's shown that you know, those, they have both of them can sort of play on all surfaces as well. Um, you know, the valley probably a little bit slower than here and you know, a little bit different, whereas here, I think this afternoon we can expect, particularly as this rink gets played on a bit more, a lot of turn. But what a bowl there from Keanu Derby. Great way to get started in this fixture. So this is Shannon Giddos, who uh, will be a new one for most of our Kiwi followers, but no doubt got a, a following in Australia. And as I say earlier on, just... The, one of the best bowls I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Clubhouse absolutely erupted when he played that. Just uh, respect for a great shot, really. Yeah, that's right. I notice he's in a Raymond Terrace uniform, I think it is. So is, is that where he plays? I believe so, yeah. Slightly tighter line this time from Keanu here. If he clears the front one, he's only got their own bowls in the run. Ultimately, probably not quite there. And how did you enjoy last week, Kirst? Obviously, yeah, it was not great. quite the chocolates. <laughs> yeah, not quite the chocolates, but we had an uh, enormous game with uh, Joe and Val in the semi-final. And, um, yeah, no, it was just a great weekend all round. Um, great final. Um, I guess that would be the final you would have picked on paper. So... Um, just, yeah, um, Taylor and Amy, to me, seemed the best pair of the weekend. So I was, yeah, really thrilled for the girls to um, run away with the chocolates. And, um, yeah, Amy's in some kind of form as well. Um, you know, Taylor, we all know, is obviously in the form of her life. Um, but, yeah, Amy's playing super as well at the moment. So <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. We touched on that earlier, how I suppose, you know, of that team. Uh, you know, Amy's got a, a bronze at Glasgow and 
and that's like the worst achievement out of <laughs> <That's right. laughs> some some very uh, some careers littered with titles. So great to assemble that sort of field here, and of course uh, three of the four being Nelsonians as well. But Keanu wouldn't want to get to the back edge of that first white one, but that's okay. Not quite sure if he'll get second shot with it though. I have noticed sort of the Australian style with the way Shannon plays. Uh, he's looking to um, you know push through things and. Yeah, and, that's right. And sit and stay a little bit, which come a little bit unstuck yesterday when it was breezy. Is the sort of just coming to terms with the conditions and yeah, I think they're quite fond of attacking. Yeah, they are, and um, something they do very well. Um, I guess on the screen out here, you probably can do it a little bit more, but on the green out the back, you know, d just when the afternoon breeze comes in, it's and it's flying. It's a pretty hard shot yeah. to <laughs> not not something I'd be trying myself. Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, Block bash, I suppose, or <laughs> draw drive. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's. But I think they've certainly enjoyed the experience, and it's just great to you know, add a little bit of flavour as well, like a few narratives and people catching up with them and talking about the game over there. I think Glenn McDonald's been invited to a tournament over there now, so I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he'll take them up on that. <laughs> Absolutely, and you must be um, stoked as sort of the chief. Uh, of the men's tournament, um, you know, being in a position that you have to sort of turn people away. Um, I know you had just a, so much interest for this event. Yeah, a huge amount. And when we started this event, we sort of went to Facebook and took indications of interest and assembled the field from there. And probably 80% of those people have returned most years. And, you know, the odd one misses one, but we try and get them back. It's just a loyal, supportive, supportive group of people that, Obviously good players, but compatible off the park as well, and it's got a great culture for a competition, really. Yeah, that's right. What a great shot Super there from shot. Jake Graham. Started off um, <laughs> mighty fine game so far. Yeah. So it's 1-0 at present. It's Keanu Darby and Finbar McGuigan. As Finbar looks to respond to a neat opener from Jake Graham. Yeah, it's handy stuff. Yeah, very good position there. He's been mighty impressive for him. I touched on it with Robbie before, but probably one of the leads of the tournament for me and just an unflappable sort of character. Can play all the shots. I mean, it's a luxury for Keanu to have someone like that off the front that seen him bang a few heads open. <laughs> yeah, that's and, uh, right. Yeah, but once again, there'll be two teams that aren't frightened to attack. But, yeah, just Jake would be disappointed with that one, pulling up a little short. A completely different... Uh, environment for these boys as they, you know, the bowls leaving the rink and things like that but geez they've adapted so well and I suppose it just shows the level of depth in Australia yeah absolutely and um, I guess I guess for these boys coming over here and learning the track so quickly it just shows you how good they must be in Aussie um, must be frightening oh that's a great shot there from Finbar McGuigan back toucher but yeah I sort of I joked with Shannon last night that I assume it's like cricketers in India. There's so many that just sort of play cricket in the street with a tape ball that never actually play organised cricket that could be anything. And you know, just the depth over there, it's something frightening as we see Jake on his forehand. He appeared to dislike it early on. And yeah, he will be over. But ultimately not awful. Yeah, there's a few more um, Australian-based players um, coming in today for the Nelson Premier Force tomorrow, so it'd be good to see what kind of flair that adds to their event. My word, yeah. Headlined by, I suppose, Gary Kelly. That's right. Uh, Corey Wedlock and Sean Ingham. So good on Damian McGee for going out of his way to, to bring that sort of talent over here. He's had a relationship with Shannon McElroy for a long time. I think Shannon's actually heading up north for the christening of Damo's children and Shannon's a godfather so oh wow that's, that's pretty cool yeah that's very cool and yeah that, it's I suppose that's a great part of the game isn't it some of the friends you can make and Keanu's played this well just slides by So the jack just concealed here at the moment somewhat. Shannon Giddos doesn't play too many short ones. No, they like to give their balls a chance, that's for sure. 
Keanu's enjoyed the backwards hat today as well, hasn't he? I've <laughs> just noticed that myself, <laughs> actually. fashion piece. Well, it seems to be not affecting his bowls too much. <laughs> Might get a sunburnt nose, perhaps. Oh, what a great try looking to set the bowl off there. It's probably worth a couple. You can probably pop it through that gap. Mm. So we'll have a selection of commentators throughout this final, just a few uh, different guests around the place, but what a bowl here from Shannon Giddos, which oh, what has... A shock. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly got the clubhouse going. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, a bit of Walton Matilda played in the club rooms last night. Uh, <laughs> unofficial national anthem, I suppose. That's well, the best thing about these tournaments, the amount of fun that um, all the players have and get involved in. Um, everybody's just so friendly with each other. It's great. Yeah, I think this morning the uh, clubhouse noise was pretty minimal. A few participants sleeping in after a big day yesterday. So I expect that we will pick up a bit of background noise from a very appreciative crowd of the action that's in front of them today. Keanu Darby just on the wide side there. Had a lovely wait to turn the white ball over once. He did. We see a switch of hands, I suspect. Yeah, it's got that look about it, hasn't it? <laughs> You've called that well. So he'll try the backhand for the first time here. It's not a mile away, I don't think. No, oh, it's just it's slightly on the wide side. Yeah, it's certainly blowing around out there a little bit now, so... Oh, yes, it's um, very, very trying conditions, but you wouldn't really pick it from the stand of the bowls there. No, that's right. We've had a good crowd of locals in today. I see uh, a lot of bowlers, but also a lot of non-bowlers that have come along and uh, a couple of uh, friends of mine that just love the atmosphere that yeah, these they bowls do. bring and I think yeah, they're both active cricketers at the moment but they're just thinking geez I can't wait to take up this game and obviously not every event is probably it's, has the same social program as you know, some of these major events but I guess it just shows that you know, putting on things like this can generate interest in the game in general Yeah that's right and um we have certainly seen a lot of the uh, local cricket team um, over the years, um, but mostly when we've had you know either major tournaments or all the short fl format, the bowls three five, um, they're pretty keen on watching that for a number of years. Yes, well, I suppose on that you're uh, a part participant in the the Twilight League now. I am, yes. Yeah, which is uh, everyone's had a bit of a taste of, and I'm sure it's something that will only get better o over the course of the the six weeks. Is it? Yeah, six weeks. Um, Amy and I aren't playing this week because I'm playing in the uh, Nelson Premier Fours this week. But um, back up for the two nights uh, next week. So oh, yeah, nice. we'll see how that goes. And so you play one length and one direction. That's right. Yeah. So I suppose as people start to click onto that, we should see a reasonable standard. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I know for Amy and myself, we sort of only had half a dozen ends of um, practice on that rank with those bowls um, heading into that game. So. Hopefully, um, as the weeks go on, the standard improves a little bit. Yeah, it was uh, certainly a product that generated a lot of interest from bowlers, and often it is bowlers that will watch bowls, but I suppose it's a, a different sort of market that they're looking for, uh, Bowls New Zealand, and, and promoting that. Yeah, that's right. I think the key thing is they're trying to promote diversity and showing that anybody can, you know, have a crack at the game, and yeah, I think they you know... At least um, trying trying something new and yeah, see where it heads. Anyone can have a crack at the game. It's easier to say that when you've got two blackjacks in your team, mate. <laughs> 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 what a great shot there from Finn Barmagwigan. Like just such a neat set up here. Yeah, he's certainly seeing it well at the moment. Yeah, when he's really got the ability to burn off off of the front like that. And uh, you know, I see Mike Coonahan around today, and there's some New Zealand teams due to be selected. Uh, he wouldn't be a complete bolter, would he? 
Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I'm not sure um, what kind of squads they're they're picking um, or how many people, um, but you certainly got to you know think that guys like this are knocking on the door. So Jake Graham uh, struggling to find the centre line there, and Fimbo will be really looking to screw the knife here. Yeah, a little turn of his bowl just past. Be happy with. That's been my mantra today. When you're on on it anywhere past, you get a clap. <laughs> which is something that you've probably told me playing mixed beers, but I don't get past very often. And uh, a fair effort here, and I just he would, we're probably wishing that he just had another foot to just tidy it up a little. Yeah. It kind of does make the little forehand draw trail look quite attractive to get us here, I'd say. Yeah, it does, but at least he's finished in this, you know, he's got consistent line there, he's finished on the same line as that oh, bowl, so. Absolutely, yeah, and, and play there for sure. Sometimes in the afternoon breeze gets up, that arriving weight is really tricky. So you do kind of get to a point where you have to make a decision about what kind of weight you're going to play with. Okay, yeah. Well, I haven't really played a great deal here since the greens were resurfaced. Uh, seemingly pretty kind and consistent. Yeah, they're great. Always playing with big weight here. Yeah, and like I say, I just wonder if that's he's noticed it's quite hard to play that arriving weight in the afternoon and yeah. better just to, to get out the big stick. <laughs> Well, yeah, certainly an excitement machine. Yeah. I, I think we're only going to make fools of ourselves try to pick what shot he's going to play at times. Yeah, probably. That's <laughs> and, fair. And that was highlighted in that semi-final when he had two drives in a row and then went and just drew almost a side toucher. So uh, yeah, they play the percentages, they'd, but also back themselves to be able to, I guess, draw their way out of trouble if need be. Oh, yeah. that, that was almost an enormous turnaround in that fixture. So. Yeah, I'm sure it's a bow he won't forget for a while, nor will uh, <laughs> Gary and Tony. <laughs> oh, he's got a bit of the jack through. be interesting to see whether his bow remains in or goes out of play. It did look like it was heading on its way out. Yeah, that, that was my suspicion. And it has indeed been picked up and put above the number three on the bank. So we see Keanu Darby now with acres of room. And the jack is probably two feet off the ditch and right in line with the number as Keanu comes down. And Keanu's just travelled past the jack by probably half a metre. Shannon Giddo's now. I'd say he's two down. So the jack's just at the bottom of your screen there. As this one's on its way. And I tell you what, I don't think this will be his best bowl of the weekend. But he saved one. <laughs> Might be in a long measure for a second, but I'd certainly expect Keanu Darby to capitalise on the space that he's been allowed here. He's got a super smooth delivery, Keanu, doesn't he? He has indeed. He gets in the way very easily, doesn't he? Yeah. And that'll pull up suitably, and it'll be two shots to Darby and McGuigan. So, yeah, an end that I suppose they dominated from start to finish, but <laughs> the, uh, the attacking play of Ghetto is highlighted there by... Allowing himself some space that unfortunately he missed out on uh, you know, really capitalising with. So yeah, uh, Don Ambrose, club president, out there doing the scoreboard for us. Isn't he a super addition to our to our board and doing a great job as the club president? Yes, we're very fortunate he turned up at Stoke from, I believe, North Harbour uh, you know, three or four years ago and didn't take long to immerse himself in the club and yeah, just a really fair president, I'd say. Like, just, he's a just a nice, genuine fella. That's right, and um, decent player as well. Yes, very, very competitive player. So, no, very, very good chap to deal with and very supportive of, of the committee and what we do with these events. So, lovely start there, Finn Bart. Reasonable response here.
I tested Robbie on a little bit of sports trivia today and uh, got one for you here now. And which sport must the ball use not weigh less than 45.93 grams? Oh, it's tricky. Gonna go with golf. Oh, too good, you. I uh, I suspected squash, but yeah, golf. Well done, Kirst. Thanks. Back to the bowls anyway for just a little bit of sport trivia. I'm sure a couple of people at home got that. I just see uh, another f great effort from Jake Graham. He, it's been very exciting to watch this weekend. He's just pretty steady, just draws away. But uh, they're certainly animated on the green as well. And I've yeah. seen it a couple of times. He's uh, been given at hot dogs when Shannon's done good things. When he played the bomb before, he had the hat off, Cracker Jack style. But well played. Finbar, that's superb. Brilliant shot there from Finbar. That's good to see that, you know, that flair and excitement, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, the game's certainly colourful, isn't it? Looks like a Nelson Bay Marlin shirt. Yeah, I think he's Nelson Bay, and that's where he would have played with Blake Signal, I believe, which is sort of the association with coming to the event. They're playing the Nelson Falls together. Oh, yes, of course. With Ray Martin as their skip, so another big week well big three days for Razor coming up yeah it'll be definitely a, a team to be uh, I mean every team in the competition is you know yeah. going to be tough especially over 25 ends it's a very deep field and uh, you know Ray probably ruining the one that got away in that semi-final they, I felt they were on top for the bulk of it um, but as I sort of mentioned to Robbie during that coverage this pair of Keanu and, and Finbar can really just score in punches. And yeah, that was evident with a few of the multiples they picked up. And it looks like you know, they're working hard on building another one here. Yeah, and uh, Keanu, I saw, um, didn't see the whole game, but saw, played an absolute bomb of a shot to sort of peel two bowls off the front of the jack, um, which appeared to be a bit of a game changer that at was that a, point. Oh, I think that well, Robbie had said that they were gone if they didn't play that. I wouldn't say they were gone, but. They were certainly in a world of hurt. And, uh, yeah, I think there were three, to, or, yeah, two down to two up sort of thing. Which is all the ends blend into one now. It's been a long weekend. I've watched <laughs> a lot of lawn bowls. But, yeah, there was, it was certainly classy. And, as I said to Rob, just absolutely maximised the result. Like, you couldn't have wished for a better outcome from that. Yeah, it was just absolutely perfect. So, Shannon Giddo's on the wider side there. They had good dead weight. Keanu really loads up this backswing, doesn't he? He does. Same just, thing every time, though, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's just love, such lovely timing of his delivery. And he's played this one all right. Oh. Just wouldn't want to get on the back end of the zone. A little bit quick, but... He finished in a handy spot. A lovely spot, finish. yeah. And it is. Even though the flag in the background there doesn't show a hell of a lot of breeze, it's certainly a factor out there. There's a shot on here for Shannon if he can just get onto the back ends of the shot ball. It's not too bad. Oh, what a great shot. That's yeah, very classy stuff, isn't it? And right back to the Jake Graham bowl. Just phenomenal adjustment there on his first as well. Perfect weight. We'll see Keanu search for that bowl. I think so. Two seconds there. It's certainly evident on the, the start of this game that the class that has got these guys to the grand final of the Stokes Takes, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> so, just thinking that we're going to see Keanu attack. It's the backswing. Here it comes. Just outside the line at the moment. Chance off that. Always got the jack. And it has left the rink. So, I'm sorry, Kirst. Your sixth instant has just turned into seven. No worries. <laughs> it's an enjoyable watch so far. <laughs> it is a great game of lawn balls so far. And it's just, uh, 
yeah, no one's necessarily on top, I wouldn't have thought, but um, yeah, Fimba, for me, has probably started the pick of the leads. And yeah, I if, agree. He, if he can continue to dominate that battle, uh, yeah, it will, they'll really need some conversions from Shannon. Um, but yeah, I've seen enough of Jakey this weekend that he'll uh, yeah, have something to say about that too. Uh, Jake said he, he's actually spent quite a bit of time in New Zealand, big uh, snowboarding, etc. fan, so a lot of time down in the deep south. Oh, is Very that right? It's cheaper to come here than to wherever the snow is in Australia, which I didn't realise they had snow. They got enough other things. They do. Kangaroos and all sorts of palava, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyable man. But once again, a lovely start from Fimbo. He's just had good position all day. Yeah. When he's missed, he's missed past, and sort of um, yeah, mentioned earlier about Tony Grantham and that and their fixture, and he probably just was very dead weight, and it did actually even vulnerable, even though they they found a way to get out of that, but. I think on these greens here at the moment, because they're running so nice, there's a lot of conversions. The jack's moving most ends. Yeah, that's right. Um, especially in these, you know, these with these guys that attack a lot, and even uh, across the women's last weekend, in fact, the, the jack was moving around all over the place. So, just shows you that how good the green is running. Handy again here. Yeah, lovely bowl there. That neat weight. Just hung around with the help of a very fine shoulder there, but in, the, in a lovely area. This looks like it's tracking in nicely, Kirst. Sure does. <coughs> Just shot itself any second. Oh, this is shaping just to be a phenomenal game of bowls. The overall quality is neat. If you're just tuning in, how it works here at Stoke is Stakes Day is just the top eight players out of 32. No plates or anything like that. All the money's in the top eight in the main event. We're liking it to the PGA Tour or golf tournaments where you miss the cut. You are cut. So Fimbar here is just looking for that little rest. Oh, he's tucked the wide around the corner, but... Yeah, one maybe two down, but a nice setup. Yeah, again, just lots of balls in the area, playing with handy weight all the time. So looks like Shannon's requested a change of hand from Jake here, ducking for a little bit of cover. It looks quite clear where the jack's going to go. <coughs> Well, that's pretty handy. Probably would have liked that to run another foot or so, but handy home there nonetheless. He's got a pretty good home there, Kirst. Yeah, that's right. Very good exhibition of lead bowls, I think. across there a bit now. County's indicated that one might be out of bounds. May not be too. Mm, that's pretty good stuff. Yeah, very tidy. And I suppose it gets to the point that you know, maybe the shot that they've been trying to defend it was actually a shot for themselves where they might be able to maximise as well. So it's uh, certainly an interesting situation the way this end's shaping up. Yeah, it is. I think County will be wanting to make some movement with this bow. It appears to be slightly on the wide side for me. Yeah. With that speed that he's playing. But really interesting to see if we see any change here from Shannon. Not sure if it's one or two there. Yeah. It is a, a difficult one to try and pick. He wants one roll out of the back bowl, so it would indicate that it would bring something else in. 
the, the details that Jake gives him and the, the hand signals, he's very clear and very thorough. Yeah, he is. They obviously know each other well, these boys. Yeah. Not really sure of the background there, obviously. And the indication is that they are at different clubs, so maybe someone in the, in the comments on the, the Facebook page can fill us in on that. But this is just tracking superbly. Oh, what a just careful. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal shot. We'll have to see what the damage is one way or the other, really. There's quite a few bowls in there that are all very close. Kelly just wandering up to have a look. Yeah, no indication from anyone out there what's going on, so we'll be relying on possibly the way Keanu plays this shot to give us an idea. I'm sure that he'll be sort of mindful of... Looks like he's playing with weight. Indicate it might be more than one then. Good chance here. Close. Oh, a very unfortunate result there, but... They are one down, but it's hard to see it getting much worse anyway. Just a draw here for Shannon trying to make two. Not the easiest, the way that things sit now that the jack's moved. No, that's right, it was a good shot from Keanu and it appears he's limited some of the damage. So he's going to try and navigate a path down the backhand side where there is a little bit of traffic from where the Jack used to live on the move again, wasn't it? That's right. I think it must be a nice feeling for the players knowing that you can draw around bowls on the surface at the moment. Like that's going to come back to almost the line of the Jack, probably just heavy, but uh, it's gone around quite a lot of traffic there with a modern bowl, which is probably more a thing from yesteryear and the classic two days or whatever. Mm, that's right. So four ends played here and it's 3-2 to Keanu Darby and Finn Barmagwigan over Shannon Giddos and Jake Graham. I'm not sure whether you caught much of the first game this morning, Kirst, but Shadow McElroy, Gary Lawson was obviously an interesting one, and I noticed that, that Mike Kernan was keeping an eye on that. Was, you know, particularly, I suppose, contentious that I read in the newspaper that uh, you know, they were talking about Shannon not being in the national team for the world champs, and you know, do you think there's a path back there for him? Is he going good enough? Oh, he's always going good enough. I just, um, you know, it's probably a situation, you know, with a few people need to put their heads together and, um, yeah, I mean, certainly as a club, we'd love to see Shane back in, in the national side and, you know, former world champion and, oh, he's, a, you know, just a great player, great guy, very compatible um, and, yeah, I mean, certainly if it's something that Shane wants to do, then um, I hope somebody can find that path for him. Yeah, that right. I suppose his availability was on and off a little bit through that COVID period, obviously, as a business owner here locally, and um, yeah, it's a, it, but no doubt would have been a tough one to see a world champs go by without being able to defend your singles crown as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I guess particularly sitting back and watching those results from the, the men's world championships um, probably even made it a little tougher <laughs> as well. That's right. What a great start here from Jake Graham, who wasn't too happy with his first one and made amends, but. He's been set off by Finbar, and it's just unlucky that the ball sort of flopped the other way after it made contact there. Yeah, that's right. I 
but just you know um, back back with Shannon you know that Amy and Shannon got a, two beautiful wee boys and who knows we might see Amy in the national team the way <laughs> she's going I, I did mention that yesterday to uh, Kenny I said I'll do the babysitting <laughs> my, uh, I'm sure your wife would love to hear that yeah we oh Amy's my first cousin so I suppose the I don't know how the cousin thing works, but they're good young boys, you know, they call me uncle, so that's the right maybe with that. Yeah. But what a great shot here. Fimba, what a lovely, lovely leading. And, you know, as we see, that's one guy that might read his name in the press, I'm not sure, but he's certainly putting in performances. That's right, he's always there or thereabouts, isn't he? Interesting, because he obviously played with you know, Seamus Curtin for a good chunk of the start of his career. And, yeah, you know, they had some good success at things and played each other in a final of the under twenty sixes, I think maybe. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, you know, sort of not coming out of a shadow, but Seamus has probably was afforded a lot of opportunities um, earlier on, and, and Finbar's taken that little bit longer to to sort of really emerge in, at this level. Yeah, that's right. I'm not really sure where in the world Seamus is um, at the moment, but haven't um, seen him in any tournaments for for a wee while now. So obviously taking a wee bit of a break from the game in, in New Zealand anyway. So brief it there. Yeah, that was a super effort. It, it is an endo that's shaping up a little bit untidily for the Australians. Keanu will be looking to add to that sort of herd at prison. Keanu will be pretty keen to leave those few gaps there <laughs> as well. So, yeah. Covering count, perhaps, just passed. Yeah, well, he certainly passed and uh, gets an appreciative clap from his lead. We've seen him make good corrections, Jake. Oh, Shannon, sorry. Uh, this time, it's much the same bowl, so... Imagine there are maybe a couple now. No, yeah, I'd say it's probably three. Be interesting to see if he decides to, to attack or try and correct again. That's right. And Keanu looking to add a possible fourth. So noticing the ball's really turning late, but I suspect it's just the weight's on the high side again. Certainly had no issues getting back to the line of the jack. Straight onto the mat, so he knows what he needs to do. Yeah. They're quick, these Aussie boys, aren't they? <laughs> it's madness, isn't it? Not sure if he's going to get back. All right, well, there we go. There's shaping up to be the first major multiple of the game. The Aussie boys having an end off here. But probably somewhat lucky that Keanu hasn't really made them hurt. Yeah, that's right. And Keanu would be pretty keen to make this one count. Against these quality pairings, these bonus bowls are. Oh, so big, so big. Yeah, they're pro I could probably think back even that first game this morning of a few that, that Shan missed out on. Um, and you lose a game down the stretch by very little, so. That's right. Well, I did see most of that game, and um, it was an excellent display, really, from both, um, well, from all four players, but particularly from Gary and Shannon. <laughs> When one found it, they absolutely found it, didn't <laughs> yes. they? Yeah, the back end of it probably got a little bit scratchy, particularly off the front. But, yeah, they just, the standard, and I suppose that's typical of Tony, and he, he's sort of renowned for that. But when he burns, he really, if he kicks one there, the next one follows it and follows it and follows it. So, uh, yeah, they were, but then, so they're by the wayside, gone by the wayside now, so. Yeah, that's right. And um, Tony, you're right, once he gets going, he just keeps burning, he's sort of, I guess that's why he's one of the best singles players going around. Yes, well, he's actually got a reasonable attacking game that no one really has got to see this weekend. But, yeah, um, very, very good singles record. handy start again there. I can't 
can't think of too many instances of Finbar missing his line. He just seemed to have batted that second yeah. line as well. Yeah, that's right. Good, good line player and. I mean, I, th- I think typically, sort of when he's in back in back home in Wellington, I think he sort of skips most things he plays in. So, just shows you he's got that all-round game. Not a mile away. <laughs> wow. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to correct like that? I'm just chipper that after I spoke about how much the white moves around that it's moved for the last three ends. That's right. <laughs> it's about the first thing I've got right all day. <laughs> I mean, last week when the white was there, it was uh, probably on the line. I think it was a bit of a nightmare by the volunteers that did the lines <laughs> miss target for the final but we've uh, remedied that this week so sorry if that confused a few viewers yeah that's right <laughs> the players were fine so don't worry about them but, uh, yeah, once again he, he's tracking so well here mm. just been interesting to see what outcome he gets if he gets the jack gets it full yes oh, well played through the hole really tidies it up some uh, great leading here the importance of this ball being passed is huge. It's massive, isn't it? You can sort of see the tracks on the green. It looks like he's on a nice one here. Yeah. You're right, it's passed and it's in a good home. Just gives Shannon some opportunities. <laughs> He doesn't normally need too much of an invitation to tuck into a little bit of aggression. Quite unlucky there, uh, Keanu. He uh, played that pretty perfectly, really. What a shot here, Kirsten. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much, Chris, for joining us. I think this is your last end of our rest and rotation period. We can't have everyone burning out in the commentary box. That's but, uh, right. We'll leave that to me. But obviously, uh, well done on a successful weekend last week as, as the organiser of the women's tournament. And, and thanks for all your help this weekend. But, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed co joining us in the commentary booth. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'll um, hand you over to, to somebody who's probably got a little more experience with this kind of thing. As I said, we've got a change. But uh, introduce the new uh, co-caller, James Pugh. Welcome, James. Yeah, thank you, Brendan. Uh, nice to be joining you today. Cracking final yet? <laughs> it's been a great day of lawn bowls today. And uh, how's your tournament go? Oh, it had had its ups and downs, mate. It's uh, grabbed a couple of wins, and but we. Probably a bit slow the blocks, to be fair. Yeah, I suppose you have to get on to things early, but you know, these both these sides here were, were reasonably dominant through section play early, and you know, the, the Aussie boys actually struck a little bit of trouble through the middle and lost to Glenn McDonald and Josh Boyd and sort of had to really uh, work hard to qualify, but here they are in the big dance, and 
entertaining game so far. Absolutely. So we see at the moment that one shot to the salmon coloured bowl of Finbar McGuigan and his skipper's just trying to find a hole to add to it. It's a very good effort. Another couple of feet on that would be good. So they've got a nice position here, the Australian base side. I think they have noted that they've probably got the bulk of the bowls at the back of the rink. It's just a case of, uh, I suppose, moving the, the jack from behind the shot bowl without it necessarily truck and trailering. Yeah. But then equally, they've sort of only got one bowl on the head as well. Yeah, it just does look good for the uh, forehand draw here. Yeah, just... Roll it over. Yeah. Play for a couple of feet. And you're into Nelson for the Spokes Premier Fours for the next couple of days at least? Well, hopefully go three days, but judging by the weekend's form, probably uh, might just be two, but and, uh, we'll see. It was a, a tournament you made the final of last year. Yeah. It's an absolute carnival of bowls in Nelson at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's good for the region and uh, everyone gets along and So he's going okay. big way, which big is way. bullish. Missed on the other side. Couldn't quite get back, but aggressive play there really. Yeah. I mean they had I assume they had second and uh they certainly didn't have third, fourth, fifth or sixth. No. <laughs> bullish. Very, very bullish. But they'll score again. The young Kiwi side, they'll get one. Darby and McGuigan. Jeez. Darby's had a good fortnight, hasn't he? <laughs> just, just saying to Kirsten about how cause he played with Taylor Bruce at North East Valley and got the chocolates there. And then she came here and won the women's stakes. So we're you know, seeing if the North East Valley form stacks up, I Jeez, suppose. It is at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, no pressure there. But Finbar's certainly been going pretty good in this lead battle. Commented before, he, he seldom misses his line. Always finds the centre line, and uh, from what I've seen this weekend, he's been probably one of the best leads going around, so... Good to have the Australians here as well. It's, uh, <laughs> geez, Ghettos, especially in the first, uh, the second game this afternoon, was spectacular. You know. Yeah, one of the best bowls I've ever seen. To uh, <laughs> one special. Not really enough superlatives to try and explain that one, but just absolute like tournament changer. They were looking like being two down playing the last. Yeah. Maybe worse. There were six down, which we made it four, but once he decided to draw, there was probably no doubt that he was going to beat the back ones because they Absolutely. were sort of you know, four or five metres away. But he had two down in the last of a game that they had sort of bossed throughout would have been a bit unjust. So, yeah. But an unbelievable result. So the Jack Graham on the back end. I see these boys are off to Nelson tomorrow as well, playing the Premier Force. Yeah, they're uh, picking up Blake's signal and, and Ray Martin. Tidy out for that too. Yeah. How? What order would you play that side in? There's a few options. I'd, just, I'd just probably just draw it out of a hat, mate, and <laughs> see how it lands, you know. Yeah, I spoke with Ray. He said he was quite keen on leading, which is hard to imagine the way his conversion shots were. Yeah. Today, I think he's a great force skip, and I think, you know... Very, very good put, two ball player. Yeah, Ray. if he wants to put runs on the board and, and make sides, I think it would be important that he's skipping in teams like that for me. But and events like that, I suppose more so. But you know, obviously with these two boys and also Blake Signal, yeah. there's uh, no shortage of talent. I think Blake might just leave it up to them and say, "Oh, you guys go." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's just looking to hang around here. Gonna slip under, but. Yeah, handy enough so you can... Yeah, you take that. Bit of a breeze out there. Probably not making things that easy. No, there is certainly a, a breeze playing a part. 
but not enormously. A little bit gusty, if anything. Been impressed with uh, Keanu. He's, uh, he's another one that's just knocking on the door for New Zealand sides. And I don't know, is it? Yeah, he's had a couple of cracks, probably age group level. Yeah, certainly been a player that's been on the up for a long time. Yeah. Remember that's I, a good shot. I played him at the under-26 tournament 10 or so years ago. I'm a bit older than him and he's just yeah, young. Yeah, what a man puppy. Oh, he absolutely belted me too. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Was that at the uh, Elmwood Club? Or? No, the, the Burnside Club, yeah. So we see big weight here from Giddos. He doesn't mind going fast. And he's got oh, ball on the jack. And Sorry, mate, there's no overtime here in the commentary box. <laughs> You won't get a pay rise for that one. Paul and Jess completely voluntary here. And then uh, James in, it, in the box. And I suppose just to touch on, on this tournament, a, a popular one on the calendar. Absolutely. And uh, a big ups go to you, mate. And uh, Kirsten and Robbie, Nobby and everyone that just makes this thing happen. So... And without the sponsors, obviously, it's um, it's undoable. Yeah, I think to attract uh, this calibre of field is uh, enormous as well for us, really. Sort of look at it on paper, and there's a number of teams that could be in the mix. Absolutely, and uh, I'd say there'll be a waiting list for this tournament going forward. What a great start here from Fimbo. A new length. We haven't seen the jack on the tee, really. A lot of what has been played in what I'd call no man's land. Yeah, dot to dot. Yeah, I feel it's a suspect that they might have uh, pulled the mat up a fraction, but that would be all. Going through there, Jack. They're nice boys, the Australians. They just, they, the, I was just talking to um, Shannon earlier, just before the final, actually, and uh, he says, uh, I'm booking my leave for next year and he wants to come back. It's the first time out of Australia, actually. Isn't that phenomenal? Yeah, <laughs> bizarre. I, I think he only got his passport on Monday, but. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, he said to me about uh, last night we were having a discussion, it was good bit of a social night here, a bit of music here last night and they, they ducked away and then came back and uh, I thank them very much for coming back and he yeah. was saying that the world's his oyster now that he's, uh, he's got the, the book, the travel yeah. book so... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said that when he left Australia he didn't think it would be to New Zealand but uh, yeah, here he is and I suppose that's one upside, you know, for those guys that it shows that these couple of events here in Nelson in the next well over this period of time is sort of the equivalent sort of money to what they can win in Australia yeah <laughs> and like with all due respect to some of the Kiwis probably Absolutely. without having to run into um, some of the big dogs as well so yeah He's been on the last line here. Yeah, it's just, he might just be going a fraction still. Mm. So, the new length has, I wouldn't say bamboozled everybody, but it's still uh, open to be nailed here. Absolutely. Keanu with the first crack at it really and the, uh, you know, a massive probably period in the game for them if they were to score again yeah. that's sort of opening up a little bit of a margin there yeah it's um, I'm sure Keanu and Fimba will probably be 
have goals in their mind, like score the next three of the four runs and reset and go again. But um, can never underestimate these boys from Australia. Yeah, they they got a big five in the semi final that sort of blew that game apart as well. Yeah, they ma- sort of managed the board from there. Um, so it looks a chance of a super trail here, is he? Yeah, quick, just tear quick. Keanu opting for the cat backwards. What are your thoughts on that, Ojo? <laughs> that has been noted. Is it? Just, as long as he doesn't get a sunburned nose, I think everyone's yeah. fine. It's, I mean, it's not the worst head accessory I've seen this weekend. I think Calvin Budge had a like a, a visor. Yeah. Like, well, I, I, expect, I thought he was at Roland Garros. Yeah. Or, or, the Sharapova visor. <laughs> yeah, all worked at Subway. Yeah. But, yeah, I wasn't sure which it was, but it was a poor look, but... Yeah. He caught a bit of grief about it. Fa- it's not a fashion contest, mate. No. It's, it's like a lovely line here from Shannon Giddos. It just needs to run out. It's certainly on the picture, it appears Jeez. that there's a little bit of a lush area of uh, of probably untrampled bowling green there. It just pulled up quickly. But overall, mate, uh, these tracks are in pretty good order. Oh, excellent. You know, two greens here at Stoke, and uh, it's really important to have, like, two greens that run pretty similar, and uh, a lot of the boys this weekend have definitely noted the fact that they're pretty pretty true and consistent and pretty much run the same. Oh, excellent feedback. Uh, he does a lovely job, Glenn Miller. Keanu's on the way here. Not going to hang around. Just missed the line. Phenomenal weight again. But I suspect that that's probably a little too much room for Shannon the way he played the previous one. So wouldn't be against him drawing this. Yeah, probably saying similar to his last. Probably just add another couple of feet and um, turn his ball up a couple of times. And if not, he's a chance of getting the jack and... Pretty cool customer, this lad. Change of hands. Wow. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. Sorry, my apologies. (laughs) Oh, we'll (laughs) see. So they'll score again. The Derby and McGuigan combination and uh, starting to open up a handsome lead. Just hoping to see what number gets turned over on the board there. One only. Good start oh, from Thumbar. Oh, lovely opener. Jeez, Hasn't that tight. done some turning in the last two or three metres of travel there? Yeah. Really true. Sideways. Yeah. Reminds of the good old days. Yeah. Don Carter. Classic twos or near offer and Absolutely. picking up the mat on the rink next door. <laughs> yeah. Running through the heads and... It's a very handy home. Bit of a change here. Yeah, you'll be pretty pleased with this too. <laughs> 
Uh, sitting it up well again here, the front men. Yeah, absolutely. Tuning up a bit. If he's got... Gee, what a shot this is. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, certainly a round of applause from the gallery for that one. Just never looked like missing, really. Nah, had a nice line the whole way through and with great weight as well. Meanwhile. Mm. Didn't quite make it. Yeah, we're disappointed in that one, Finn Bart. Obviously, no prizes for being short there. The shake of the head indicates he knows it. So we see Jake back on the forehand draw, and he looks like he's played this very well. Yeah, he's going to tidy it up nicely, isn't he? Oh, is he what? It's phenomenal stuff. So they cross over three shots to Jake Graham there with the. Two tone blue bowls. Finn Bar McGuigan with the blue and salmon. Yeah, County's got a bit of a job on his hands here. He's not short sure on options to do, so. Yeah, and it's a couple of holes there. Yeah. Bit of a gust there. I suspect that you'd be hitting. Yeah, you'd be playing decent weight, I would imagine. Under. Yeah. So, so I did think he might have gone a little quicker. Yeah. Especially Take that swing out of it, especially with a bit of breeze around. Didn't have a back wood either, which, you know, you. Yeah, I suppose that pace is a bit more conducive to going with it. I suppose if you belly the jacket, it doesn't really matter. I'll be interested to see what he does here. Yeah, he's got a lot of turning to do to get back, but it's getting into its work now. Once again, I suppose Does he go sharper here? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm somewhat surprised that Shannon wasn't a little bit deeper there, but I suppose he's got the last bowl. Yeah. He's pretty he's focused on this, this one. one. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> Close to one bowl shootout here, but... Yeah. Well, obviously, Shannon's got two, but... Oh, it doesn't appear that the umpire's required anyway. Still within the confines of the ring. But they'll be out in some uncharted territory. And it's a fair effort. Yeah, it's a great shot, this. <laughs> yeah, pro serious player, isn't he? Yeah, he's... Shone it all weekend... Yeah, well, I suppose if you look ahead to next year, these boys will go home and either have won or run second in the tournament. Yeah. Put in New Zealand dollars to check out at the uh, airport somewhere and all the Aussies will be thinking, geez, easy meat going over there yeah. and getting the chocolates. Oh, <laughs> get them over here. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, very, very good response here from Keanu Darby yeah, as well. if he comes back in, yeah, he's close to shot, mate. Yeah, that's oh, amazing stuff from these yeah. guys. Obviously not easy when the jacks off send it like that. What is he here? He's got probably got a couple of seconds. It was close for the second, but Yeah. You hasn't been many ends where the jack hasn't been on the move really. Yeah. And I mean such is the nature of this sort of level of competition, isn't it? A lot of conversions. Yeah. Not very often the ends go by where it's uh not off the centre line, you know. So this will be interesting. I reckon well, you I might be going got decent way. Yeah. That looks to be wide. It was wide. It's so accordingly. Just again, uh, and conceding again, it's a seven point game now. Yeah. Ripping that out for two, I think, would have been massive for them. Yeah.
But if we know anything about the character of Australians, it's... Uh, Never die. <laughs> Never die wondering. No, uh, they'll be in the game for a long way, regardless. And Yeah. But most of the games today have been pretty nip tuck throughout. Yeah. Yeah, I watched the uh, first one at home this morning, and, uh, geez, Shannon played well. Roger started off very, very good, and sadly the uh, my old club mate here at Stoke, Shannon, just didn't have enough pitcher on the tank, so. Yeah, Roger probably the first one to say that just down the stretch he probably didn't win the lead battle. Mm. And, uh, you know, but they, they had opportunities. Obviously, they dropped a five where a weighted shot didn't really go to plan. But yeah. equally, Gary had had a, a very nice result on that as well. So, so we what got to take that here at the and moment. Well, just see what happens. The umpire checks the length, 23 metres. 21 in Australia, seemingly. Caught the Is boys that? out yesterday, yeah. You're looking out the window, mate. Do you reckon it's uh, fair or...? Uh, we can't see the map. I think it's short. Okay. See how good a judge I am. Mm -hmm. What's he going to say? Appears to be out, does it? Yes. Not one wrong for me. This is going well. Taking the tape off to the side to reel up and come to the side with the camera tripod. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, we're just going to wrap it up. Jake on the draw here, looking not badly actually. Yeah, it's handy starter out here. Vimba looking to follow him down. too upset with that. So a short break for me there for refreshments. And come back it looks like Jake's still going pretty good. The way he's sort of gone in the last few wins, it's hard to believe that there is a seven-shot deficit, really. Yeah. Keanu's played a couple of big ones, definitely, in the yeah, last um, three or four ends, you know. So a $10,000 first prize for this event. And uh, whilst I imagine they've probably split in some way, shape or form, it's to see a lot for a yeah, tournament like this. And another great bowl. Superb leading there. Yeah. And just very covering good. up a bit of the jack too. County will be looking to pull out a big one here. Try and build on that 9 2 lead. Halfway. Doesn't appear to be on a bad line here. Just break in there a little bit earlier than what I wanted. Yeah, but I suppose. Looking at the situation there, they're kind of thinking, well, if I keep that weight and get the jackets, 
four, it's hard to get to and potentially takes us to a tennis shot lead, you know. Mm. Certainly, uh, I suppose, when you get to this sort of level, if you get the opportunity to play like telling balls like that, it's maybe worth the risk. Yeah. And it's probably a little bit easier to drop your weight than have to air weight. Yeah. Especially out here at Stoke. Yeah, running pretty free. Yeah. It certainly hasn't got such a hungry line this time. Yeah. But it looks like he's got very good draw weight. Finbar's got a lot of tickets on this. Oh, he won't be upset with that. No, rightly so. My it's word. A, it's a lovely second. Gee. They're quick on the mat, the boys, aren't they? Yeah, especially the Australians, eh? Like, you see the likes of Sheriff and... Particularly Wilson. Yeah, Wilson's another one. He's he looks a bit good here too. A little bit of jack of his own. Oh, wow. Oh, the chance he's made two or three of that. Two and a half, eh? That's a huge bowl. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. No, that's a big difference, you know. It was interesting because Jake, obviously, whilst he appeared interested, he, he wasn't that animated. Yeah. But just get, get back down the forehand draw here, what is he? Yeah, just a neat slice of the white. Yeah. So, a bit of a general meeting here in midfield. Coming up with a plan. It doesn't look... A, it's an interesting position for them, I suppose. If you belted the bunch, you might get the lot, and they've probably got the next best couple. But also, I don't know... It leaves a lot of room as well. You know? Yes. But, yeah, depending on whether it's two or three as well. Yeah. See, that's in the background there. Jake Graham sitting down having a chat with Don Ambrose, the gaff around here, the president. Yeah. But he's no, he's done a great job. He has, he's, yeah. um, he's taken on his role really well and loves the game. It's certainly uh, very enjoyable to spend time with these lads from across the ditch. Yeah. They head all the 16th of November. They're going to have a look around and. Heading up to Wellington and spend a bit of time with Blake and does a really making a holiday of it, so that's good to see. Yeah, good on them. We see the team from the car company, one of the sponsors, check in for a bit of bowls watching for the afternoon, Ben Brownie. Yeah, they make it easy if you're in the market for a vehicle. Just on the high side here. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if it's two or three. Yeah, he's certainly oh, like... You, you couldn't fault the weight that he played with there. Yeah. He gave it a chance and you know, opportunity to sit the back one, you're going to score most probably. So a fair effort, just a bowl wide. But here's an opportunity to fill your boots, I suppose, for Shannon Giddos. He's done well here. Yeah. Really well. Oh. <laughs> Another great ball, and that's going to count. It looks like uh, going to have a multiple here for certain. Three? Going to have a look for the fourth. Well, I had that white one in for sure, but... Did you? We've got a hard angle on a monitor, I suppose, so... Yeah. Oh. Did he just go down to his bed to get his measure? I think he did. That's bad course management, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like that one's... Keanu's one counts here. Yeah. So it'll be just three, I believe. Yeah, we'll get confirmation of that shortly. Just 
Two. Two. Okay. So, Jake Graham reacquainted with the Madden Jack. So do these boys play at the same club in Australia? Or? I don't believe so. Okay. I so think uh, Kirst was saying that this is a Raymond Terrace yeah. kit. Are they the Jets? Raymond, yeah. And then uh, Nelson Bay. Okay. For, for Jake, which is most probably where he and Blake... Blake played out of there when he was over yeah. Sort of ran the cutter there, didn't he? Yeah. So just the opener from Finbar is going to pull up short here. A chance to capitalise it. You know, that, the battle off the front's been good, but the, the tide has turned a little. Uh, yeah. Jake on top for the, the last couple of ends. Yeah. It's, um, I don't think the condition's going to get any easier out there. It's, it appears that the wind's a the lot more gusty yeah. than uh, you look was at this turn late. Uh, just look at this come on. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Yep, impeccable bowling greens here. I know we're biased, but they're as good as any around at the moment. And we're not having to sit here and make excuses for straighteners and things no. like that, which is nice. No. Yeah. So halfway through, nine completed, and I think they'll feel better about just closing that gap there. And yeah. Then, yeah, just if you concede there again, you sort of get into a bit of a hole, but he's tidied that up really yeah, nicely. he's tidy. Yeah, playing some really lovely stuff. Yeah. Finney needs a big one here. Yeah, same for uh, Keanu to work with. Just even if you're missing, just get past. If you're going to miss that, certainly the area. So I suppose we'll most probably see Shannon try and cover and count here a little bit. Yeah, split the jack and Finbar's last one you're going to be scoring, so two jobs and one there. Listen to you here, James. Pretty close to doing that. Yeah, very tidy stuff, certainly. Mounting it. Well, the start of a nice position here. Yeah, it's, tide's definitely turned. I'm looking to find a friend here. Yeah. Wriggled through. That's, I suppose, the danger of playing. Uh, whilst they're great surfaces, they, as they get quicker, it's very hard to play those sort of shots. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I suppose because of the pace, when you do get that shoulder, they almost seem to pick up speed and wriggle yeah. through holes a little bit. Yeah, he definitely had a bit of a, a side win to have to deal with there as well, which um, probably didn't make it any easier oh, for him. He's nice close looking ball in coming in here, but... He wouldn't want to be fattening it up too much. Laid it down. I think we'll see the big stick here from Keanu Derby on the bang. No. He, 
He loads up the backswing, mate. Yeah, he? yeah. I thought he was um, he was tucking into that we for all the ten China. Just all down to the weight now. He knows what he's up to, eh? Yeah. Huge effort. Still going to be two most probably. But a nice save and oh, it must have been appealing to play weight there. Obviously five, but a reasonable target. The way he's hit today as well. Yeah. But yeah, big, big, big. You know, in saying that though, it's still just the one ball on the head for them. I know that it's reasonably close to the jack, but sort of the accuracy that, that Shannon's played with today, that, that wouldn't altogether surprise me to see him try and find a way down that backhand side and, and sit the ball, touch the white, because just in such a nice position to be able yeah. to make a multiple. But equally, the backhand does look reasonably cluttered, but obviously movement's much more suitable that way. Just there, just from the hand out, say, Come in, please. Now he gets down and looks half interested. Must be very close for the second one here. Yeah, you certainly get the impression that it is. Um, the ball had a good look at it. Be probably saying something to the last and. Trying to make the adjustment. See ya. Oh, that's that big backswing again, isn't it? Jeez. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I suppose. Well, that. Just down to the way to get up to the just ducking under. I don't know does, whether that helps or not. <laughs> it may not. Oh. Where now do they go now? Now the measure's at the other end. Oh, my word. <laughs> Can't have pockets. Shorts do come with pockets, though, don't they, <laughs> normally? To be fair, I can't really talk. I, I hate carrying measures. <laughs> don't think you don't in the bag. You don't really like owning measures as a rule, do you? Nah. <laughs> I've got about five of them at home. I don't know where they all belong to, though. <laughs> appears close. I think uh, it was just the one. Fimbo was sort of half gesturing to the umpire and got the impression Jakey said something along the lines of that one wasn't touching as much. You happy and everyone goes home safe. He took Fimbo for being a fair dinkum bloke, as they say, I yeah. suppose.
from the lovely delivery. Used to be on a bit of line here. Yeah, nice correction. Yeah, very good. A different line, not quite as wide, but yeah, he's if he's got the weight, he's probably going to hang around. Yeah, pretty good. They're pretty much favouring that side of the rink much of the game, haven't they? They have. I don't yeah. remember too many down the other side well, um, off the front, but when it's when the skips have had to play there, like, to, like Shannon's played it quite well. Yeah. The um, is there something wrong with the other hand? Because normally when I'm out there, I, I sort of try and favour like the clubhouse side for like shelter reasons, you know, like especially when it's blowing a little bit like this, it's um, probably don't get as much. Effect Bowls affected yeah. why they've been playing down the clubhouse side? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I assume that it's against the breeze. Yeah, okay. And this way, maybe the breeze is finishing them off. I must admit, I've spent a day inside calling off a monitor here, so. Yeah. I've not spent too much time in the middle, but it does look a nice Nelson day. Just quick here. Yeah. I think he knew it. Let's set that one down. Keanu would be looking to jump on here and uh, draw a shot and stop the rot, so to speak. Yeah, it's certainly getting to that point where if they don't score here, then yeah. a, a nice lead sort of has been trimmed up. Fimbar's really enjoying this. Dead weight. Yep. It will be the shot. Real miss. Yeah, it's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> it's been such a gun throughout the tournament. Hit the white spot on there, yeah. Yeah. Keanu looking to go back to back here. It's a oh, sharp. He won't be too upset of that. Sharp again. Yeah. So, looks like it's, it's this 
speak? The green bowl. Yeah. And then Fitmar's looking for two. All four of these boys backing up tomorrow with Nelson, so geez, they won't be going under the down nets for sure. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Rich and his team run a pretty good cutter, and we spend a bit of time in the lead-up to these events and organising the invites and trying to line the fields up somewhat. So Yeah. He's found a, a couple of spots for our guys. I know that... Um, <laughs> So Blake reached out to me about his own side and, and these lads and then sort of passed that on to Richard that Blake was keen. So it's nice to have those players doubling up. But I suppose that's the attraction um, of coming out here. Yeah. Is that you can play, they're playing for, I don't know, 50,000. Over the course of the... Total stake over, yeah, six days. Yeah, that's it. It's great. It's great for Nelson and... It's nice that they all align and the tournaments align like the women's pairs last weekend, boys this weekend, and then uh, is it is it Max the fours or is it? Yeah, open I think. Open, yeah. okay, open Nelson mm -hmm. fours tomorrow. So yeah, it's certainly something for them all to look forward to. Yeah, it's been a, a long couple of weeks here at Stoke, but. Yeah. All the volunteers and whatnot, just they pitch in, mate. Yeah. Just, I've just been to clubhouse before and just seen everyone doing their bit. There's about seven or eight ladies in the kitchen, just scones, barbecue, a lot of meat, a lot of everything, a lot of food. Everyone's, no one's going home hungry, so it's, it's great and it's no. credit to Stoke Club. Yeah, and with part of the sponsorship of the, from the turf, they've... It, taking care of the catering at lunchtime and yeah. and dropped in, in the lunch meals as a, a contra deal which is enormous for us really because it's where the catering does become one of the big tasks and we've just had the ladies had to serve that and wash up pretty much so yeah having that done has been outstanding in the first year of that so we'll have a better idea next year of hopefully they'll stay on board and how that works yeah well definitely it's uh definitely takes a lot of stress out of uh, a lot of the people people's wives and stuff that aren't playing to come down to the kitchen and uh, yeah, definitely. less dishes and I did see uh, Stan here yesterday cooking the barbecue and the publican yeah you don't see that every day of the week no that's right so Finbar with the early ascendancy here in the lead battle Bit of a rear end for um, Jake. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Uh, having one off. Yeah. He can make a fool of us here, though. Yeah, at least hope he does. He's high and wide there. Yeah. I would say... Uh, that's his worst end of the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Shannon on the changeover just says, we'll go again next time, boys. <laughs> I get the impression he's not too much as a worry, mate. Nah, he's a pretty relaxed customer, that's for sure. Hit here. So it's a big time in the match. Good time for the Aussie boys to score. So we see Shannon now yeah, this will coming back. back. This, this will this float is back. Very great, great leading. Gee. Just tricking. Hell. Jakey walked past, so I had to have a crack. 
but uh, he's into the water cooler Is he? for a freshen up. Yep. Yeah. So that's just what you need, that one there, when yeah. you're taking the end off. Nice surprise when you get back to the green, eh? It's yeah. got second at worst. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. You, you've walked away with one on each corner of the rink. Yeah. Come back. Got to everything sorted <laughs> there. But I suppose, like, that bowl really turned in the last couple of metres of running yeah. and he judged it really well. Once again, looking for a late turn. I suspect this one's just a fraction wide, though. Tried hard. Very well weighted. Yes, he's a lovely touch player. So, of all your uh, out-of-town players and a few long-time friends, who were you most pleased to see here this weekend? Who did you enjoy spending time with? Oh, the whole lot of them, actually, mate. Because <laughs> like, it's, it's pretty pretty standard sort of crew that come up here um, or down here sorry um, always love seeing Gary Raymond Lawson he's uh, he's never happy but <laughs> he's always a nice man to catch up with yeah, uh, I'm very pleased to see Andre Smith yeah great to see him back he's had a, a, a tough time with a few surgeries and yeah also it was nice to have Steve Poser here as a yeah. former former blackjack from yesteryear? I remember um, probably my first year playing. Uh, took took a Friday off school and just because of the Stoke Invitation singles to mark and uh, managed to mark one of his games. And my word, that bloke is good. Yeah, I think he's had 15 or so years away from the game. So. Yeah, he had a bit more hair back then too. Hey, I remember him having a lot of hair. And I think he also wore one of those tennis visors. Yes. But then I asked him about it the other night, and there was there's a lot of denial about it. So I, know, I mean, I probably wouldn't fess up either. It's a they're untidy, aren't they? <laughs> it's an interesting play, isn't it? So I sort of feel the way that Shannon played that. They probably think that he's got the shot. Either that or we disappointed he's short. But they put the tape on it. Finbar's doing the measure. Oh, close. Fimba wants to claim one. We'll have a second look. One. We've got a call for an umpire here. No. No, I think it's I've seen signal one. Oh. I've got an umpire incoming. So. Oh really? Yep. Okay. Couldn't judge it. So a big end, really, James. It's uh, sort of an important time for both sides to score. Yeah, it's, um, especially for Derby, they'd they'd like to start building on their uh, ten five lead. They've uh, that's the last couple of ends, so. Good to see the players out the back there just chewing the fat. Yeah. There's not too much tension there, is there? Nah. They might be drinking water now, but they'll enjoy tonight and go again tomorrow.
Oh, just trying that up. So, it's one white. Uh, one to Shannon Giddos and Jack Graham. So they close the gap. Move to six. So 10 6 now. After 12. And it was a great ball. He was under pressure and snuck that in there. Yeah. It wouldn't shock me to see uh, the map back and go a bit shorter here. Yeah. Because the. So it's something reasonably three quarter. Call the spot on three quarter actually. Shaping up for a cracking finish here. Yeah, I, I hope. Uh, there's, there's that turn, that, there's that turn, yeah. Yeah, I hope that the, the score just gets a little closer so we've got some yeah. late drama. Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, one side of finals are never much fun. It certainly hasn't been by any stretch, but if all of a sudden the, the Aussie boys have one bad end, that's sort of a difficult situation for them. Here's Jake Graham again. It's a speed light. Interesting. Both of these teams came out of the same section. Did section, that? section three, yeah. Which was a deep one. Yeah, absolutely. Jordan King and Nathan Glasson beat them finalists last year. Yeah. Glenn McDonald and Josh Boyd, well, they rolled the Aussies. Did they? They did. Jeez. Glenn, uh, Glenn McDonald turned back the clock, apparently. Did he? Yeah, Jake said last night that he it was no surprise to him that Macca was a full international because he yeah. was frightening. This is a great shot here. This is not bad. He doesn't need fresh air, and he didn't get it. Found a friend. Just such a timely bowl after it, yeah. particularly after his first couple, mm. and then even more so after Finbar's next one. Finbar's on. Is he here? I think Probably he's going to duck under, regardless of pace, but... Yeah. Certainly uh, easy conditions to sort of commentate in because you get a, a good idea of what the ball's going to do and, and no doubt for our viewers at home the same. The breaking, yeah, there's nothing that's doing anything too funky. No, uh, it's, it's all pretty true. And Can't be looking to add another one here and really throw the acid on uh, Keanu. Certainly got a nice looking line for it. Yeah. If it's so slightly Free short feet. of a gallop. Yeah.
This is narrow, James. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's... Uh, we'll never find out how narrow. Yeah. But rather. <laughs> no. And that is the thing with these greens, is that <laughs> if you miss by like a little bit more than just yeah. slightly, you can get punished once yeah. it goes under that mat yeah, area. Yeah, you You're on the peg, probably. <laughs> yeah. You're probably living there. This is... Uh, Probably just similar. Just wait again, I think. Yeah, yeah up and over that. Mm. So all of a sudden they found themselves in a situation where if Keanu misses out here, there's a chance to sit off the back ball for a handful. Yeah. The uh, the salmon sort of orangey it's bit you can see there. to be a bit of pointed. Yes. Yeah, it's a lovely track and it's just going to do its turning late. Comes in now and... Jesus, look it's at this, folks. Oh. Oh. Some bowl. And like, just like the, it traje takes a lot. the trajectory of that, sort of, it's what we're talking about. You just can trust that it's going to turn home yeah. and it's enjoyable to watch them turn like that. Yeah. It's what it's meant to do, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, I had a pretty good chat with Glenn Miller, the greenkeeper, on Friday. And we're discussing the, the pressures of greenkeeping now that with the modern bowl. Yeah, and uh, he was sort of saying about how every player should start out with classic twos and yeah, and move move to something narrower. Yeah, um, because I think it, it, it certainly you know there, there were no straighteners back when everyone had Masters Deluxe, so yeah, you know, it, it is a, a pressure on greenkeeping, but also just a difference in, in the way the game's played, and you have to be particularly use a really narrow ball. They're so weight conscious, aren't they? Yeah, you really have to be hanging around either side of the centre line and uh, it does make sort of attacking um, when you're playing up a, the top end of a team it, it, not more difficult but different isn't it yeah. you're looking to go through things rather than around it's been pleasing to see today you know players being able to draw around a bunch of bowls yeah. when the jacks move and things and, and get back to the centre line so uh, certainly for, this game's just been a remarkable standard for you know, look at that breeze in the shelter there in the yeah. background. But Shannon's having a bit of a taste of the sponsor's product there, seemingly. Yeah. Has to be encouraged. Yeah. So this is must have a big chance. It's just got a hold. It's turning away. There's a shoulder of the bowl there. And he's wriggled in. Partial clap from the gallery. Yeah. Big look of disappointment there from Jake Graham sort of yeah dropped his head and, and give it the one down but just a massive time for a piece of luck there so 11-6 it is 13 played, 5 to go. And yeah, a, a bit of a swing there. With good fortune there for Keanu Darby, who had good speed, but we'd probably be the first one to say that that wasn't the cleanest shot that he's accumulated today. To really get the impression that the Australian boys would be keen on a big number here. And this, they found themselves in a similar position against Tony Grantham and Gary Lawson in the previous fixture and managed to pick up a really neat five. Of course, then found themselves down six and Shannon Giddos drew the shot. So they've had a day full of drama, but just a lovely opener from Jake Graham there, which is hugely important at a time where they need to score. Sitting is just an absolute back toucher at the moment, which is just so timely. Yeah, absolutely. It's not 
I bet again. Yeah, very good again. Jeez. He wouldn't want to show too much of the white, but sitting pretty good. I think. What's he do here? It does, wouldn't it, does he give him a crack? It wouldn't surprise me if he belts this here. He's such a great attacking player. So he plays a lot at the top end of teams at all other times. Yeah, and he's going huge. Wait. Whoa. Oh. Peel one off. The other one's still rocking. So hopefully we've got some friends, family, club mates of Jake and Shannon tuned in from abroad. As we watch this one here, he's cheering it on. Yeah. Getting quite animated there. It's good to see. Love a bit of colour in the game. Big Marlon there. Yeah. But don't they do club gear well in Oz, mate? Yeah, we're slowly catching up to them, but we'll never catch them. But um, Especially Radar right Cat around here at Stoke, and it's a big credit to you and changing in the last couple of years. And Yeah, it's just uh, something that they're particularly good at, but I suppose with poking machines and a, yes. a lot of clubs and that, the funding's not really not an, an issue. issue. So that one goes down. Yeah, he's it, 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 been a bit prone to doing that lately. Yeah, last couple of wins, definitely. He's, uh, he's always fired his first one down, down the narrow side there. So there's a good chance here for Shannon Giddos to just add again, and it looks as if he will. Yeah. It's just they do a lot of turning this right is, here. This is getting really untidy for County. Yeah, it does look particularly ugly. But yeah. You know, when the upside for him is that he can pro most probably trust his boulder. To, he can draw the jack off. Yeah. Um, so I think he can afford to be bullish, but as we saw before, he really got hurt when he was tight. So yeah, you can be I bullish, think, mate, but if you miss, yeah, it um, doesn't well, make it very it easy, me, but he looks not okay. have to worry about missing. <laughs> what an oh. unbelievable shot. That's a great shot. They were desperate for that, and as you see, a, a clap there from Shannon. Bit of decision making going on here while they <laughs> have a good look at who's got shot. I'm sure he'd love a way to remove that ball. They were laying a very nice three. Yeah. Trying to have a crack getting it out. Well, it's, I suppose it's a risk reward situation yeah. in the match, really. Hear the gusty wind there, it's can't be easy. some ways uh, I oh, can give him more confidence as he plays his next I've yeah. sort of got a better position now Yeah, he could almost play down the other side and, and look to roll Keanu's yep. bowl over onto the jack and sort of sitting with nice angles there that they could score two or three that way as well Yeah. but like we touched on earlier in the game like not many balls have been played down that club hand, uh, clubhouse side of the rink so that could change it, but we'll find out. Just see, see in the picture there where the, the white and blue balls are sitting. And just if it did happen to go that way, it would be enormous. But yeah, firstly, 
Keanu Darby's got one. It's just looking to be another bowl handy, I'm sure. Unsure whether oh. it has a shot or not. Must have got a gust of breeze there. Bit of, a, bit of a groan there as he let it go. Yeah. I suppose it, it, it's an interesting one for them because he only wants to, if they haven't got the shot, he only wants to turn it over once. Yeah. But also, uh, surprisingly, he wasn't a bit more wary of where the jack's going to go if they can turn his bowl over in terms of cover. Yeah. It's, uh, because there is a chance of a multiple here. So do you reckon he changes hands here or does he play something similar to his last yeah, with a different just, result obviously I think it, the, the change hands looks probably the way I just don't really like the way that the other bowls are lined up Yeah. for the jet gun the way that it depends on you know, to really maximise it I guess it, it's green on to, to the white for two or three but obviously the green's going to go with it so it's just like turning at once sort of thing So they're pondering here. A big stage in the game, really. Yeah, big moments like these can definitely change matches, and uh, he'll be probably looking to make his make a difference and uh, probably grab, try and grab three or four. Here he goes. Stuck on the forehand as you suspected. At least you know he's going to turn there. Here he comes. Oh, desperately unlucky. Sort of, it was a hunch I had about the way they were sitting, but it looks like they will score. <laughs> what? Just Steph. right in the area. Yeah. They'll take their one, close the gap. Nip tuck game of bowls though. Yeah. Very little in the way of multiples. 18 shots and 14 you, ends. Yeah, especially you don't expect that in the final. Like, uh, oh sorry. Yeah. It's definitely tight. I think yeah, there's still a chance though that one multiple blows it, the game apart really either Neither teams everyone's look like on the bar or <laughs> yeah but yeah once again as you know, sort of said earlier they really do need to win definitely three of these last four ends you would think yeah who's taking a bit of interest in this one. Yeah, it's well played. Very good. Jake will be looking to make his adjustment from his last. Having good weight. Got great weight. That's lovely weight. Just turning now. Oh, lovely oh, bowl. Geez. That's good. Oh, just completely different to how the bowls normally behave in Australia for these boys. Yeah. Obviously, Definitely a lot tighter over there. Play there yourself, and the bowl doesn't tend to leave 
the confinement to the rink too much. No. So there have been some adjusting, but... Um, They've taken it on pretty good, though. Yeah, particularly yeah. classy from ball one, really, yeah. Friday morning. in this one yes. on the stalk it's got a bit of turning to do late but we know it's good for it yeah especially that side yeah just ever so slightly over but it does give him a nice position I think um, in this game like Shannon hasn't had that many opportunities to have conversions and things like that I suppose the way that things have been sitting I noticed in the earlier games he was moving a lot of whites and yeah Sort of and, and that's credit to Keanu and uh, Fimba not for not allowing that to happen. So. And the times that it's looked like the Australian boys will get a multiple, they've got a, they've always got a really good second shot. Yeah. Like before when they got to the sh twice now, they got to sort of the shoulder and the bolts have, yeah, haven't been able to get them out. Mm. So, yeah, they've certainly just done a good job of, of getting second shot and I suppose that's the older thinking of the games, you know, I understand that like Ryan Brass is always like just get second shot, yep. second shot, second, second shot, second shot, shot. shot, and that's sort of that, yeah, you know, I suppose that Brass's style of, of draw play, and that's where these guys have, have just been superb. Yeah, I've cut down a few threatening situations, I suppose. Yeah, so this be good. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to add another one. He's got the speed here. No way. Which is very unusual for yeah. Shannon. Yeah, he's played with nice weight most of the game, so. Yeah, he's given most balls a chance, hasn't he? Yeah. Keanu with his first. On the 15th here. Yeah. So he's just looking for a little bit of movement. Hungry line, isn't it? It is. He's going to get something. No, just slip by. He'd probably be pleased about that. I think if he'd yeah. turned that bowl onto the white, they probably would have found themselves a shot or two down. Yeah. Which Lovely they most leaf. probably are anyway, but... Just trying to check a bowl here, see if it's uh, on the line or out. Yeah, this game's had it all. Keep the umpires busy. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start operating one of these things. Yeah. No. Skill set sort of starts and stops with putting a mat on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, this bloke seems to know what he's up to. Yeah, I'm sure. That we wait. Ball is out. How to bounce. Sorry, 
Yeah. Someone asked me to use that um, a couple of tournaments ago when we didn't have an umpire one day. And really? Yeah, well, they said it hasn't been around and I wasn't sure, so they said get the scope, but I didn't know how to use it, so just kind of put it there and half yeah. looked at it. And yeah, made your own mind <laughs> up. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, just called it in, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose the, the pressure's not so high in that situation where it's just a bowl that's out of play yeah. sort of thing that is uh, is in the mix. But yeah, when, when it's a jack and yeah, it's in the ditch for half a dozen or something, then yeah, you probably focus a bit more, <laughs> making your mind up, you know. So this is a slightly right, wider line. Just under the front, white. He's looking for yeah, the shot ball itself. Mm. Well, I think in some ways wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if yeah, that's a call there. Yeah. To play it before they do. Interesting to know who's got shot there. Both not badly down, otherwise. yeah. What a shot. Yep. Very good. If they were down, then he's happy now. Yeah. Does it probably changes uh, Keanu now? Yeah, well, Keanu had an probably interesting approach. If they did indeed have shot, but... Yeah. Does he get back down the swing? Or I, think, I don't know if it's the I swing hand, but... I think he's hand, obliged but, to yeah. get back over it on his backhand side and because he can turn back to the, at least the middle of the white bowl or, or yep. promote the, the blue and salmon blue and salmon I like that well Matt Pearson had very orange bowls and yep. these ones are particularly salmon but they're quite orange now that there's nothing to judge them against yep. so. glaring omission of the club cat today though what's that sorry the glaring omission of the club cat that's yeah. normally walking around. Yeah. Oh, he's got his tail up, hey. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Formerly known as Ginger Nuts. Yeah. Since been gelded. <laughs> Since been gelded. <laughs> this is a great ball here from Keanu Darby. Oh, is it oh, ever? Wowie. Oh, wowee. Oh, an effort. <laughs> that's a huge ball. Great effort. Yeah, something like that. If he could have drawn that there, that's probably a match winner. But yeah. It's still, uh, it's still all on. Three the difference now. Dropping ones doesn't hurt. No, that's right. But they probably need a score. But three ends to go, and we sort of spoke about the Aussie boys trying to win three of the four. Yeah. And going the right way about getting that sorted. So, yeah, could you know, we said a number could blow the game apart, obviously. Yeah. But just consistently scoring means hopefully that they'll uh, take it deep. Yeah. Keanu will be looking for a sound start from Fimba here. Where they come from? Oh, it's a pretty tidy start there. Nice piece of paddock here. Expect to see some customary late turn. I think you met this in line, that's for sure. Ever so slightly past, but a nice starting position. Just looking to climb past his first. Very easy to do that too. 
Yes, very much so. So particularly quick out there now in a day of sun and wind. Yep, dried out well since Friday. It's not badly down here as Keanu. Ah, sorry, Fimba. In some ways he'd probably be pleased that he got a clear trip there rather than that is some turn, isn't turning it? up the double blue bolt. Yeah, I must say Jake's done a good job of taking his green on the sand as a rule. Comes down to running now. Yeah. And we know it's going to do a bit of running sideways. He will Need not be upset with us. Long ways as well. Crossover time, and that's a great start from Jake there, really. Yeah. Probably it's not, Fimbo's had a bit of an end off there, but still, he, you know, he's missed some good areas. Yeah, yeah, like I was just thinking that it's, um, he's not as tight as what he has been during throughout the game, but he's uh, missing in, in nice areas, which you like you say, and uh, giving Keanu options is... Uh, that's if you're going to miss, give your mate options and. Uh. So Shannon with his first, he's certainly out wide there, looking for it to come back, but I think he is just a bowl or two wide. Does sort of get them a little bit of cover there, which. Yeah, the chance that Jack goes there, I don't think that Keanu would be playing with no. the weight that it would get quite that far back, but that's certainly on the right angle. So Keanu on his backhand looks interested, half following it. It's just turning now. Probably just the weight, really. Yeah, probably lacking four or five feet there. Very well pointed here. Starting to do its turning. So it would have to be in the conversation. Mm. Keanu would be looking to make his adjustment here and uh, add that four feet. I think he's done so accordingly. Yeah, it looks pretty well pointed. Starting to break in now. There's a little bit of fresh air there. Holy hecka. It's a lovely bowl. A Whether it's number shot. one or not, yep. to be seen. It's been terrific to see. Tiano and Finbar go about their work. They played in this together for the first time last year. Yeah. I was trying to think who Keanu played with in this initially, but it escapes me. But, yeah, they've become a reasonably formidable unit and could probably play it both ways around. Yeah, it's a, exactly. They've played it together quite a few times now, so they don't, they know each other's games. and um, It's good. It's... Um, these boys were always going to be competitive this weekend and uh, I'm pretty sure we haven't seen them last them at this event so I'm pretty sure uh, they will enjoy today and regardless of what happens and uh, be pretty proud of what they've achieved so yeah well they're in the box seat at the moment three ahead on the board yep and very close on the head 
thanks to very well judged bowl there from Keanu Darby. Playing with weight, which we haven't seen too much in this game. Needs to pick the gap. It's close. It's close. Ooh. Oh, no. Just turned late on him, didn't it, really? How? Yeah. He's still standing there in disbelief there. Shannon. Halfway down, I think. He quite like the look of that. played that would indicate that Keanu's previous is number one but whether he's trying to sit it down to make sure here or whether they were just keen on having that sort of yeah one to Keanu Darby and Finn Bar McGuigan mm. so it gives them a lead of four and into the penultimate end of the Stokes Stakes for 2023 You're in still a twist in this fixture yet? Oh, I don't think so. Don't you? Uh, I'll, uh, well, it's not overly bullish of me, but I just think they have just done such a good job of getting second shot this game. Like, yeah. A pretty nice position to sort of manage the scoreboard now. Okay. What do you think? I reckon there might be another story in this. Oh. Either way, it's been a thriller, and uh, everyone at home's enjoyed tuning in. Mm. Well, there we go. That one's out of play. So... Jake looking to capitalise on Finbar's first bowl going in the ditch. And it's really expecting it to turn back now. A little bit flush there. Sort of tell the greenness yeah. on your monitor there. It's one characteristic of a Glenn Miller green. He doesn't really do too much rolling and cutting beyond the two metre mark. No. Which means that those areas are lush and you can play up to them with confidence when the jack's in the ditch. And Absolutely. I suppose it's also like the most hard wearing area. But a lot gets a lot of traffic and it seems to keep them good. So, and yeah, not as I said earlier, he's uh, very fortunate to have a curator of such quality here. Absolutely, he puts a lot of time into his work and uh, well, I think it was you telling me that he was here at 10 o'clock on Friday night squidging the water off after the uh, deluge we had um, throughout the day on Friday. So, yeah. So. Yeah, it was it's a credit to him. Hiding out there under the guise of darkness, really. Yeah. If it wasn't for a couple of struggles at the club, we would never have known, but... Absolutely. There was still business being done. It's a big bowl for Finbar here. First two are just fear, but it looks like a massive improvement. Oh, uh -huh. well played. Then Keanu Darby goes... Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play. That was shaping for your narrative there. Yeah. It's a pretty good effort here. Yeah, well, you know, whilst that one down, the Aussie boys, it is a nice setup here for movement. Yeah. To the bowl, touch the white. Yeah. 
There is opportunities there. Keanu will be looking to get another one there or thereabouts. Without trying to make it too big. You yeah, certainly wouldn't want to leave a wide shelf on either side where you could use to access the, uh, the shot bowl. Yeah. But still, yeah, three seconds at the moment for Shannon here. <coughs> Jake set him up all right, so he'll be looking to move something. Even if he arrived and, and sort of moved the front blue, at least it changes it up a little yep. bit. Maybe he could be a bit more direct. At Opens the, it up for his next couple. Shot bowl, yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what he elects to do. I think um, yeah, he's played the bulk of his balls down the backhand on this rink and it appears that's where he's heading. Let's have a lovely line. Nice line. Coming now. The weight's not dusty either. He's got to start turning a little quicker. Gets to the belly of the bowl. He'll Jeez. make shot. What a shot. Brilliant. Very timely. And also in doing that, he's just showed himself another like another whole bowl of target mm. if he, he gets the opportunity to set that off for a number. So imperative that Keanu gets another bowl on the head here, really. Yep. If he's not shot, at least be second. Where's third? He's well grassed as well. And... We've seen them come back from out there all day. Yeah. If he's looking to touch the wide, is he? Yes. What a shot. He's got that. He made two of it. He won't be too upset with that. No, Jeez, shot, what time that to that. Looking at the negatives, though, like they are vulnerable the way the Jack's sitting. Yeah. In terms of who's got the back bowls as well, which is the Australian combination, probably at the two deepest. So he's attacking on his forehand. Needs to hold a fraction, does it? Oh, oh no. It's gone over the fence. That's a disappointing outcome there for <laughs> Shannon Giddos because he's bellied the jack, but unfortunately it's hit a bowl behind and gone down to the fence for four, really. It's yeah, one bounce four. Hit the tin fence and back they take them, but a terrific shot. I think it would have been under the number for at least two. And oh, yeah. And Dub, he, and he Dub was sort of had his work cut out, yeah, but I suppose it gives him another sniff. A pretty clutch hit down the stretch there. Very good. bar on the backhand side as we look at it. Just travelling through about four feet. All four players have played well throughout this game, Brennan. They have indeed. They've uh, accustomed themselves well, considering, especially in the last probably half an hour, it's... Um, Got a bit breezy and probably made life a little bit more difficult for them, but yes, and yeah, you know, this time of day often the breeze does settle, but not in this instance. It's pretty well pointed here. It's interesting. Uh, like you know, both these guys are using XGs, but I feel like Finbar's got away with sort of. A bit more of like a forgiving lineup that hand. They don't seem to have turned as much late. No. I know it's often the way they get them away. I, 
definitely down I, I, w- the I wouldn't say that, that Jake wobbles them, but they certainly like, don't come out dead smooth either. So yeah. Whether that means that he gets a bit more bite late. come back to the centre line yeah once again past and you know an option at a, at a time where you do need that multiple count yeah it's it's definitely two minimum here in that uh, you'll probably be a little bit disappointed with that last one like, um, anything past or what, what you said this morning was uh, you get a round of applause, but um, there was probably nothing for short there. Especially at this time of the game. Yeah, nothing for short here either, though. Yeah. Unfortunately. However, it is second shot, so it's handy enough. Yeah, but, you know, would have been a cracking time to have back cut the jack there off, off that bolt. What do you reckon Shannon will be doing with his first one here? Like, does he get aggressive early? And yeah, it wouldn't surprise me actually if he did look to sort of pick what. Oh, that might change it a bit. Yeah, it does it either. Maybe yeah. run up, run up the backhand for Bowler Jack. Yeah. Or just fan it up and hope to get another second. And yeah. Go to work. Give himself opportunities yeah, later. You'd see. Keanu Darby putting that Northeast Valley jacket on, cooling it down a little bit out there. Has got a hungry line here. He could wriggle through for a second of some description. Wow. Wow. That was different. Yeah. But then, like, it's actually a really neat way if he played that. Again, and got the white with yeah. where the catches are, so I suppose an option from there. Yeah, for the sake of uh, the coverage in the final, it'd be nice to find some drama late. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the boys here are just hoping for that. It's been a pretty raucous clubhouse much of the day, so. <laughs> What a bit of drama won't hit, hey? Oh. Gonna turn on him again. Right again, another catcher. Yes. The downside, I suppose, from his, the way that bowl's sitting in comparison to the jack, it's probably not that much of it that's accessible, but if you did get the back piece of the bowl, to, to obviously shoot out that way, even a kill wouldn't be a bad option. Keeps him alive. Yeah. So, it just seems to be a, probably a tough weight to be playing in these it sort does, of, yeah. you know, you see the wind behind there. It's, it's coming and going. So Darb's looking to cover at the back, cover at the back there. Just gonna turn late, get to a reasonable home. Yeah, won't be too upset with that. Yeah. Big bowl here. Huge in the context of the fixture. It could be essentially game over. Or it may even be 
with a concession, but we're trying to find some drama late. And Shannon Giddos is our guy, we're trying to get back to the, the bowl or the jack, which he hasn't done. So it looks like it'll be one, possibly two. Send the board done here. And one it is. So five will be the difference going down the 18th. And oh, I wouldn't say the score necessarily flatters Derby and McGuigan, James, but oh, they've just scored it. Uh, they scored well and defended well in key stages in the game. Yes, that's most definitely. Um, and when they haven't had shot, they've generally had a real neat couple of seconds there or thereabouts, so they have not been able to drop the numbers. So, yeah. which um, and I think earlier in the tournament, you know, it's been a real strength of Shannon's the hitting, and I haven't really had overly hittable targets in this no. game either. Um, and yeah, but um, an outstanding game of lawn bowls by all four, and yeah, definitely deserving finalists. Uh, one way or the other, but it, it does look as though the young Kiwis are in the box seat at the moment, but never right off a wounded Aussie. Yeah. And what a start this is. Yeah, it's a great start. Fumbo will just be looking to beat his last. Yeah, he's certainly got a nice line for it. Just What's the weight running down? it out. Oh, not quite. If drop five inside that, you'd be disappointed. Yeah. coming from the clubhouse and everyone's breaking the game down bowl by bowl and yeah a lot of the people are saying that yeah they've done a good job of, of just being solid here really the Kiwi boys oh very good not hateful that so I expect that Jake will be looking to get somewhere near his previous give them an option of touching the jack there for a number Like it. Just probably thought it was quick, but he's. It was just narrow. Just narrow. Neat way, my word. So, I suppose in terms of the kill, Finbar's kind of got the centre line under control as well. Yeah. Doesn't make Probably it inadvertently. Easy. Yeah. More of an accent than anything else. We see Derby on his forehead looking to get this one home and lock away the Stokes Stokes trophy. Again, superb weight. Probably need to tuck in this quite early. Label region. Just tucked away there as well. Oh 
So it's hard to see too many fives or sixes there. No, it's um, get the jack out of bounds and start again, I think. <laughs> Which uh, looks challenging in itself. Yes. But I suppose getting five on the last end of a game's not meant to be easy. No. And uh, credit to Keanu and Fimba for putting themselves in this position. So we'll see whether Shannon can escape it. He's certainly uh, been involved in some drama today already with one of the best bowls a lot of people have ever witnessed Yeah. at clutch time in the semi-final. It's good to see there. Like He's actually seen the funny side of a tricky situation, but... Um with a smile on his face and yeah. Yeah, there he goes he's a pretty cool customer yeah he's enjoying it which is nice to see I think they call this one a hit and hope yeah they call that one bother bother Good areas, like yeah. But it wasn't that far away. The, the most hateful result is it never looked like dislodging the bowl on the centre line. No. Nah. Sort of That's maybe a, what his two card trick was. And halves the target as well. Yes. Yeah, there's less things to to get the jack off yeah. now. So, it's Keanu Derby on the way with what may well be his last ball of the tournament as he tries to parade his way towards a winner's check and he wouldn't want to show the white and he doesn't. And he's jack high and this looks ugly. Yeah, it's um, close to May Day. <laughs> Yeah, how, how can you do, how can you fix this? Did I? They think something else here, are they? Or? Yeah, I don't know whether they think they can maybe get a five. The the, the freshen up sounds to go to me. Yeah. yeah, I just think that it's going to be difficult to move the jack like that far, but also sort of hang round. Bit of a mid pitch conference. My word. Yeah. Must be a little bit just of... It uh, doesn't look possible, but... A bit of trigonometry applied there, I think. Yeah. Anyhow, it's on the way. Possibly the last ball of the tournament. Looking for movement. <laughs> and unlucky, and that'll be it. Yes. We've found the winners of the Stoke Stakes for 2023. An epic final, really. Thanks very much to Kirsten and James for joining me in the commentary box. James, you enjoy that one? Absolutely, mate. It was, it was good, and both sides played well, and uh, they uh, should be very proud of how they've gone throughout the tournament. And uh, Yeah, I think deserved favourites, and, you know, sort of in, in the final, probably the Aussie boys, the way they'd gone and on the way, but, you know, too good. Keanu... Finbar rolling them over. So yeah. that's it from Stoke. Keanu Darby, Finbar McGuigan have defeated Shannon Giddos and Jacob Graham in the final of what's been a fantastic Stoke Stakes. Thanks to everyone that's joined us today for an exciting day of coverage. It's been a long day. It's been a long weekend. And it's been a big couple of weeks here at Stoke. So be sure to tune in to results from the Nelson Premier Fours in the next three days. A lot of these players going in there to compete in that another big event on the bowls calendar so thanks so much to everyone that supported the turf hotel stoke stakes a massive thanks to bowls new zealand for the coverage and making it possible to get this broadcast into your lounge room 
and to everyone that's joined us in commentary today, thanks so much for your time. Brendan Hodson, James Pugh, Stoke Bowling Club checking out for another year. We look forward to bringing you more epic events next season.